Are we live? Oh, there it is. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you're watching this and it does not say live at the bottom of the screen, unfortunately, you're watching the recap. The good news is we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. You're on mobile. Press high chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link for the nightly watch list and main channel. First link for the Scream Alerts boot camp and real estate course. But, ladies and gentlemen, Earnings were good. TSM and a couple of others kind of dodged the bullet after the last couple of days, but you got the thumbs up for earnings. It is getting us off of this four days of downside in a row. Unfortunately, the bonds are resetting, so that little day of leading and lagging. Once again, markets may bounce up today, but then bond yields might climb a little higher. You got gold and oil all over the place. Oil still lagging a little bit. A couple of war headlines. We are still preparing for earnings after the bell. You got a couple of Fed speakers. You had a little bit of data there, jobless claims and Philly Fed, but it didn't really move us that much. But all in all, I think it's going to borderline come down to these earnings. Lead us into tomorrow for Friday. We'll debate a little bit about rates. And then before you know it, it's PCE, then Powell, then CPE, then everything else. And then the market. Then it's April's already over, man. We're already halfway through Chattagonia. But good morning. How are ya? Good morning. What's going on, baby? What up, Matthew Warman? Juan, Alex, Kelvin, Bell Brand, a wise baby. Good morning. Nope. Sangro. Mr. Naji Wolf, baby. Good morning. What up, Gary? Mavis, Cart, Tim Whitman in the house, baby. Good morning. What up, Samuel? Mark, Joe Chase, baby. El Chapato. Yay, yay. Oh, Troy in the house. Trapper Wolf, Ozzy Cobla, Mark J, baby, Anza, J, Carter, Mr. Nofi, what up, Max's channel, QXL, Carissa Hines, good morning, humble business in the house, Ari, Tony Garlinger, Alaskan Assassin, Walter White, baby, what up, B-Champ, Dirty Bird, Rigo, s up for Mayor, Jerry, 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 will y'all, good morning, baby, what up, Legal, how you living, thank you for being here, man, good morning, Cambellini, Project Will, J James, Mike, Saiz, H.A., baby, Jason Stein, how are Good morning. What up, Count? Triple three, baby, NHL Savage, Mo Kanan, oh, agent of chaos, your boy, baby. What up, Blizzy, Godfather, J. Buck, Daniel, good morning. It's Friday, Junior, Chad. What up, Mitch? Oh, it is Friday, Junior, so I hope you guys are ready. Oh, Coyote, with the news, baby. Good morning. I hope you are ready, relaxed, and uh, we have seven hours, so let's make it a good one. But now, let me bring to you my assistant, Joshua AI. Joshua AI, please, please, take it away, Joshua AI. Joshua AI, take it away, take it away. S&P futures signal recovery with earnings in focus. Stocks advanced as global markets steadied after turbulence driven by misfiring bets over the scale and timing of interest rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. U.S. futures pointed to the S&P 500's first gains in five days at the Wall Street Open. The dollar steadied while U.S. Treasuries paired an earlier gain to trade flat. Investors are unwinding gains from a record rally in the first quarter as they come to grips with a resilient U.S. economy and stubborn inflation that's forced them to recalibrate rate bets. Money markets signal just two rate cuts by the Fed this year, starting in September after a fresh round of hot inflation sent Treasury yields soaring to 2024 highs, offsetting disappointment about the speed of rate cuts, though. Investors are more optimistic about growth and the potential feed-through to corporate profits, according to Peter Oppenheimer, global Global Equity Strategy Chief at Goldman Sachs Group in Cuts. Growth is fine, but we're not likely to get the boost in terms of lower rates that the markets had expected, Oppenheimer said in an interview with Bloomberg TV. That's causing some indigestion, so earnings will really be crucial here. Reports from Netflix, Inc. and L'Oreal SA are due after the close of their respective markets. Investors will also be parsing initial U.S. jobless data and speakers from a raft of central banks. In currency markets, the yen was steady following a joint statement from U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen alongside the finance ministers of Japan and South Korea that noted serious concerns about the depreciation of the two Asian currencies. A global gauge of emerging market currencies 
currencies gained for a second day, suggesting some stability after hitting a 2024 low earlier this week. And the dollar has jumped about 4% this year, outperforming all major currencies as reduced prospects for Fed rate cuts feed greenback strength in higher U.S. yields. Elsewhere, oil held on to most of Wednesday's 3% decline, weighed by weaker Chinese industrial data and a swelling in U.S. crude inventories while gold rose Corporate highlights Taiwan's semiconductor manufacturing company reported its first profit rise in a year after strong AI demand revived growth at the world's biggest contract chip maker. Blackstone Inc. collected more fees from big retail funds and credit strategies this year, compensating for the slower pace of deal exits, the asset manager said in its first quarter report. Micron Technology Inc. is poised to get $6.1 billion in grants from the Commerce Department to help pay for domestic factory projects, part of an effort to bring semiconductor production back to American soil. Las Vegas Sands Corps said renovations at an entertainment center and a hotel in Macau will crimp results this year, sending the shares lower in extended trading. ABB Limited rallied as it raised its profitability outlook for the year after stronger than expected orders led by demand in electrification products helped offset declines in China. Futures bounce. U.S. stock futures are eking out gains following a slump for the S&P 500 and Nasdaq 100 in the prior session, with both indexes closing at the lowest levels since February. Treasuries are edging higher, too, and the dollar has dipped. A gauge of global chip stocks and AI poster child NVIDIA fell into a technical correction amid the recent sell-off, and Evercore ISI's Julian Emanuel thinks this is only the start with the downdraft in stocks only starting and set to continue through the rest of 2024 chip outlook and the mood in the semiconductor industry may be helped by the results from Taiwan's TSMC the main chip maker for Nvidia and Apple its sales guidance was better than expected and it stuck by plans to spend up to 32 billion dollars over the course of this year shoring up expectations for a sustained increase in AI demand also on the chip sector front, Micron Technology shares are up in pre-market trading with the company set to get $6.1 billion in grants for domestic factory projects in no rush. Loretta Mester was the latest Federal Reserve official to reiterate that interest rates can be held steady and there is no need to rush to cuts. Michelle Bowman added that progress on inflation may have stalled and questioned how much tighter monetary policy is restraining the economy. Some are pointing to Fed Chair Jerome Powell prematurely signaling cuts were ahead as a reason for the persistence of U.S. inflation and amid talk of potential divergence in policy easing between the Fed and other central banks. The ECB has said there is a limit to this dollar defenses. The significant shift in wagers by traders on Fed rate cuts has bolstered the dollar and rippled through currency markets globally. In Asia, officials are going on the offense in attempting a unique United front in their desire for more currency stability. A G7 statement also contained a line reaffirming currency commitments, providing some leeway for countries to defend their currencies in the face of the strong greenback. Traders are, however, piling into a contrarian bet that the Fed's easing will be more aggressive than is currently implied. Coming up, a further cavalcade of Fed speakers are on the schedule for Thursday to scour for more on the likely path of interest rates. Michelle Bowman, John Williams, Raphael Bostic, and Susan Collins are all on the slate. Private equity giant Blackstone is reporting results, and then eyes will turn to numbers due from Netflix after the close, with expectations high for another quarter of strong subscriber growth from the streaming company Top Overnight News. BOJ board member Asahi Noguchi said on Thursday the pace of future rate hikes would likely be much slower than that of its global peers in recent policy tightenings as the impact of rising domestic wages has yet be fully passed onto prices RTRS. 
a U.S. congressional effort to force TikTok's Chinese owner to divest the app has gained steam after House Speaker Mike Johnson unveiled a new package of legislation that could compel the Senate to support the measure. FT. Berkshire Hathaway priced 263.3 billion yen, 1.71 billion dollars of bonds in the firm's largest yen debt deal since its 2019 debut sale. The surprisingly big offering raises speculation that Warren Buffett may be planning another foray into Japanese stocks. BBG TSMC's rebound accelerated with extremely high. AI demand bolstering its outlook. The chip maker expects revenue to grow as much as 30% this quarter. Following its first profit rise in a year, chip stocks may see some relief on the results. NVIDIA ticked up pre-market, as did ASML stock BBG. European diplomats traveled to Israel on Wednesday to make one more plea for restraint in response to the aerial attack that Iran launched this weekend, but Britain's foreign secretary acknowledged that an Israeli reprisal seemed inevitable. NYT Fed's Mester says the central bank will require additional time before deciding when to commence rate cuts, but she expressed confidence in the disinflationary process eventually resuming. Barron's die and corporate pension funds are shifting money into bonds. State and local government funds are swapping stocks for alternative investments. The nation's largest public pension, the California Public Employees Retirement System, is planning to move close to $25 billion out of equities and into private equity and private debt. Hachche, the Biden administration said Wednesday it would allow some American and European oil companies to carry on in Venezuela after U.S. efforts to coax President Nicolas Maduro into democratic overhauls by lifting economic sanctions ended in a hardening of his authoritarian regime, Wajé. Cash paid out from PE funds has tumbled to a decade low, leaving investors less able or willing to allocate new money. As a result, the biggest backers want buyout executives to put in more of their own assets, prompting them to load up on debt and pledge personal possessions, including their homes, BBG. Iran is exporting more oil than at any time for the past six years, giving its economy a $1.35 BN a year boost, even as Western countries discuss stepping up sanctions in response to its attack on Israel. Tehran sold an average of 156 melon barrels a day during the first three months of the year, almost all of it to China and its highest level since the third quarter of 2018. FT... FT, bro, he, I don't know why he tweaked out. Today, bro, there was like two Technology tweaks out. shared Wait, less in the signals. Colin, for a few prices, hold RTR on. at 3 billion yen, $1.71 billion of bonds in the firm's largest yen debt deal since it's. I don't know, bro. He was tri he tripped out the first time. I guess he's trying to act like he ain't do it. Mm hmm. But Chatadonia, there's still more, my brother. SP Futures. They are up by 0.3 through their best levels. Comes after the market capped a four-day slide on Wednesday with an early bounce attempt evaporating amid continued weakness in big tech and broader semi-space. Treasuries weaker off some earlier strength and adding to the week's big yield backup. Dollar index flat. Gold is up by 0.4. Bitcoin up by 2.2, but still sharply down for the week. And WTI is off by 0.4, down for the seventh straight out of the past nine. Market coming off a four-day slide. S&P's longest losing streak since the five-day drop through January 4th at Wednesday's close, down 4.4 month-to-date S&P constituents about above their 200-day moving average, down to 65% from the recent high of 84 on March 27th. Major impetus has been hawkish repricing of Fed rate cut expectations, first two 24 cuts now seen until September amid strong economic data, sticky inflation, and consistent higher for longer Fed speak. Tailwind from AI has been flagging in April with semis and NVIDIA in particular, now down more than 10% from March highs. Investors are watching unsettled Middle East, though oil has eased. Volatility increased alongside with VIX near a six-month high. April Philadelphia Fed manufacturing notably improved month over month, hitting its highest level 
uh, hitting its highest level since April 2022. While employment remained in contraction, initial jobless claims came in below consensus, continuing claims largely in line. Existing home sales report coming later this morning. Overnight, Fed speaker featured Mester, which says she thinks that the Fed should be watching and waiting before acting. While Bowman raised some questions about whether policy was sufficiently restrictive, Williams, Bowman, and Bostic are on the calendar for today. Not much from Treasury Yellen at Fin. A Finman meeting with Japan and South Korea beyond commitment to consult closely on exchange rates, fairly quiet overseas. More remarks from ECB officials suggesting willingness to diverge from Fed policy. Australian headline employment unexpectedly shrank, but jobless claims rose by less than forecast. On earnings, uh, TSM highlighted demand strength, particularly for AI-related data center applications, though it cautioned on macro-related demand risk. ELV helped by better-than-expected MLR and raised full-year guidance. CSX results a touch better, noting profitability, supported by pricing and improved efficiency. DHI reported strong demand and closing trends, raising full-year guidance. LVS posted a slight beat, though some focused on weaker Macau. EFX revenue a touch lighter and Q2 guidance disappointed. Alcoa revenue B SNV. V, net income missed and credit metri metrics are weaker. In other news, Micron helped by $6 billion grant award and Pal Palant uh, oh wait, Planet Fitness named a new CEO. Ooh, that was close. Fed Bowman speaks at SIFMA Basel 3 event. Fed Bowman. Fed Beige Book shows slight increase in economic activity. Uh, on pace for prior month. Cleveland Fed President uh, Mester reiterates rush to cut rates, wants more data on inflation. Bank of England Governor Bailey said UK and EU have less inflation risk than US. ECB President Lagarde says European economy showing signs of recovery. ECB Centeno says policy would remain restrictive even after 50 basis points of easing. ECB Vassal says scope of up to four cuts this year, barring any shocks. ECB Schnabel says publishing interest rate forecasts could address shortfalls in communication. Bank of Japan Noguchi warned, uh, wanted short-term rates to stay negative, predicts slow normalization. Bank of Japan sees most economists lifting rates again in October and flag possible July hike. PBOC vows restitute or resolute actions to avoid excess won volatility. VIX gauge hits highest since October as hawkish rate repricing and Middle East tensions fuel volatility. NVIDIA chip stocks drop in technical correction amid shifting rate cut bets. Rate traders are making contrarian bets the Fed will cut more aggressively than market Markets are pricing in. U.S., Japan, South Korea agreed a uh, close consultation over Forex. Yuan's uh, share of global transaction rises further as euro and sterling slip. Housing, insurance, and commodity prices contributed to pick up in U.S. inflation concerns. Australian employment shrinks, but data is still ind indicative of tight labor market. Micron poised to receive more than $6 billion from Commerce Department. TSMC guides stronger than expected forecasts as AI boom, bo uh, boom fuels demand for advanced chips. UBS, Morgan Stanley, HSBC announced more layoff across investment banking. Planet Fitness names Colleen Keating as new CEO. EU regulators conclude Microsoft's $13 billion investment in OpenAI is not an acquisition. Inside Amazon's Big River arm that gathers intelligence on tech giants' competitors. Biden calls for higher tariffs on Chinese steel, promises U.S. steel will remain an American company. Biden calls China xen xenophobic as tensions rise following his calls for higher tariffs. USTR Thai urges decisive action to protect against domestic EV sector from subsidized Chinese competition. Netanyahu pushes back against Western calls for restraint, says Israel will do everything necessary to defend itself. Israel considered a retaliatory strike on Monday, but decided to postpone it. U.S. reimposes oil sanctions on Venezuela. House Speaker Johnson to include TikTok divest or ban rule in foreign aid package. Trump weighs cutting Middle East payroll taxes, or cutting mid middle class, not Middle East, and keeping salt deduction cap. Wow. Talk about the headlines, baby. Talk about the headlines. So... I got a couple of plays for you, but let's see. Given the time, I'm going to go to the bathroom and give you the commercial first, and we'll come back with plays, and then we're going to come back with the pledge too, and then it'll be a joyous morning, and then, wow, 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 very nice. Like the video for 1,000, good. 
See you very much short time. Because there's also somebody like this week who's selling it. So you need both sides. Look at the, how far the market has come this year alone and mostly based on that magnificent seven. Um, it, it's overly optimistic, but that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be optimistic. The same question for you as, I, as we had for Norges Bank, which is 70 basis points hike in rates uh, in the 10 year bond yield. A lot of that is over the past month. Yeah. Is the worst of that bond ride over? Is that a moment, a damascene moment for the bond market that it recognizes that you're not going to get fast and furious rate cuts from the Fed? Are we done on the worst right in the bond market? Tough to always call a top in the market. Uh, I thought Vanguard's point today that it could actually, the tenure could back up to 5%. I was really shocked to, to see that line. Only because the market was so optim optimistic um, at the beginning of the year with six rate cuts. Now we're down to one, and the equity market has taken it in stride. So I haven't been popular, but I've been saying for over a year, you've got to take your cues from the bond market, not the stock market. And the bond market is telling you that rates are going to stay higher for longer. And you know, with the IMF, the, the interesting question, a rate cut, back to where? What is the base rate? It's not zero. I think the base rate is probably higher than three, probably four. So, and right now the economy is doing great with rates at five. I don't know if we need to cut. With that in mind, again, we've seen the repercussions of higher for longer. I would say the beginning of the repercussions of higher for longer. One of those is the commodity trade. One of those is the inflation trade. How are you and the board and the investment committee looking at inflation protection moves, additional inflation protection moves inflation within the protection, fund. The tip. We actually have that as an asset class because we rec Interesting. Economy doing great. I mean, again, today's our relief. Today's our relief. We will see. But Chattadonia, I got some pre-market movers. Let's get it popping, baby. I hope you got some plays afterwards. A lot of earnings now. Welcome. Even more next week. eBay is up by 3.6. Morgan Stanley upgrade. DHI 3.1 earnings. Elevance up 3.1 off earnings. Carvana up 3.0. Zscaler 2.9. KeyBank upgrade. Zoom 2.2. Rosenblatt upgrade. RMD 2.1. Uh, nothing. CSX 2.1 off earnings. FCX 2.1. Copper is up 1.7. IoT up 1.9. Loop Capital initiates buy. Micron up 1.8. Reportedly to receive 6.1 in Chips Axe funding. SCCO up by 1.6. Copper Ally up 1.5 off earnings. Tech is up 1.5 off copper. MMC is up 1.5 off earnings. CCI up 1.4 off of earnings. LBRT up 5.6 off earnings. FRHC up 4.7. IRDM up 4.0 off earnings. SMR up 3.9. ARDX up 3.1. Ozark up 2.9 off earnings. Alaska Air 2.8 off of earnings. Co or CDE Co Year Mining 2.7. Alcoa is up 2.3 off earnings. AG 1.9. LTM up 19, Clarkston initiates buy, HL up 19, MQ up 18, AGBA up 157%, merger agreement with Triller. ME is up 30%. CEO Ann Wojcicki considering bid to take company private. THCH uh, 17.3 off earnings. LRHC up 16.3. CTXR 13.9. BCYC up 8.8. .8. Holder Baker Brothers switches filing type to passive from active. VTSI up 7.7. U.S. Army contract. ORIC 6.9. GOEV 4.9. ZJYL 4.4. CLRB 4.4. PLL up 3.6. EXK. K31 UUU 28 B Riley initiates buy crypto stocks trading higher uh, Equifax trading lower earnings uh, INFY down 71 off earnings RTO down 63 Q1 trading update LVS down 36 off earnings Tesla down 32 Deutsche Bank downgrade European March new car registrations Taiwan semiconductors TSM down 17 off earnings BX down 14 ON down 1 TXN down 1 Key down 0.6 off earnings LAC down 26 55 million share offering Etsy down 4.6 downgrade Ocol down 45 reports phase 1 data of apaxi and diabetic uh, retinopathy. BHVN down 4.5, 5.6 million offering. TXJ 
uh, down 4-3. Reaction to Burke's acquisition. DJT down 2-1. Match down 2-1. Morgan Stanley assumes equal weight versus prior overweight. BSM down 1-8. NRXP down 22. Common stock offering. CAN down 20. Uh, a common stock offering. IZM down 14-2. Follow on and withdraw of, pros of prospectus. Ranny down 6. STI down 4. Napa down 3-9. Barclays downgrade. Vanda down 3-2. Proc down 2-8. And Cattle down 2-6. And then in sympathy to Satorius, SRT3 results. Argen, DHR, and TMO are all trading lower. Wow. ba da ba 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 Chattadonia. Oh my gosh, that took way longer than expected. We only have 30 seconds. Go. 30 seconds for plays. Quickly. Quickly. Go. 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 Oh, man. We need the likes, too. I don't know how. It's already... Oh, my goodness. The time puts... GG. Puts on puts. You only have 15 seconds. Holo. Go. GLD calls. Apple calls. Arm puts. Spy. NVIDIA puts. Spy calls. Baba. PFE. Send it in likes. FMB continuation. Pfizer shares. TSM. DFS. Hit the likes. Spy puts. NVIDIA. Hello world. Arm puts. Netflix calls. Mulan. Buy the dip. Netflix. Puts on calls. Tesla. Final plays. Jesus. Spy puts. Gold up. Spy calls. Tesla calls. And UVXY. Ladies and gentlemen. Wow. I can't believe we pushed it to the wire like that. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at the Colt, before we do anything, before we try to chase a dollar, before we try to enrich ourselves, we must pay homage to a very special group of people that has made a sacrifice that most of us never have and never will. And I am talking about the veterans of the United States of America. So on behalf of the Colt, the people here, the people not here, want to give a huge special shout out, all the active servicemen, past servicemen, anybody who has served this country, even the families for real. Thank you, thank you, thank you, regardless of whether or not you agree with your leaders and who told you and gave you the orders. Y'all still made a commitment and sacrifice for people, and it was bigger than y'all. So thank you, veterans. We love you, and I hope all of you continue this love and appreciation day in and day out. So big shout-out to the vets, and big shout-out to anybody else out there giving back to their local communities, all the doctors, nurses, teachers, firefighters, police officers, the janitors, the garbage men, the coaches, Anybody giving back, making their community run. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And keep it up, baby. But ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Place your right hand over your heart. Say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, baby. Set the Jets! Oh, it's game time, baby. Horn off. <laughs> oh, Chattadonia. It's game time. I hope you're ready again. TSM is trading lower, even though their earnings was pretty good. So the market's holding up. I think TSM might surprise. You got Fed Williams. He is speaking right now. And then, uh, what's it called? I have a couple of plays. So I'm going to be watching TSM. Netflix, obviously, they report after the bell. Again, eBay, they got a good upgrade. We had Arm from yesterday. I'm going to keep an eye on MU, and then we'll see all the other chip makers with TSM. And then 23andMe, again, they said they wanted to go private, so they started to move. You guys were talking about that. And then going to keep an eye on Retail and Nordstrom's. But that's it. Y'all can keep posting plays if you like while you like the video. But actually, we have yeah, we need 300 likes in a minute. Uh, so I don't know how much you like the plays. But if you have any more plays, you post them. If you have any questions, you let me know. It's 60 seconds. And then the bell goes ding, ding. So God bless you. Nordstrom's is in a couple weeks for earnings. So and then, oh, Procter Gamble too. I have that on my list as well. I would watch that. 23 and Me. CEO said that they want to go private. They're up 30%. It's a penny stock. You guys were literally telling me about it last week, and we were talking about that being a buyout candidate. Fed Williams does not feel urgency to cut rates. BBG. BBG. Williams seems monetary policy is working the way we hoped. Fed Williams. Fed rate hikes are not my baseline forecast. 
So that's good. He said no rate hikes. And then we got 30 seconds. I don't know how many likes we need, but I love you regardless. You know what I'm saying? I love you regardless. Oh, yeah, we need 130 likes. I don't think we're going to do it, man. You have five, four, three, two, one. Boop. Round one. Fight. Good luck, y'all. Good luck, man. All right, we're off. And again, take a look at any of the chip makers. So TSM going lower. It's below the 106. I just had that one. Not TSM, ARM. U.S. is targeting 16 individuals in response to Iran's attack on Israel. U.S. sanctions Iran drone production. So we just sanctioned Iran because of uh, Israel. DFS pop. I forgot about that one. Uh, DFS. So I'm glad we didn't play it. I don't think uh, I don't think there was any movers yesterday. And then there's Elevance, Elevance, E L V. They're up by three. They were up a little bit more. There's Procter Gambling, Meta, Crazy. Remember, you had the snap news yesterday. TSM earnings were good, but it's trading a little lower. Uh, is that not open? A couple of option chains are not opening up here. Tesla's on the high. Pinduo Duo, again, chips are all doing pretty bad. Again, people are talking about NVIDIA technically being in a, a, a technical correction. TSM options just open. So let's see. It's down four, which is kind of surprising. Again, the guidance was good. Even the earnings on this quarter. Tesla is on the high. Micron going down. They had a little bit of the news. Intel's trying to come up and go green. UNH on the high. AMD. AMD's in the green. UAL ripping. Remember, UAL went crazy yesterday. And then Netflix, keep in mind, I think it's pricing around 8 or 9. So that's going to move throughout the day. But it is early. You could keep in mind any of those pre-earnings plays if you want them. Uh, where's, the bank? where's the banks? Bank of America up by 1%. Morgan Stanley, U.S. President Biden says U.S. is holding Iran accountable with new sanctions. Netflix just went red. Hawaiian Airlines on the high. Where's the other one? Elevance. Elevance did good. They're continuing. Uh, who was the other one? DHI as well. Agba halted 23. I think we've read that they're, they're on the pre-market movers. DHA coming down. U.S. acting in coordination with G7, Biden says. What was Agba? Agba was merger with Triller. Is that like Triller, the music app? But yeah, so they're going to merge or they're going to merge with somebody. Airbnb on the high. We saw, we saw that one move the other day. UNH. They were on the high last time I saw them. High low tickers like balancing out. I mean, we are coming down. So believe it or not, remember today, right now, the earnings weren't bad, but we are still in a, you know, we're still kind of in this range of yesterday. So, I mean, if you go, the, today was supposed to be the relief and that's how it started in the morning. We've seen other days, but we'll see where that comes, comes in later. Trump, hush money juror excused after raising concerns about aspects of her identity that had been made public. We sell off at 10. Apple starting to move up. Spy going down. Again, DHI, Elevance. Uh, DHI gave up. Elevance actually holding up. TSM, that was your other earnings. I mean, it's down, but not as much. Baba is coming up to the high right now. So 5028, I mean you fill the gap at 5019. So that's crazy. You're even holding lower than any of the highs from yesterday. Or like again how low we were like yesterday we were dancing around on that gap fill. You were like above the day. Now we're still like this is lower than yesterday's low. 
Discover going DFS. Uh, yeah, they're up two dollars now. They were not even moving, so two percent after being break even. UAL I think is squeezing, man. Again, after yesterday's move, it's insane, bro. They're up another five, and then there's something on JetBlue this morning too. They're up four. I think they got an upgrade in response. Yeah, home sales in 25 minutes. Bro, Arm is getting destroyed. So Arm might break that 100. Meta and Apple holding green. Coinbase 2, they're near the high again. Crypto. Meta. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I think it's that. I think it's the TikTok bill effect. TSM on the high now. So TSM down only 3.7 only, but still pretty big. Tesla, Chicle, Spy as well. NASDAQ already in the reds. Uh, Dow and Russell, they are holding up, but Spy is about to go red right now. So literally, this is the gap fill. So whatever a little... I mean, again, the relief was really weird today. I mean, you were kind of just dancing around. You sold off a little bit, came back up, but yeah. I feel like you were stronger on Monday or Tuesday when we gapped up. Info systems. I don't. Infi. Looks like foreign reporting, but that's weird. Check INFY. They're moving. I'm getting numbers. Yeah, info systems four six revenue. Bro, Nvidia down point four again. EM and the bonds too. So this is where it gets weird because now spies red, but if bonds go red today, I would expect the market could hold up a little better. A dollar ripping now, UAL going. UAL's insane. UAL's another five. And yesterday it went up like fifteen or nineteen. The dollar is back to green. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's going too crazy. And then again, bonds near the lows. Spy. Again, people are talking NVIDIA correction. So just the fact that NVIDIA is down 10% from its high, people are talking correction. Fed Williams, 2% inflation target has served the Fed very well. Says 2% is the right objective. Am Dizzle, they just went red. Fed Williams, critical for Fed to achieve 2% inflation target. Tesla, damn, Tesla's at 150, yo. That's crazy. Then DH Horton, stock buyback news. Oh, they might be having their conference call right now. Spy going lower, but uh, dude, Tesla is at the level. I didn't realize it. So remember, we were talking about flushing, but dude, you're at 150 flat. So this opens up the door to 144, and then I think if you get to like 139, 140, that's that's it. The lifeboats start to come out. But that's bad on young Tessie. Good morning. It has been straight red. I mean, this if this candle could go green, I mean, to open up here first 10 minutes, I mean, it's been literally just straight red. So you're still seven points off the lows. Remember... 5033 to like even 5018. These are like a weird level 5022. But we got to get below 5000 still. But these are all still baby levels that are kind of resistance from yesterday. Tesla's still going travelers on the high. UNH going up. DFS going. 2.5. Where's AXP is the next one? Keep them in mind for earnings. And then I don't know, man. High ticker is pretty active, but it looks to be just volatility indexes. Spy going lowered. Fed Williams not worried about the Fed as an institution. Trump hush money judge directs press not to report juror answers. 
to questions about where they work. 50-12 now. This is danger zone. You were, you did you barely even dropped here yesterday. So again, anything holding 50-12, it was literally four minutes yesterday. But yeah, so literally you had about 0.3 of relief in the morning. Cash open though. You have dumped all of it. Dollars starting to run. Meta up. Cart getting killed. Dollar is still elevated. AMD now on the low. Cart is down two. Damn, back down to 35. Wasn't it just at 39? I guess everything had that. If you drop for a couple days in a row, it just bloop. Netflix down 0.65. Again, where's TSM? TSM came. Dude, I'm surprised TSM's down six. So remember, TSM, we killed it on that last earnings there. I mean, granted, it was a much lower price, but TSM did not have the same signals as the other ones. So some of the other earnings that sold off the other day, I mean, they just didn't do good on guidance or anything, but I think TSM had one weak metric. It cautioned on macro-related demand. That was it. TMO on the high. And then Procter Gamble now running. Adobe, I mean, just how much money they make. Because, <laughs> again, they've been selling off since that earnings. Yeah, Airbnb was active. Alrighty. Tesla, kind of big candle. Russian tightens travel rules for officials due to fear over secrets. Oh. Okay, I made a play. I want to watch the Civil War movie. I made the play, but we are lacking on the likes. So best I could give you is that it was on the watch list yesterday. So I made a play from the watch list. The lays on the high, AISP on the low. UNH has been going up all day, 3.1, and then SPY, too, a couple of candles. So literally four candles here from the bottom. Again, the first 10 candles of the day were literally all red. I mean, we just opened up, two. You're getting back up to open. SPY still red. NASDAQ's down a third. Tesla, 149. Wow. Yikes. So Tesla, again, I think 144 is your next level. And then after 144, just if you break, if it goes down, if it breaks 140, I think Tesla $100 watch will be next. Not not in the same day, obviously, but hopefully you get the general idea. Oh, Nordies, they were up here a little bit. They're coming back down six on the low. Procter Gamble just flipped. TLT broke 89. Once, I mean, again... Maybe it's bittersweet, but bonds are down today after recovering yesterday. But 
I do think that if the bonds are bad today, the market should hold up. That one day delay has been on the money. You think it has to do with uh, Elon's money that he wants? I mean, it could be part of it, but quite frankly, I mean, the auto industry is slowing down. That's uh, objectively true in a broad sense. However, the EV market is totally abysmal. So just like straight demand and like what the industry is going through, the stop sale even on the Cybertruck, there's a lot of things factoring into it. But I just think uh, earnings and not being, uh, you know, again, EVs and Teslas, it's not really the, the most excited thing. I still want a cyber truck. I just don't want them expensive. I want the cheap one. Bro, you know what I saw? The uh, again, this is what I'm saying, bro. Cars are getting cheap. I told you guys the like G-Wagon squared. That car used to have a quarter million premium. Now they're selling it below market. Does anybody want a Corvette? You guys remember the C8 Corvette? The car had a $80,000 MSRP. They were selling it for 150. Bro, you could go get one right now at sticker price. You could go get a used C8 Corvette for 60 grand. It's insane. So, it's just like auto prices have came down quite considerably or at least you're you're calming down on the craziness. NVIDIA dip. Dude, they're literally saying NVIDIA is in a correction because it's down 10% from that high. The Civil War trailer. That's it's the number one movie. So again, I don't know. Let me check if it updated. But right now, it's it's actually doing better than any movie out there. And then it wasn't that big of a budget, which is crazy. I'm proud to be an American where I know Jerome will cut rates. And I won't forget the day he said that the Fed plans to pivot. Movie box office. I hope this updates. No, I don't think it does. 25-7. That was the same number yesterday. But I think at, at the end of last week, Civil War brought in, I mean, $25 million on the first weekend. I just saw Immaculate last. I don't know what's that. What did I watch? I watched something. I forgot it. Oh, I started watching Fallout. I got like half of the first episode. Oh, Sydney Sweeney. Oh. Uh, I just I told my girl I saw that I I've, I saw that movie because it came up on Amazon and I was with my girl and I was like can we watch this and she was like why do you want to watch that and I was like my favorite actress is in it and I was she's like oh yeah she didn't like that she did not I wouldn't do that fellas I would not do that Secretary Yellen. Uh, yields extend climb after will or no U.S. Treasury yields not Treasury Yellen, <laughs> and then Tesla hits 15 month low. You're new to trading. What should you be looking at? I mean, try to understand the general like momentum. Try to get your idea on the pulse of the market. I would get a long term too. Uh, that's the next thing I would start with. But try to, under, you know, I think right now entering in the market, I would just get familiarized with like literally what has moved us over the last like couple of years and under, you know, you're going to have to have a a crash course in a, in rates and bonds and understanding why that's all important. But uh, it's pretty much that's all it is, just Powell and rates and what's driving us here, jobs data, all that good stuff.
your ex would get mad when I watched two broke girls. You don't get jealous over TV girls. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a weird world, man. It's a weird world. You're playing with fire. That's what I've learned in my experience. The better than expected claims. I mean, we had a little bit of relief. And we're bouncing up, guys. Be careful. I forgot. Was that last week? I feel like we've had a day like that where we start off early in the morning, start going down the lows, and then it does that little automatic bounce. I think that was on Tuesday. And then it just bounces out of there, and then we're chill. But Because, again, that went from all cash sell-off to you're right back up now to the midpoint. Oh, dude, I did see the rain in Dubai. That shit was crazy. They said it was just a normal storm because everyone's like, it's the cloud seeding. Blame the clouds. But then, like, I don't even know, bro. But, like, dude, I saw one. I saw I saw this girl driving in Dubai, which that alone was shocking. I was like, wow, they could drive. Progressive. And then, but then, like, she was driving and it was raining, bro. And I've never seen that. I've never seen rain eliminate full visibility on on the freeway and she was still driving i was tripping out i would have been terrified they made it illegal to share the storm video yeah bro that's just crazy it was insane Oh, where is it? MPW loves 476. You guys know they have X dividend. So today is the last day to buy MPW if you want the dividend. Surprise. I'm sure there isn't any argument about cloud seeding. It's almost certainly. Um... If you want to take that approach, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's there's a debate. I don't think anything's a certainty. Uh, but I do think uh, that's how the conversation goes. You see the rain and then you're like, is that natural? Or is that because of all of Dubai's weather manipulation? Texas and Massachusetts banned chemtrails. I remember if, when, like, you guys remember, like, you know, chem- chemtrails? Like, that was, like, your gateway drug in the tinfoil. Like, you you needed it, all low-key. Like, if you didn't freak out about chemtrails, like, you don't even deserve to be a tinfoilist. I'm not going to lie to you. But I remember that was, like, the biggest conspiracy at the time. And then the other day, San Francisco was like, oh, yeah, like, we put stuff... In the sky. What? But yeah. Yeah, Globe Life. Remember, Globe Life had a big day yesterday, too. Well, they're going up 5.4. Tesla still coming lower. <clears throat> We are fooked. No, we're doing decent. I mean, the fact we're holding up, we were just a little bit red, but maybe today will be the relief. Otherwise, if we go red today, this will be the first, like, down five days in a row since the beginning of the year. But you had a little bit of relief today, but then that faded. I'm surprised the TSM sold off. I don't know. My voice isn't is a little, little raspy today, even though I had Josh AI. I think I had good sleep. I don't know. I worked out. Maybe that's it. Yeah, Airbnb 2-2, man. I'll take it back to 160. It held up good, though. This is the first time in a while. I mean, 
Usually, like, Airbnb would sell off its earnings coming into earnings. You know what I'm saying? Like, last year, they had a good earnings. They popped up, and then by the time they reported, stock was at, like, 115, then popped up, and then died. But the fact that it's still near the high range leading into it, and we still have a couple weeks, though. So that's it. You could buy MPW now and sell tomorrow and get the dub. Yeah. It's not 12. You'll get 4% or 3%. So it's split up by quarter. But technically, yes. If you buy MPW today uh, and then sell it tomorrow at open, then you'll get the uh, you'll get the dividend. Or I think you need to do it the next day after tomorrow. But you would only get 3%, not 12 Because it pays 12% a year split up four months at a time. Or three months at a time. Kenya Defense Forces. Chopper carrying chief crashes. Oh, man. Dude, didn't... Wasn't there another... Or is that Nigeria? Wasn't it a couple months ago the Nigerian dude uh, in America died in a helicopter? Does it make sense to buy just to sell after Divi? It does if you're a computer. Like, if you're a computer and you could math and your math is mathing, you know, and you have a good prediction and you buy it at the right time, you know, yeah, you can. Or, or what's even better, Chatadonia? Indo Pop, Spy Pop in, JBL, BNB on the high. Damn. If MPW drops a little bit more, I'd be down to buy it for dividend. You know why? What do you guys need to be looking at? So low key, if you want to play MPW for dividend, there's only one move I would do. Just one move. What do you think it would be? If you want to only play the dividend. Well, obviously you would need shares. There you go. You're getting closer. We I buy an option, but but why would I buy the option? Or like, how can I make it work? For free. <laughs> What's up, baby? Yeah. So we needed to move a little bit. So remember, they're going to pay a dividend out. And the dividend is 15 cents a share. So as long as we could, if we could buy the shares at a certain price and then protect those shares for less than 15 cents a contract, it's free money. So if we could somehow protect it, if we could get this one at like 10 cents or something, or stock comes down and the 450s are only going for 10 cents, we'd get 5 cents a share for free. But then the idea is let your dividend pay for your put protection if you want to play for the dividend. MSTR on the high. Data in two. Yeah, existing home sales. Expected to be 4-2. Remember, New home sales plummeted uh, the last time, just a couple of days ago. NVIDIA filled the gap. Intel going down. Microsoft, too. Yeah, Intel, that's cold. Again, all the chips, though. Can you repeat that about MPW? You do realize the dividends are baked into the options. Yeah, but not all the time. Again, it just it all depends on the pricing and the movement. But I mean, I've done this on MPW. I've made a I think last time this worked, I made like three thousand dollars. And it was just because the stock was moving around so much. So depending and then I, I bought into the shares and then the stock kept going. And then at one point I was able to make my 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 shit free and then get the get the dividend for free. Data in thirty. 
Yemen's Houthi chief says our operations have targeted 98 ships. I think the Naira has been going insane. Remember, they devalued it. They like widen the range themselves. You read but not repeated it. Oh, my bad. I was getting into another conversation. And then data just came out. 4.19 estimate 4.2. So existing home sales pretty much in line. Four, I guess 4.3 month over month. So the month over month came in bigger like on miss, but not that bad. Yeah, it came in four versus 2.2. Market should like that. I mean, again, real estate data has been all bad. So it's good for the market. But yeah, my bad. I was uh, saying though, it was MPW. All you have to realize is what the stock pays in dividend. And then if you can get, if you can get a cheaper option than the dividend, your dividend is going to pay for your put protection. So ideally, it would be like if you could get the like this, let's say the stock's trading at five dollars. If you could get a five dollar put that expires in two days for five cents, let's say, and then the stock pays a 15 cent a share dividend, it would allow you to buy the stock before X dividend, get the dividend. And even if the stock drops below five, your put will make you that money back. So then you can't lose on the downside. And then you'll just collect the dividend minus whatever you paid for the puts. But the general idea is that if you want to play X dividend, take a look at the option chain and then see the price of the dividend it pays out. Because then sometimes you could let the dividend pay for the insurance. Ta-da! CLSK on the high. I just saw something moving. Mara. MPW is waking up. So, like, this is what I'm saying. We might be able to do it, but it just all depends. Ideal, if the stock goes higher, we would need the $5 put at $0.15 cents or lower. Or if the stock comes down, we need the stock near four fifty, and then these options can't go above 15 so it may not happen. Ideally, if you front ran the stock, you would have been able to get it. Oh, what if you front ran the peach? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Bradley Frizzle and the peach, it's here. Good morning, Horna. Oh, whoa, oh, wow, it just flew. Oh, my gosh, Peach Nation, Bradley Frizzle. How you doing, baby? Friday, Junior. Oh, glorious Friday, Junior. Are you kidding me? Now we have the peach. Oh, we're locked and loaded. Now spy back to VWAP. Oh, look at the chat go crazy for the peach. Good morning, Friday, Junior. Why the market will like the housing data? <clears throat> I mean, generally, weaker housing data means less inflation fears. That's the simple way. You know, strong real estate, you know, real estate prices have already been coming up. CPI, owner's equivalent of rent, everything else, you know, people, uh, you know, high cost of housing has had an impact on CPI and inflation. So anything showing less demand, anything that could lead to uh, lower prices, uh, good sign, good sign for markets. <clears throat> mm -mm. Where is it? Damn, Dizzle. And Spy dancing around here at VWAP. TLT still near the low. You think more inflation is good for higher asset prices? What? I'm confused. But we don't we don't want high inflation. We don't want that. We don't want that. Remember, remember the fear right now, like, and I don't know if you guys have picked up on it. People are fighting back against it, but like it's, it's gotten into the conversation. People are talking about rate cuts again. People are bringing up if that, 
if that starts to come up here. And why? It's because we're worried about inflation. So again, like your data now, four months, six months, depending on how you want to look at it, all of your three or six month averages, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not looking good. Goldman President John Waldron speaks at SEMA 4 event. People are talking hikes. I meant hikes, not cuts. My bad. But yeah, there people are talking rate hikes. No way they're talking hikes. It's it's getting into the conversation. I'm not it's not like you're not pricing it in. It's not like that's consensus, but like it's a it's it's a whisper. Uh, you know, but like you're definitely hearing it. People are talking about high inflation and what it would mean and then again all the Fed speakers too, but you know, the the bearish of the bearish in terms of inflation, they they're already talking that there's reasonable cases why the Fed may need to raise rates. Uh, when it's all said and done. <clears throat> VFS on the high. TTD, same mistake Europe did. Was it? I don't know. But then again, I mean, there is still the fears of the economy slowing down. <clears throat> you still going to the gym? I haven't seen many chess videos. I just stopped making, I, I don't know where my charger is. And then I got tired of filming them on there. It got easy. To not do the videos, but nah, man, I'm still working out. I'm a little skinny fat, but I'm still still doing pretty good, man. I was looking at my back is pretty ripped. I've been doing a lot of back workouts, so feeling good with that. Chest is still good. Gio, I think still just bouncing from the last couple of days. What are you curling? Same 40s. Not too much. I try to just get good, but like I, I'm still handling them. Forties, great. The MU, I don't know if it's priced in, but it had a reaction. So I mean, today <clears throat> it was actually up way more. But remember, they've gone back and forth, hasn't it? Or wasn't it Intel? They got the government pulled, and then then they're like, "Oh, never mind, we got the loan." Abavacious. Is it? That's not halted, is it? Mm. Meta Abbey Vice not halted. I just don't know what's going on with it. That's moving up though. It's crazy how fast they dropped from 180, though. Is gold going up because of stagflation fears? Oh, I added to the list, my brother. Uh, there's a lot. So the, I think it was last week uh, that I made uh, that I made the video, but like gold still has several several things uh, in, in, impacting it. And again, even then, I would even argue just straight government problems and are worried about unsustainability again i think even the imf brought that up yesterday you know that you know the imf called out the u.s they didn't call it out they said it very nice but they even said that like you know yeah the united states is outperforming right now but they said it's because of fiscal uh, unsustainable like fiscal policy and it's how much money we're putting in so gold that's a big reason why it's reacting to that i mean there's chinese buyers there's there's so many reasons for gold right now. So it's not just one answer. Uh, 
Abovicious. Meta is up 2-4 against Snap. They're even holding up. Bonds near the low. Spy getting back to open. So remember, Spy's green now. We, we had relief. We gapped up a little bit. Sold off in seven minutes. All of it. And then now you are right back up. And then this is still even into the lower end of yesterday. I mean, again, the day before that, Tuesday, the low end was like 50-40. So you're still still nine points off of that. MU pop. Still watching arm. Yeah, I made a play on that one yesterday. And how much down on the intel? Uh, you're going to have to figure it out. So I don't know if you noticed. I'm not going to be answering those questions. If you have a genuine question about the company, I will answer it. But I have started to interpret a lot of your guys' questions as disingenuine. And that's why if you know I made the play, you're here following along, I encourage you to stay with it. But I'm not going to give you my play updates uh, second by second, minute by minute. So follow. if you have questions about the play, though, I'd love to, uh, love to, again, even with gold too, I'll talk about it. We could discuss it, understand why it's there, but I'm not going to be giving uh, updates. Genuine questions, though, I got you. Navidia. It came up. Again, we were talking correction. And then Apple's not holding up. Microsoft was weak. They didn't do good. Amazon was green in the morning. And they flipped. The big reload. We're going to see. Because, like, usually on these pullbacks, I feel like even then, even in August, even in August, before we, if we really are going to die, you know what I'm saying? Like, before we do anything, it's going to be, uh, like there, there, there was a pop in August and October. That's all I'm trying to say. We had that sell-off pressure ads, then random pop, and then continue, then random pop. So there's a reload somewhere out there. Again, I I think we're waiting for earnings for it, but you know, it's it's definitely lurking around the corner. Sympathy to Netflix, Disney, Paramount. Uh, who else? WBD, I think is that the same one. But Netflix has a weird set of, like, sympathies, but it's going to affect tech. I think a lot of the tech space will get affected by it. Uh, but then uh, it's Disney would probably be the closest one. Thanks for all you do. Tommy Lass is 2019, Darius. And he just joined today, too, baby. Horna. <laughs> Amen. Welcome. You hear about Uber and the profits came from holding in other companies, not from its business? No. I knew some of it was like that, but I did not I didn't hear anything like this was like a expose. Why is TLT so resilient? Because it, it died already. So it's like, is TLT resilient or is it just in a coma? You know, bond yields are near 5% right now. So, uh, you know, that's kind of just the story. So right now we're the market's kind of building up the courage to either go above five or top out again at five. But if we go up from there, I mean, that's why it's like we're kind of holding now, but next level you'll know. And we'll either run away from here or get even worse.
Just apologies. No, you're good, man. Even somebody else. Uh, I may not. I wasn't even talking about you. It's just in general. Everybody. Some people have certain intentions and not. But you know, like if you're in the play, you were there when I bought it. You know what price I got it at. You've watched the watch list. I've said the plan. You know, I kind of just want you to follow along a little bit. But I don't want to spend. You know, I think I spend probably a couple hours a day just. What play do you have? I have this. I have that. I have. I'm holding. I'm this. Holding this. I'm holding it. And I'll answer it a thousand times for the same people. And it just got into a point where I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that burden on you guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna defer from it. We are ripping, literally after ten minute sell off. I'm 19. What are your thoughts on dropping three to five k on Intel? Looking to hold for 10 years. What are your thoughts? Honestly, if I and listen, man, you're 19 years old. If you're genuinely gonna stick to that plan of holding for 10 years, I think I think you're gonna be great. Uh, no matter you know, you could diversify it a little bit, but that's it. You're probably the biggest risk to that plan is that you're gonna do it today, and then by the time you're 20 years old, you're gonna change your mind. And then whatever Intel's at, whether it's up or down, you're going to sell it and then move it into something. But as if you really have a plan to, like, stick with it, then I, I think it's a great idea. Uh, again, Intel has its risks, but I, I do think it'll be here in 10 years. And, again, you are young and you have that time. So, but like, if you really stick to that plan, that's an easy answer and it's it's a good move. Yeah, if that is your full amount of money, though, like, if that's all your savings, you don't have to buy it at once. You, you could space it out. You could go buy, you know, $300 a month for a year until you spend it all. And then that way you could get a good price on it, learn a little bit more about it, let it do its thing, and go from there. UNH on the high, spy breaking out. Whatever you dealt with the morning, my brother, does not matter. You're hitting new high of the day now. Again, yesterday when we broke above here, you got to 5040. If we break 5040, 5050 to 5057, that will be the uh that will probably be the uh the resistance or breakout level. Amazonian DJT on the high was it IOT yes I'm sorry they got to upgrade TSM I'm surprised they didn't do that good man like the earnings was good again there was like weird worries on the macro but Super wild. But then we'll see what Netflix does. Market's still holding up good, though. I'll take that. NASDAQ has gone green. Remember, that was the weakest on the day here. Yeah, you had Bowman earlier, and you had Williams, and one more. And then we're going to get Bostic in a little bit. High ticker, bro, fully gassing right now. What time is it? We're about 10 minutes shy of the first hour. Volume is pretty good, actually. So a little bit above average, and we're not even on the... the uh, we got like 10 more minutes. Boeing's actually up. IWM, damn, Russell's up 0.5. So IWM was stronger in the morning. Them and Dow, they were the ones holding off, but damn. NVIDIA 850 watch, the JRVR again. And then Nordstrom's, that's been doing good, so they've been holding up. Gildan, we have not heard about the buyout on that. 
Appel. Five ten by end of the day. Oh wow. Well, I don't know where that'd be SPX wise. Uh, we were there. That was like what Monday Monday candle. So fifty one hundred maybe. We did this whole week was starting above fifty one hundred and breaking it. Maybe by Friday, fifty one hundred will be on watch, but we'll see. I'm looking at the bonds. I think it's the the dog. If the delay is there, bro. So I think if bonds go higher or lower, it's just gonna lead us for today or tomorrow. So if stocks open, if stocks close green, bonds are red today. I think tomorrow will be red, and then bonds will get a bid, or vice versa. Or even then, markets could still go red, but it won't be as much as long as the bonds lead. Oil, I mean, I think oil is kind of insane. You know, just there's a lot of factors that have gone into it over the couple of years, how people use it for in recession or not, how it's given good signals. But now it's just like a matter of supply and war. So I just I think I think oil just as easily has the ability to go to 120 a barrel just as easy as it does to go down to 40. And that's where I'm again, I'm, I'm actually, you know, I feel I feel safer making a play on gold and then oil just for again leverage and sizing that'll bring up two different things but like i feel like oil you don't really know what's it has a full scenario that can make it go insane but then it also can just as easily die and the same control we've seen from a couple of years ago can easily you know it's a commodity and it could come back down Yeah, the yield curve is beautiful. We're going to find out. Well, Netflix Netflix estimates have been high every time, but I mean, I said it on the watch list yesterday. Just don't like it's weird because Netflix Netflix has matured a lot, but they're going back to their old days. And what I mean by that is that it's like straight up we're reacting to the subscriptions like Netflix has been user growth. I don't know if people, the analysts have been, been noticing it, but you know, like you've really got to pay attention. The last year of Netflix, nothing, none of it was like profitability. There was some good margins here and there. There was good releases, but like, do you guys realize it's, it's been solely memberships. I do. I want to say it was a, a 200% increase in memberships just from like last year till now. Uh, that's why it, like it ran up again, the paid memberships and the, the shifting of the, of the password sharing, like that is a huge factor. So Netflix, I don't, I don't really think the numbers estimates matter. I think first and foremost, they have to come up with users. If they have users, it's, it could hold up a little bit. Then the next part is going to be the ad spending. I'm telling you, I have a, I'm starting to get data and Netflix is starting to release like more data on their advertising platform. So that it's, it's still early on and that's a whole nother segment building out. So we, we do want to hear about the margin in that, how it has grown, grown and how much they've made off of it. But memberships and ad business, that too, that could determine half of the report, if not 75% of it. Everything after that's going to be uh, international penetration, and then just then we're going to get to margins and free cash flow, earnings, all that stuff. So, but in in a weird way, I mean, it's it's borderline. I don't know if people are for they don't know how to forecast the memberships, but I do think that's what it what it has to do with. Hmm. Uber rolls out blue checkmark system for rider verification. Wow. So now you can get a blue checkmark on Uber. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. So I, that guy who said earlier about Uber, you were saying that like their money comes from selling. So I don't I see like an expose on that. But there was a company today, SBOT. They did a, I think this is an IPO. Yeah. So the Uber selling some of their shares in SBOT. That's all I've heard on that, though. Uh, what was I saying before that? The Uber check? I was going to tell you guys something. I might have blinked. Uber... Oh, what were we talking about? There's something before the Uber check. It distracted me. I had it on my news. Oh, the Netflix. I was just saying, I oh no, I was just saying like the, no, we already talked about the data ads. But yeah, that is, Uber is making some money off the holdings. Netflix contracts are expensive. I'm not, I'm not in the, in the market. Remember we hit Netflix afterwards. I hit a 600 percenter on Netflix the day after. Well, no, Uber already owned the shares. They're just selling their shares as part of the offering. ECB Holtzman, if Fed doesn't cut, can't see three to four cuts this year, says ECB. Couldn't look through potential oil shock. Are we going to figure out the pricing so we know what contracts to look at for tomorrow? Or how do you do that? Are you, are you kidding, maybe? I think you know how to do that. You know how to price in options. You know how to do it for earnings, baby. You good. Dow Jones, Trump. What? Up 20. 16. And then Spy, New High, Meta, Holtzman. ECB a little bearish, but he's doing his thing. MPW, I don't know. Keep your eye out on the MPW chain. Just if those $5 contracts, if they get cheap, if they get lower than 15 I mean, that's your arbitrage. I like Salesforce. I just, the price is up there. It's the only problem, but Salesforce kind of had one of those recoveries like uh, Meta, and then Bond's coming down lower. And JWN. What's the other one? ELV, Elevance, damn. They kept going five, and then Meta. And then Bond's are dropping here a little bit. Tesla's working its way up. Again, that below 150 today. Kind of nuts. Where are the bad news at? None. Senior IMF official in countries where inflation is low, notably China. There's room to support demand through monetary policy. Yeah, Dow Jones Trump. I think that's my new name for it. It's up 16. It's running. Radius. Oh, where's PG? Snow. I mean, Spy's holding up. Let's see what Bonds do. But, I mean, it's not out of the question. Bonds could get clapped even more. Like I'm saying, just Bonds die. Bonds hit their new highs every day. I mean, in this case, we won't go up to a new high. But it's creating a little bit of that lag. And then JP Morgan on the high right now. U.S. natural gas storage, $50 billion versus estimate of $51 billion. All right. 
and it's hour number one, baby. So literally one hour in the books now. I do think volume is a little bit above average, could be better, but 12.8 million, I mean, still kind of active. Yeah, Home Builders, you had DHI with earnings today. So we'll see, but follow me on Instagram at the Trading Fraternity. I love you. I will be right back. You got a, a house for sale? Email me, tradingfraternity at gmail.com. At the same time, we know that uh, revi um, adjusted operating margin came slightly below expectations. It was 32%. Analysts expected 32.2%. And that was also the case, I mean, uh, numbers below expectations for both of its segments, such as risk insurance services and consulting segments. But overall, investors really like uh, those results. And I think that uh, some analysts pointed out that now when we see so many uh, risks uh, in terms of geopolitics, uh, economy, rising yields, and volatility. Co companies like Martian McLennan can do really well. All right, our thanks, of course, to Bloomberg's Natalia Kunijevich. And for more, I'm thrilled to say we're joined by John Doyle. He is Marsh McLennan, president and CEO, joining me on set. Great to have you. Thanks, Katie. It's good to be with you. So I'm going to read out some numbers. You know them okay. already. But for the first <laughs> quarter, we're talking about adjusted EPS of $2.89, beating the estimate of about $2.80. Revenue coming in at $6.47 billion. The estimate had been for below that as well. So beating uh, across some key metrics there. Where did that strength come from, that surprise to the upside? Yeah, thanks, Katie. I was very pleased with the start to the year. We really had an excellent start, both top line and bottom line. You know, you mentioned some of the high-level data. And, you know, to me, I think the, the strength was across the board. Um, we had excellent uh, growth in our consulting businesses when some others have been reporting some challenges. I mean, then on the risk side of our business, demand is quite strong. And, and while um, the macro environment um, has a great degree of uncertainty and complexity to it, um, right now it's, it's, it's driving strong demand for our services. I do want to talk about margins a little bit, because if you were looking for something to pick at, you could point to adjusted <laughs> operating margin coming in at 32 percent. That was just below the estimate of about 32.2 percent. You really have a long history of annual margin expansion. Can you explain what levers you have to pull right now when it comes to margins? As we were just talking with our first guest, margins really the focus for this earnings season. For sure, for sure. Although I think our growth really exceeded expectations as well. Um, we're very proud of our track record, 16 consecutive years of margin expansion. Um, we've guided to further margin, ex margin expansion here in 2024. Um, you know, we had a bit of a slower start to the year. It was expected for us, you know, there's some year-over-year -year headwinds, um, but we expect margin expansion to build throughout the year. So um, it'll be another good year of solid margin expansion for us. Can you go into what potential levers you do have, though? Because when it comes to a retailer, for example, I, th I think uh, everyone knows how you can boost margins there. But when it comes sure. to your business, insurance brokerage, what can you do? Well, there's a number of things. We have ongoing workflow and automation efforts happening in each of of our four businesses, Marsh, Mercer, Oliver Wyman, and Guy Carpenter. Um, we're also looking for value um, and creating efficiencies at the intersections of our businesses um, as well. So um, those are important levers for us. And of course, we're leaning in and experimenting in a big way around AI. And you know that's more down the road. I don't expect impact in 2024 and maybe not even 2025, but, um, but those are all levers for us. And so we see a fair amount of opportunity for further margin expansion. Well, you brought up AI, so we have to talk more <laughs> about okay. AI. Yeah. How do you see AI fitting into your portfolio of about four companies? We, we've used um, various AI tools for a number of years, and candidly, with mixed levels of success, we probably had more success in contact centers, call centers around the world with prior uh, evolutions of technology um, than we have in some other experimentation around data ingestion, policy review, um, as, you, uh, as you might expect. Um, but we're quite excited about the possibilities around the large language models. We've created a safe environment in, inside of the company to test and protect data. Um, and our colleagues are excited about it. We have 50,000 colleagues that are now testing um, AI. We've encouraged them to test. Um, we're, aligning around a number of use cases that you know have some level of potential to scale. So I'm reasonably certain it'll make us faster. Um, I've got a lot of optimism around, uh, around will it make us more efficient. You know, I think the, the bigger question ultimately is does it make us smarter? I mean, mm. can we use some of these tools against our 
data sets and provide even better insights to our clients than we have in the past. So it sounds like you're in pretty early stages of a lot of those questions. I mean, do you have any thoughts about time frames over what timeline this could actually be a benefit to you? <laughs> it's a great question. As I said, I don't expect it to deliver um, much value to our shareholders in 2024. Um, so I, I think we're a couple of years out before you know we have scaled use cases that you know will really drive meaningful value. I do want to talk about the stock performance a little bit. You and I were talking about it before the segment started because I was taking a look at your stock over the past five years and was shocked to see it's up 130%. And really, your entire group has performed really solidly, outperforming the S&P 500 over that time frame, uh, as you can see on the chart there. How confident are you that uh, you know the group as a whole will continue to outperform, or would you use this opportunity to maybe set expectations? <laughs> well, I think because of that track record, expectations are high, and you know makes today you know particularly pleasing. You know, we got off to uh, to such a terrific start to the year. We're a resilient business, um, and we're fundamental to the economy. Um, probably a little underappreciated in, in terms of how important we are to economic stability, economic growth, um, really. A around the world. Um, so, you know, we're, we've got a, a track record of performing across cycles. You know, obviously we've seen some downtimes. Um, the economic challenges um, connected to, to the pandemic is a, a recent example of it. Um, but we have this an operating Marsh model that, you know, we have a lot of confidence. It's an interesting company. Yeah, they only have four. They do a lot of weird stuff. They do everything. It's like a bank. They like manage talent. They do a lot of different things. Marsh McLennan. And then he says he has four AI companies. Excited for possibilities. Spy man, we're up. This is very reminiscent. Again, spend 10 minutes dumping in the morning, sell off all the pressure there, and now we're back up. Like I told you, these are the two levels here. If we get above here now, so now you're looking at 50, 50, 50, 55. If you don't get above there, you're going to have to wait till end of the day to break that. Otherwise, if we could get above there and hold, I mean, this could change how today looks, and maybe we get a actual relief after five days. Again, it has been uh, four consecutive down days, four out of the last five. The resistance right here, it's going to be, uh, it was 50-40. You could get a little bit pullback here. Otherwise, I'm just looking for 50-50, and then 50-55, and then we're just going to plot back to the other levels here. Again, 50-75 or like 50-67. And then getting back up here. I don't think there's any... Actually, there's a gap to fill at 5,200. So, yalla, Habibi, yalla. So, we will see. Again, we got a couple more Fed speakers on the lineup today, too. Or I think one more. We will see. I'm trying to make an AI company that makes AI companies that makes AI companies that can make another AI company. I mean, I don't want to tell you this. Did you guys see that interview with Sam Altman? In front of all the VCs. I don't know if you saw it. Because like. Everybody laughed. But he didn't laugh. And I was like. Fuck. That's not a good sign. Because I've been in that, that situation. Where everybody laughs. And I didn't laugh. And I was serious. You didn't see it? Well. It's Sam Altman. Mr. I want to scan your eyeball. And he's talking in front of like in like a bunch of VCs, like raising money. And he's saying we have no revenue. We have no plans to generate revenue. Like we, we can't make money like we haven't. Just explaining how there's like no money made yet in the early stage and how they spent money building this like model and this AI. And then he says, but we do think at some point after we have it all built up, we will just ask this AI system how we can monetize it and make money off of it. And then everybody in the crowd laughs and then he doesn't. <laughs> so he pretty much says he's going to build an AI and then ask it how to make money off of it. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. You ready? Yeah, bro. This is a year ago. Stop it. Stop it. This is a year ago.
This is one year ago. So sort of amorphous, but it is a business. So I'm just wondering, like, eventually, is the idea to kind of like license technologies? Will you have customers that you're going to be customizing algorithms for them, or how, how is it going to work? You know, the honest answer is we have no idea. Um, we, we have never made any revenue. We have no current plans to make revenue. We have no idea how we may one day generate revenue. Um, we have made a soft promise to investors that once we've built this sort of generally intelligent system, um, basically we will ask it to figure out a way to generate an investment return for you. <laughs> it sounds like an episode of Silicon Valley. <laughs> it really, um, not it really does. I get it. I get, He's I, not I, laughing. Laugh. He's it's not right. laughing. Um, but it is what I actually believe is going to happen. A open AI is so. Yeah. That was a year ago, bro. We're going to ask it how to generate a return for you. Hey, man. Welcome. That is a year ago, though. I think that's the funnier part. Uber on the high. Weren't they down earlier? So Uber's starting to wake up. Bond's about to fall through the bottom. Senior IMF official, many countries in Asia saw currencies depreciate to a large extent, reflects interest rate differentials between U.S. and Asian economies. Janssen, significantly more confident in inflation outlook. Carp said something similar. Oh, really? I thought Carp got replaced today, but then it was Planet Fitness, not Palanter. I said that was close. That was close. And then we're still working up TSM now. So it's the highest TSM's been all day. Again, the earnings were good. There was you could if you're really picky, you could find the negative in it, but at the end of the day, they still went down. They were down six at one point. Am I going to lighten my Airbnb holdings? Um, is there a reason? Is, is this am I supposed am I supposed to go into hibernation? What do you mean? Where did these plans come from? I only have one plan, and I made it like three years ago, four years ago. I'm still on the journey. TLT did just flush through another low, so new high on yields once again. Bond yields. The difference is bond yields are not hitting a new high, like literally compared to. Uh, to the uh, other ones, or to the uh, other day. So that's the only good part. But again, Vons, they had their relief yesterday. Today they go down, and now the market looks unstoppable. But granted, I mean, remember, we sold off uh, a lot already in the last couple days. I mean, this is just taking you back to where you were at 8 o'clock yesterday, and then that little pop right before power hour. Well, and speaking, where's the two-year? Two-year, ten-year. Oh, the yield curve, still 0.35. It looked different just a couple days ago. This is fake? No, I think we're just moving in... In delayed gaps, waiting for events. Again, we still got a lot of earnings. Even after the bell, you guys have Netflix. So, I mean, if today does do good, it could all get wiped out with a bad report. Uh, if it does good and we get a good report, it'll support it. But I just, I think we're moving a couple, like every day, just individual. One day's for the bonds, one day's for the stocks, one day's for the currencies, one day's for the commodities. PRI, short report, bear cave. I mean, shit, last short report was GL. It kind of looks similar in the sense that stock was up, was already dying, but, you know, you may it may look like it's late, but you just got to gamble on it. But that, that could go either way with these short reports because, again, the latest one, GL, that was, that was insanity. But, again, we caught GL early too, but I, I was like, all right, it's already down 20% or something, but then that thing went down 50. So you're already down eight right now. You could go read go read the report though. I don't know what what they're mentioning in it, but that GL one was pretty intense.
Is PRI more insurance? Could be. Let me see. Primerica. Circulation, negative comments, bear cave. Primerica describes itself as a leading provider. Actually, man, these are so long. Okay, this one's not. Can I have Josh AI do this? Would you guys like Josh AI to give you the short report? Oh, I'm already seeing crazy keywords. I don't have all the pictures. You won't get the pictures, though, with Josh AI. Sometimes the pictures are the best. So, like, here it is. This is a screenshot from their recruitment video. This does look, this look like a pyramid scheme. That's pretty funny. So those are the only two pictures. Primerica. I don't know, man. I get, uh, like, all of these short reports are like, this is, it's a, it's a, it's a scam, you know? But I'm like, man, these insurance people are making hella bread. Because <laughs> I don't know, like, I think, I don't know, maybe some of y'all should get into insurance then. Y'all don't have to be scammy and, and sketchy. But it seems like the ones, this is, this is crazy. These guys, all these insurance people are like low-key ballers. Well, that's a lot. It's a lot of text. It'll be like four minutes of text. About buying land and developing it. So I don't know, man. I feel like... I feel like we could have a theme of the month, maybe, man. Or maybe I could make this a theme of the year. Uh, but it's a good idea if you have a plan. Plan. And you know, we had a long, long discussion on that yesterday. Even a little bit today. But plan, bro. Always. So, you know, like, again, like, we're really what's going to determine a lot of good investments. What's going to make, you know, what's going to make real estate a good investment? Stocks buying a company, you know, you could get into so many different things, but like, you got to really think about it. What is it? It's, it's, it's how you, it's your plan and your approach to it from the get go. So with, with land, I mean, you know, if you have people, if you have the contractors, if you could plan, prepare the licensing and the permitting, you know, and get all of that and you have a good plan there. I mean, the right plan developing is great. If you have experience in the right plan, you're going to do amazing. Otherwise, a poor plan to build, I mean, you 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 know, people run out of money. You know, my girlfriend was showing me houses the other day, and she was like, why do people sell houses like this? Uh, and they're like halfway remodeled houses. They're really nice, and they're still worth a lot, but it's like, it's like, a, it's like a gutted house. It's like a house looks nice on the outside, and then it just bones on the inside. And then they're saying, oh, come build it however you want. And I told them, like, most of the time those people ran out of money. So, like, it happens. It even happens in this market. Believe it, you would think it doesn't, but, oh, it does. You know, people buy houses. They begin a project. They begin a development either from the ground up or a remodel. And then if they don't plan and budget properly, they run out of money and then they, they sell it. Then they just sell whatever uh, the project was at that at that price. I don't know. We kind of are squeezing a little bit. I would say squeeze level is if we get above 50, 56. I wouldn't even call it major squeeze, but it would be a very optimistic move. And if we don't get above that, I mean, we're just we're just going to be in a wider range still. All right. You guys want your Primerica short report, PRI? 
Comerica, Noyesi, Pry, $7.34 billion, describes itself as a leading provider of financial products and services to middle-income households in the United States and Canada. The company has over 141,000 life insurance license sales representatives who have written 5.7 million life insurance policies and advise approximately 2.9 million client investment accounts. Investors believe Primerica's unique agency recruitment model enables the company to provide much-needed financial advice to low- and middle-income households, and the company explicitly states it is not a pyramid scheme. The Bear Cave sees things differently. The Bear Cave has reviewed extensive evidence suggesting that Primerica's highest-producing agents are engaged in misleading, false, or deceptive conduct, including one, a recorded Zoom presentation from a senior national sales director that alleges crooked conduct, fake numbers, and appears to suggest an ongoing internal investigation to a text message recruiting script for new agents that appears to deliberately obfuscate their association with Primerica, three agent presentations that emphasize recruiting over serving independent customers, and four, a presentation by a high-producing agent saying it's normal to be a millionaire. In addition, complaints obtained through public records requests allege forged signatures on six figures your investment contracts, institutionalized theft, and one senior said the company raped me financially. In sum, the Bear Cave believes Primerica stands against the winds of progress and is a losing proposition that victimizes all those involved. At the very top of the Primerica organization are a handful of senior national sales directors who each manage their own teams, such as Auto Empire Builders, the Millionaire Movement Team, and Arizona Hierarchy, perhaps no senior national National sales director, the highest distinction within Primerica is more charismatic than Mr. Mario Arizon, who was reportedly the youngest agent to ever become a million dollar earner within Primerica at the age of 29. Mr. Arizon has spoken at multiple Primerica conventions, is highlighted as a success story on PrimericaLatino.com, comma, serves as a member of Primerica's Hispanic American Leadership Council, and on his popular social Social media boasts he is a leader and coach to over 7,000 agents. If you click on an application form on the Arizona Hierarchy website, you are taken to a short five-question survey that ends on a ClickFunnels welcome page with an embedded, unlisted YouTube video of Mr. Arizon explaining the Primarica opportunity. And in the video, Mr. Arizon suggests that a family with a $1.300 slash month investment budget put $1.100 slash month into insurance products that would generate a 50% advance for the agent dollar six hundred slash year and recommends the other dollar two hundred slash month go into mutual funds that with meaningful fees that would generate residual income for the Primerica agent. Below a screenshot from Mr. Arizon's example, Mr. Arizon adds in part, our clients need help. They just don't know who to trust. They don't know who to go to. This is why we have an advantage. This is why we have an edge. 520 the pitch to join the Arizon hierarchy as a Primerica agent revolves around the opportunity to help families while making meaningful earnings, Mr. Arizon says in part. The average financial advisor that's an employee in New York makes $154,000, in California $143,000, in Florida $123,000 as an employee right now is the greatest opportunity to be part of this. I don't care if you have no experience in this. It doesn't matter. I promise you I'm the guy that would educate people about their finances for free. I see the difference we make in families lives and I can't believe the compensation that's involved 742 in his presentation, Mr. Arizon does not disclose that the average Primerica agent only earned $7,185 in 2023 from the company. Mr. Arizon's pitch, which was difficult to follow at times, also explains how lucrative selling products can be for all involved in the hierarchy, saying in part, 
as a broker for that one client. That client I showed you that pays dollar one hundred slash month for their insurance. You get paid one thousand three hundred and twenty dollars as a broker with this one hundred ten percent, not including bonuses and a lot of other stuff that we do. Nine fifty eight. Mister Arizon added. Let's say you have an agent and they go out there to help one family. They make $600 plus their residual income. Look at this. You are not even there and you made $720. When I saw that, I was like, wow, that is phenomenal. You mean I can train and develop others and I can have freedom? Like that sounds like one of those things. 1107. See ya. Primerica's Frequently Asked Questions homepage <laughs> confirms it is not one of those things reading in part. Um, Primerica is a trustworthy company. Primerica. <laughs> Primerica is not an MLM. Primerica is not a pyramid scheme. All right. There you go. There you go. There you go. I don't know. Is there more to it? But I don't know. It doesn't seem as bad as the other one, though. The other one seemed way more like they had like lawsuits, insiders. They're just going after the 29-year-old millionaire. Yeah, it does seem like MLM, though. But that's crazy. They paying them out. But insurance always has commissions like that, though. Isn't I mean, I, I don't think that's anything new, is it? But I know Primerica, the vibes. Primerica, you've, it's been around. Bostic speaking soon. Spy just broke out. I mean, you do have the IMF thing going on, too, right now. You have senior IMF talking about Korea and exchange rates. Meta has been going up again. Primerica, that was that thing we just heard right there. They're the ones that dropped. Do I ever talk to my AI self? Yeah, we, all the time, bro. Like mainly lunch. Like I sit down, you know, I tell my girlfriend to be quiet. And then I just, you know, while I'm eating, me and Josh AI go back and forth, shoot the shit, you know, discuss market ideas. You know, it's cool. See, that's just, I'm, I'm a, I talk to myself. I don't talk to an AI. That's like a different, like, I don't know. I have a different level of schizophrenia, I guess. Maybe that's like, that's, that's how you, that's how you know the young generation going to be weird as shit. Cause I'll talk to myself. I'm a weirdo. You know what I'm saying? Like even my girlfriend has caught me talking to myself like out loud, but it's like, that's fine. But like these kids nowadays, bro, they're going to be like talking to AIs. Like that's, that's a little bit, that's like one, that's another level. On the DSMIV, I think. My girlfriend asked if you have friends. I mean, I know a lot of people. I I got a I got a couple of close friends. I I call them brothers, but that's about it. But not really. I don't really do too much. I hang out with my girlfriend, my mom. I got my my friends from back in the day. I got the chat. I spend seven hours with my friends though. But I said brothers, it's family. We got some sisters, too. You heard only 33% of adults have an internal dialogue. Yeah, it is terrifying. We I told you guys this in, I think, 2020. Like, I even told, like, it's like how you even think that internal dialogue, like, people don't. It's weird. Some of you may not have it. Like, when you think of things, like, some of some of y'all, like, you either picture it. Or you like talk to yourself. Like some people can't talk to themselves in their heads. It's weird. It's a weird concept. A mm. dollar up? I couldn't tell you. I think it was the uh, other currencies kind of moving around. And just, again, a little bit more of the hawkishness. But I think we've also seen a delay between the bonds too. And then the earnings actually were kind of supportive today. But... They didn't really trade too favorably. Not everyone has that voice in their head. Yeah. Or like when they think, like when you think or like, like you look at something, you think in words, like you'll say the word to yourself. Some people they see in images or it's like they just like they process, but they don't have a voice. Like, you got to think about it. Like, even then, too. Like, I think about it with my mom. Like, what language does my mom think in? 
I'm pretty sure my mom's full internal dialogue is in Arabic. There's no, even though she's speaking, but then it's like, wait a minute. Or maybe she does see pictures, but then it's hieroglyphs. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> You picture the word, yeah. That happens, I feel. You asked your mom, she said hers is in Spanish, yeah. Oil dump. I mean, someone was just asking about the dollar. But if anything, I mean, oil has been a mix of both. I'm, I think it's one thing with rates kind of moving around too, but... Just with everything, even with the war, like that, those that fear calmed down. So just remember, it was last weekend on Friday. You were like, "Holy shit, something bad's gonna happen. It's gonna be big." And then something did happen. And then Monday, we thought there'd be more action, and then they got really hyped, and then it's just been fading. I mean, it's Thursday now, so think about it. The attack was last week, but it is, and then again, the the attack that started it was two weeks before that. But now we're here, so. We got to kind of, I think oil is just kind of losing a little bit of that, that fear gauge. Bostick. Is he live right now? I thought he was later. <laughs> Bostick F baby. The mother FN municipal. Where is it? Where's these, these remarks at Prosperity Partnership in Fort Lauderdale? Live stream, yes. Oh, wow. The Prosperity Partnership. Where's their events? Um, hmm. We'll see. I don't have any quotes from him yet. I'm trying to get the feed though. Uh, wait. They had. They're weird. On it might come out on on Spotify. <laughs> They said they have a live stream, but I'm looking at their past releases from Prosperity Partners. They release it as a podcast. Puts, puts. All right, well, we'll see whenever he does come on. There should be a live stream, but I do not have it yet, unfortunately. Spotify got Fed speakers. Yeah, man. Again, PRI, that's still down nine. Hasn't gotten any worse. Remember, GL, that one would just die every 10 minutes. Spotify's been doing good, though, man. That thing's back at 295. And then Spy all day has been great. NASDAQ back to point four. Russell is the leader on the day. We've been here for about an hour and a half, 25 minutes here till uh, Euro close. Again, that 50-50, we got above the level. level. You didn't get above the 50-55, 50-56. It's really 50-57, I think, is the level. But like I said, if we can't get above here, well, then you might you may test it again at the end of the day, but... That'll give us time to dance around. Otherwise, if you keep getting from here, then you could start talking about squeeze and whatnot. And people are already talking about 5,100 to the upside. So we'll see. Yeah, AXP. 
I was saying that in the morning because, again, Discover, I was saying AXP is the next one. But Discover did good. Again, their earnings wasn't that hot, but they went up. Again, AXP, this is at the high from the last earnings. They did good last time here. Oh, man, Nordstrom's, man, that thing's been working its way up. Then oil's down 0.5. Oil's at 81. So that's crazy. You guys want to know. Remember, weren't we trading it at 81? So maybe a little lower we could get back into it. But I think I sold out at like 82 or 83. So that's nuts. But yeah, oil has really given up a lot. Which could be good, though. Why did DFS go up if their earnings weren't as good? I'm sure there's one factor in there, but then again, I remember last time they had a bad earnings and then they still, they dropped 10% and then they came back up. But I'm sure some, everybody's been finding one little baby thing to focus on. So like even TSM, people were talking about global headwinds. So yeah, quick take, analysts generally positive following Discover, reported quarter one, stronger than expected net interest. So that's, Net interest guidance, I think, was the driver. And then a one-time $799 million charge for card misclassification. Without that charge, expenses were generally in line. 24 NII guidance and loan growth was raised by the company. Analysts upbeat on the print due to solid revenues and core expenses. Further, they noted net charge-offs ahead continued normalization. Um... Yeah, they did gap EPS of a dollar ten versus three fifty five a year ago. So the yeah, the EPS people were even surprised if it's even comparable. So they had a low EPS number. They had that one time charge. Net interest income they did they beat on that. Provisions went up by four hundred million. Operating expenses went up, but they said it was one time. And then that was it. Oh, not I mean health of the consumer the charge offs went up another 400 million and that's what killed them last time or provision for loan losses and then I think charge offs went up another 400 million too so those were even higher so a little bit more weakness but I mean I'd say it's 2% worse than last quarter and then spy high tickers waking up Caesars on the high CGC, where's the weed stocks? Weren't they going nuts yesterday? Your chat is working. Bonjour. Or is it Bon Signor? On Wix. I don't, I like, I like the website, but I'm like the company, but I'm surprised Wix is like a $200 company or whatever. 120. I just get shocked by that. I think we played it last earnings or we looked at it. They had some cheaper uh, earnings plays. Disney holding strong. It's only 250. Oh, really? So maybe that's just a little deceptive then. No, Wix is a $6.9 billion company. Yeah, no, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, that's, that's very expensive. I didn't think they would be worth that, but I don't, I don't know if I would buy. I've never used Wix. I know what it is, but I've never used it. I've seen the ads. Coinbase on the high. They were already good in the morning. Pinduo Duo, high ticker, still very active. Spy 0.53. Believe it or not, the NASDAQ is the worst on the day. Yeah, Disney 114. Again, that's probably going to be your closest sympathy to, to Netflix today. Even then, I would, even, I would argue Netflix is in a league of its own. GameStop on the high. Mm. 
Bank of England Green sees inflation back at 2% in the next few months. Coin, I think just because crypto bounce. I think that would be the only thing. The foreign subs, yeah. That's going to be the, the other factor that, again, some of you get you get giggity when I when we say uh, international penetration. You get a little giggity, but yeah. I mean, I be, dude, Netflix got me watching these foreign shits. I'm not going to lie. I told you the 3%. I watched that. I loved it. They fully got me watching, like, a, a, a straight TV show from Brazil, and they're like, let them, let them, let them. Hello. Where are you going? Oh, man, I hope you are safe. Don't do that. That's dangerous. And then, you know, like, it don't even match up with, like, the the mouthing. And, like, it has, they all, oh, hey. It has, like, generic, like, AI, like, you know, the voiceover voices. Oh, but I loved it. I loved telling They got a lot of good content on there. Mm-hmm. And then, I don't know, man. Like, listen. I don't know how many people this applied to, but y'all know that Netflix got like an extensive Bollywood collection. Like, I don't know if y'all, I don't know if you got that. I don't know if y'all into that. Some of you may be Indian. You may have Indian parents. Do you realize they got the craziest Bollywood collection? No, they got, bro, they got the crazy, they have all, they do Indian films for days, for days, Indian films, TV show. That's the biggest population, man. I'm just, so I don't know, they're there. Yeah, we need more Reacher, for real. Mm-hmm. I've heard of Money High, I saw the one where they, like, rearranged the, the order of, like, the episodes, but... Yeah, I haven't, like, watched it, the other one, like, the original. Your mom watches hella Asian shows. Oh, dude, last time I saw my uh, my girlfriend's mom, she was watching that, uh, that, like, it was, like, an Asian show on Netflix with, like, a king. <laughs> like he was like falling in love with the kid. It was like a full on like Bollywood Asian film, and I'm like, oh my god, she was in love with it. I started watching it with her. I was like, it's not bad. I could get behind it. What was it called? No, it was like King. I forgot what. It's, it's the one uh, captivating the king. Yeah, I watched that with my girlfriend's mom. She loved it. She loved it. Captivating the king. She loved it. Oh my gosh, it was hilarious. Josh AI, I'm just, just Josh, just Josh. They're very corny love stories. Yeah, I don't. I've never watched any of the. I've, I think I've watched maybe one Bollywood film on Netflix, but it didn't really stick with me. Would you consider picking up Pfizer in the next month if it's around this price? If everything else is still expensive, yeah. So, like, if I can't get a deal on PayPal, if I can't get a deal on Altria, I mean, maybe 3M, I'm still kind of, I want to let the dust settle from uh, the spinoff. Uh, maybe even Nike again or Starbucks. So, a couple names out there, but, you know, assuming the situation presents itself where you know Pfizer is the cheapest one I would like it is and then yeah I'm down
And then Spy going back up. Nordstrom's breaking out. We got a good gain on that. No one, no one asked me if I was holding that one. But yeah, we still are. Yeah, MP dub, 493. Remember, $5, good sign. $6, you start getting squeezy, but. Oh, they're going for 20 cents now, bro. I don't know. If you really want to, you might have to buy this stock now and then. Hopefully it goes past $5 and then you could buy the $5 put. I don't have any headlines on Bostick yet. If you see them, let me know. You could post them in the chat. But yeah, that again, that put already came down there. TFX. And Vanny. You can if you really want to get early, but yeah. I think now, maybe next week, but we are getting close to that event. They declare dividend to today's ex dividend. So MPW at tomorrow's the like cutoff. You have to buy today if you want the divvy. 3M, I would just like to buy it, but I, I'm like kind of concerned about the dividend updates, the spin off, all that good stuff. I'm looking at I don't think we're gonna make a play on TSM. I mean we can for the upside. If you want to kind of go for the bounce, but I don't think any of the plays are worth it there. I'm just going to hold my other chip plays. Spy going higher. Fifty fifty four. So, Chad, this is like, do we get like an exciting all day or not? But you are approaching Euro close in 13 minutes. This is that breakout level. One of them I was telling you about. So, again, I don't think it makes you, like, go absolutely insane, but it's a very, very good start in terms of momentum. Again, this is where you unwound half of your losses yesterday. Remember, we were dying, and then we were like, damn, we just recovered half of the losses. You're getting back to the lows of Monday and Tuesday there. So, we will see. I think MPW is paying out 12.4 or something. And then it starts trading without Divi today. Today, you could buy it with... If you buy today, you still get the dividend. If you buy tomorrow, you won't get the dividend for another three months on MPW. On oh, my first meeting for an owner wants to sell two properties... No way. Bro, you just got licensed too. Let's go, man. I'm a cash buyer too. If he if he wants to get it rid of it quick at a good price. Otherwise, list that for him. Good work, baby. No way. That's fast. So you wouldn't get it. You would get it if you bought today. So MPWX dividend is the 19th tomorrow. So if you buy today, the day before X dividend you will still receive the dividend. But if you buy tomorrow, then that's it. It's 1.5 is 125 worth your business. It depends on the quality. But like, let's see, 1.5 times 0.7. Ideally, I would like it for a million, a million and 50,000. MPW. I thought MPW is 15 cents. So 60 cents a year, yeah. You have three lots in Big Bear that my grandpa purchased 30 years ago. Should you be looking to build or sell? Low key, I mean, I would build just because I've I've seen land. Land prices are insane low key. If if it's a good area, middle of of nowhere, no one's paying for it, but like, you know, a high tourist area like Big Bear, people pay for it. It's harder to build up there a little bit, but I mean, if it's feasible, affordable, it could be good. All you have to do though is just check local uh cuz the way you make all your money is Airbnb up there. But like, you got to uh just make sure you could get an Airbnb license. That's what it comes down for. How do you get houses for 30% under listing price? Uh, usually you ask. That's the first place I start. 
You never know. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, this is how, like, bro, I've been asking girls out of my league out for my whole entire life. You know, so, like, try it. Just ask. You know, that's step number one. But usually the circumstance. So, like, if somebody, if the house needs a lot of work, that's the primary one. If somebody needs flexibility with closing, how they want to go about it, they want to get out of the deal quick, or they need us to do something, or we're helping them with the purchase. Again, usually timing. Uh, and then saving on fees. And if my offer, you know, after certain, ins if you have to like fix up a house, wait, pay a bunch of fees and do this and that. It's like by the end of the day, you know, some people you might spend 10, 15% getting your house ready to sell. So that's already 80%. So sometimes we just, hello. It's three miles from the city. So I would plan. I would look into see how long it would take to get permits to build and see if you could qualify for a permit for a short-term rental. And if both of those are quick, feasible, and then you could get quoted uh, for builders. Like, dude, you could even throw, like, those box homes on there. Low-key, that's what I would do. I would just get that shit readied up with utilities and then I would order one of those prefabbed houses that are modern, like a little yurt, like a glass box, and just stick it on there and Airbnb that shit. I'd do five of them. I would do two on each property plot. You'd actually you'd end up with six of them. Bostick never came on. Again, it says there's a live stream, but I couldn't find it. Airbnb boxable pretty much. No, not like a, a, you don't even don't, you don't even like you don't even have to buy it prefab, but like find a builder who can make it look like that though. I'm telling you, there's like really you could build like a good one bedroom unit that is just like a box with a rooftop deck and it just has a a kitchen. Yeah, like a container home pretty much. Uh-huh. And it has like a kitchen, all floor to ceiling glass windows a bedroom, a dope bath, and it's all modern in the bathroom, and you could build that for like 150, 200 grand. Maybe less, way less probably. But it's like if you make, and it'll be very, very nice, and it'll probably be lasting you, it'll be up to date for the next 10 years. And then those will rent like hotcakes. Airbnb. February and March. I'm looking into the Vanny thing. I need to find, I want the, I don't know if it's the 8th, the 10th, or the 11th. I still need to find that out. Feel squeezy. I mean, we're right at a breakout level. The only problem is... You're right at the level, and like you might shoot above it, so don't don't get too jumpy. But the, you have euro close right now, and then this is the level that could lead you into this squeeze. Trying to find it. Why is Apple not? Apple's been in its own little world. 
again, it kind of led downwards, if anything. Damn, Apple is even still just hugging that low. Okay, so it's May 17th, I think, at Tides. Yeah, Adam Mendelssohn will present on. So May 17th, that's where we got to hone in on. You got a month. So I'd, I'd wait a little bit on Vanny. We could give it another two weeks probably. Or even one week. Oh shit! How do you just how do you close a window when you close a window, like a like a browser? How do you open it back up? ACB. It's not all F four. Right click. All right. Well, I think I lost it. Control Shift Tab. Nope, he's gone. He's gone. Nope, it's too late. It won't work. But yeah, May 17th. May 17th, my brother. About TSM, uh, they did good, but there was like one baby factor about talking about like global demand. Otherwise, they guided good, and it was a good earnings, but the stock did not do well. I do think it'll eventually start trading higher, but I don't know if there's other broader pressure that's factoring into it, but it was a good earnings. Uh, they just got clapped off of it, unfortunately. And then we got three minutes till Euro close here. So this is going to be... Our first little event of the day. Wall should be good. I mean, banks. I'm not. I don't. I'm not too worried about banks right now. Obviously, like every time the bonds start to tick up, but I don't think the bank earnings will be bad. I think bonds going higher will end up hurting the banks, but I don't think these banks are going to have bad earnings. And if they do, it's going to be because net interest income they guide lower. But if you guide higher, you will get supported. U.S. imposes new curbs on Iran's access to low-level technology in response to attack on Israel in cooperation with Russia against Ukraine. Yeah, TSM was in the AM. Oscar Health, we saw that one the other day. OSC, damn, that one's up nine again. That was actually running too. Bond, is there a bond auction? I think it might be tips. I didn't think we had anything today. You have 15 year mortgage. You have five year tips auction. I don't think that'll move us too much. You got bought. It says Bostics at 545. It said Bostic at 11 a.m. too, but we still haven't had any of his quotes. I can't even find the live stream. TLT on the low. So bonds coming down. Spy gave up some. So I don't know, man. You went right to the damn level I told you. And then Euro close about to ding ding here in 30 seconds. But that is going to be a little bit of resistance. So. Let's find out in the next couple minutes if we could get past that. Otherwise, you may you may come down a little bit, and then by the end of the day, we may be testing up there. He's closing his munis. Sorry. Yeah, TSM, man. Banks are still holding up good, though. Again, Bank of America, that was able to recover XLF. But then again, everything is green. Let's get a breakdown. Wicked, wicked, wicked. So S&P 500, 380 names in the green. 
121 in the red. Dow Jones, 23 in the red, six names in the in, or no, 23 in the green, six names in the red. And then NASDAQ 100. Right for it. 37 in the red, 64 in the green. So a majority of names are are green today. Again, we started green, sold off in 10 minutes pretty hard. And then right when you bounced, you did not look back. Oscar. PayPal still dropping. Pfizer too. What happened here at Pfizer? Why does that kind of look like news? The MPW play, if it gets cheap, but right, I don't even think it's fell below there. Yeah, so right now it's at 30 cents. If I wanted to front run it and try, like if you bought it now and the stock went up, the play would end up working, but I don't know if I'm willing to risk that. Abbott's on the low too. Oil's just been dying. I don't know, we might... Oil might be good, though. We might be able to play it. Actually, oil popped up here. It was red. Yeah, now it's green, but no no headlines here. JD, cautious note from Morgan Stanley. Uh, it's slightly down. That may pick up a little more. On LRCX, LAM Research, they're, I mean, they're part of this AI stuff. And all the chip stuff. Amazon earnings will be big. Again, Amazon, did it ever end up breaking all-time highs? I'm not sure if it did. Hmm. ETF sold 2 million shares. And then, what else did I hear? Two million. It was Uber. Uber selling 2 million shares of a of some uh, IPO that's going to come out. Four-week bonds. Yeah, the tariffs on Iran were earlier. We did tech tariffs and then another set. There's like 15 people. Overall volume's decent. Last time I checked, an hour ago. So right now, twenty-two million. We're about average. Euro, you about ten million an hour on the SPY. That's pretty average. Oh, ME. I forgot to look. Yeah, it was a CEO. They said they they want to explore going private. Remember, we were you, we were just talking about this. We are just talking about this being a bio candidate. Yeah, PayPal not looking good today. We're square, actually. Their break even. Again, SPY came down here since Euro closed. We were running before there. Let's see. That's either going to be a little baby pullback or <clears throat> we won't come back up here for a little bit. We got a 35 yesterday. Oh, good shit. Yalla. BE, is that Bloom Energy? <clears throat> oh, shit. Sorry, it's not. It looks weird. I don't know why it's... Yeah, there you go. Just... <clears throat> Is it a Bitcoin play? Bit Digital? CLSK is on fire. Mara hates everybody. Coin, all crypto plays are doing good though today.
VIX is muted. It, I think VIX is in the process of coming down. So today, this is this is where you really feel the relief. It's crazy that these candles were going down yesterday because, again, today's the first green day in the last five. So one out of if today closes green here, this will be one out of five days green. But this is the VIX calming down. Back to that little wick from February, but still elevated. But definitely off of those nineteen twenty dollar levels that we were just knocking at. I don't know Bostic. The event may have started at eleven, but like maybe he hasn't talked yet. You know what I'm saying? So that could be why we haven't heard anything yet. Microsoft OpenAI partnership could face EU antitrust investigation. What? That's weird because, again, they apparently got cleared from it today. Reuters. So it's early and it could be fake. <laughs> so Reuters, this is early, though. It's saying Microsoft OpenAI could face EU antitrust investigation. Why that's weird because this morning... I think the EU let them off. They said that they didn't find any any problems or issues with that. Yeah, yesterday they said they didn't see an issue, and now you're getting that. Say, we'll say. We'll see, but Chad... It's 8.30, man. Honestly, it's a little bit beyond that. We almost we almost let it slip away. But, Chad, I love you. And I hope you know you're blessed. And I hope you know it's a great day. And it's Friday, Junior. And I can't believe the week's already done. But, man, you've been here for two and a half hours. And you got four and a half hours left to go. Sitting is the new smoking. I need you to get beside your desk and do 10 push-ups. Can you do that? Can you get beside your desk and do 10 push-ups? Can't do 10, you do 5. Can't do 5, you do 4. Can't do 4, you do 2. Can't do 2, you do 1. Can't do 1, get her knees, do a push-up, plank, the worm, anything. Just get the body moving. You know what I'm saying? Just move around. How about this? Just do this for me. I need you to clear your mind and don't think about anything and just drop your shoulders and just focus on letting your shoulders relax, bro. And on like, just sit up straight. You know what I'm saying? And just sit up straight and then let the shoulders fall and just clear the mind. <sighs> While breathing, nothing is on your mind except for how low you could drop your shoulders. Just let the shoulders fall. That's it. That's it, good. That's it, man. Legs in front of you now. Chest to the sun. Flex the core. Tuck the hips in. There you go. Good posture, baby. <laughs> you look good. I'm not going to lie. You look taller. You look relaxed. I mean, I'm relaxed. So I'm proud of you, man. Then relax the jaw. Go, nah, 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 nah. Breathe in really deep. Go. Breathe out with your tongue out. Do the jack in breath. Go. Oh, there it is. There it is. I'm getting my resistance. Bro, I've been getting good back workouts. I'm telling I've been finding new back stretches too. I'm very excited by it, man. So I hope you take this moment to move around a little bit. You might hear me in the back. I might make weird breathing noises. I can still answer questions, but gotta get these out the way. Brevin Howard cuts more than a hundred employees to reduce costs. Good, baby. Las Vegas Sands maintained overweight at Barclays. Do all of that in public to assert dominance. I kind of like it. <sighs> Data, you, we, we're supposed to have Bostic. We haven't got him yet. So he might come on. And then Bostic is also scheduled this evening at 5.45 p.m. if you're into that. Uh, other than that, we have a five-year tips auction, and I think we're done for data. 
I think we get Japanese data tonight uh, in terms of their inflation numbers. And then we go from there. All right, I'm still telling you. These resist Tatsis, good friends of mine, man. And SPY going lower, so bonds have already led the way lower, and we have been dumping, not dumping, but dropping since Euro close. All right, let me see. Are they going to go to a commercial? They're talking 23andMe. All right. More than a few years ago, is right, thinking I'm about actually going this. private, 23andMe. I'm speaking with, with Jiki, of course, the woman behind this business, that more than well, almost 50% reports that, look, she's not liking it being undervalued in the public markets. We see a pop on the idea that it might be taken private. This is Bloomberg Technology. I click the ad. Okay. All right, hold on. I'm still. That was a good stretch too, man. You know, bro. I need to make you Look guys time. a stretch, a stretching mixtape. Y'all gotta Every see some of these stretches, the man. And we uh, are conservative enough in what we do that we can stay in it in good times and bad times. So our market share is increasing, even as the volume of opportunities out there are, are getting fewer. Meantime, we've been asking a, a bunch of banks this week who, that with on earnings about expense control uh, on some of the, the big uh, the big banks. It's been an encouraging trend. But are you in the cost control mindset or is it more about leveraging opportunities that might be out there instead? Oh, we always pay attention to cost. Our efficiency ratio uh, and the quarter just ended was 32% uh, and change, under 33%. That means it cost us 33 cents of overhead to produce a dollar of revenue. The average for banks in the U.S. is somewhere in the 50 cent range. So we are, we are much more efficient than the industry and always have been. But that that is really driven by the uh, strong revenue and strong profitability metrics, the strong margins we enjoy in our business more than it is uh, controlling cost. In fact, we're out hiring new people. We added uh, 40 plus uh, headcount last quarter. We'll probably add another 40 plus headcount this quarter because as a lot of banks are cutting back and closing operations, there's some really good talent available out there in the market and uh, it's a great time to add to the team if you're looking for really high quality uh, veteran talent. Finally, George, I, I'm curious about geographics, where you see the big opportunity right now. I think of you as a southern bank, but I did see that you are supplying a loan for a building in lower Manhattan on Houston Street. So where are the opportunities for you now? Well, New York has long been our largest single uh, market for our real estate group because it's the largest real estate market in the country. Only this last quarter uh, did the Metro Miami area supplant uh, New York as the largest market. But we're in every major market in the United States, uh, a lot of secondary markets and a handful of tertiary markets with our business. So we have a truly nationwide business. Our deposit franchise is Arkansas, Georgia, Florida, Texas, and North Carolina. So we're southeastern with our deposit franchise, but our our real estate business has been nationwide for for many many years, and our indirect lending business is a nationwide business as well. Well, strategy certainly paying off. Uh, seeing it in the numbers. Thank you, George, for coming on to talk about it. Thanks so much. Have a great day. You too, George Gleason. Still to come this morning, how all the new plans for AI data centers might impact the power grid in the United States. When we're back in just a moment. Back in just a moment. I, I got two more sets, bro. I'm, I'm doing like intense, intense stretches here. Spy or Bond's new low. 
Is Bostick live now? I don't have Bostick. Where is Bostick? Bosticky. I be a Bostick haters. Oh. Events. Well, he starts, but I don't have his, uh, I don't have any of his comments yet. All right, give me one more minute. But are there any statistics you give clients? Like, this is the return on investment you get when bringing in Maven Clinic. Oh, yeah. I mean, fertility and maternity as a bundle are often one of the top healthcare costs that employers face. Mm -hmm. And so with us, we're a triple bottom line business. Number one, we can reduce costs in one of the most costly areas of healthcare. Number two, we can help attract and retain some of the most important talent. I mean, 45% of, um, of workers say that they really look for the fertility benefits and family building benefits at companies today to see how they're going to be cared for. And number three, from an equity lens and a health equity lens, um, you know, employers can really lean in here and solve some of, I think, our, our healthcare system's biggest challenges when it comes to supporting, um, you know, women and families on these journeys. Challenges being, where do I get this sort of advice? How do I get it for both men and women? And indeed, how do I get the right, truthful right. advice? The business that you're building, I mean, Boyce is 2014. We have been through some different economic environments. How is it going? How are you seeing the adoption in the US and indeed from international businesses? Yeah, well, we grew our revenues to 95% last year. And so okay. even though it was a year where I think there was a lot of uncertainty about the macro economy, um, this is still an area where employers and health plans um, were really leaning in because, again, there's just so much catch up to do. 12% um, of our member base is international. And so that's another big area that we're seeing continued growth in. Uh, you know, the, the uh, multinational is looking to bring again that equitable lens to family building and across the world it's you know it's really different whether you're in a public system what the regulations are and so how do you how do you bring that same access to everybody and so you know we work we were um, we, we were we were talking with our, our client Amazon about our global uh, family building benefit with them and our partnership over the summer um, and so we, we work with a lot of companies like that having birthed in the UK and the US I can attest they're slightly different Talking about your business, therefore, look, we just had Ivoda on. They've just gone public. How much are the companies that have invested in you, the VCs, saying, hey, you are doing so well with a 95% increase in revenue last year? Are, are you able to say, look, we're almost profitable. We should be going public. Or you're like, no, no, wait, wait this out. Well, uh, not this year. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think that it's certainly where we, we would like to end up. Um, you know, for us, we're really lucky to have a board that really sees the long term. And so um, we're certainly headed in that direction. But I think... Uh, uh, we there's just there's a lot of products we're still launching at the moment and you know the markets are different these days than they were three years ago and so um, we would you know we're holding ourselves to a very high standard um, so for when we get to the public markets we'll continue to grow uh, versus I think what's happened in the past with some companies where after the six-month lockup ends you know the, the share price kind of falls and what about competition Competition. I mean, honestly, our biggest competition is still the status quo. Um, you know, there, there. It's hard to change a cat, build a category, and change mindset. And um, you know, that's what we've been working on for ten years. And I feel like we're five percent of the way into the product roadmap. But, but yeah, I would say status quo is is the biggest, uh, the biggest challenge. And and it's something that, uh, you know, as we continue to see more brand awareness and more celebrities and more um, member stories around why fertility benefits matter, why menopause, pregnancy, pediatrics, um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's really helpful. It takes a while to just shift a mindset. We thank you for coming on, talking all about it as no, new products get rolled out. Maven Clinic founder and CEO, Kate Ryder, we thank her. Ed, what have you got? Okay, coming up on the program, TikTok heading to its moment of truth in Washington. We'll have all the details on a divestal ban bill that's coming up next. This is Bloomberg. This is Blambach. This is Chadback. We back, baby. So I hope you guys got push-ups there, man. Y'all should have seen it. I just, that's it. You could do a whole little workout set right there. That's it. And then back to the back to the plan. Amara new highs again. CLSK is up 13. Crypto coin up six. So they're all going pretty nuts. High ticker. 
chilled out from earlier and the low ticker. You got MU on the low. They had that $6 billion news this morning. Uh, but we have sold off a little bit from Euro close. Everything is still green. So we'll see. The perfect push up. No, I have not. It was working to show you. All right, make better. Hopefully, if you got camera work, I don't know if you're moving them arms. That kind of counts as a workout. Share them back stretches. So, like, I here's like one. Are you ready? So, like, do you know like arm circles? Like, do like oh, this is just for your shoulders and like rotator cuff. But like, do arm circles. But then, curl your fingers and put your palms out with your thumbs up. And stick your arms out. So and then like with your thumbs up. It's really weird. You do this weird thing with your hands. And then take your toes. And then make your toes pigeon toed. So put your feet facing each other. And then do 20 forward. And then same weird. Curl your fingers. Palms out. Then put your thumb back. And then do a reverse. With the pigeon toe. That's it. That right there. You'll feel it. It's a crazy one. It's a crazy one. Ow. I did stretch though. My back kind of kind of feels sore. Mm -mm. I'm so out of shape. Well, that's why they call it out of shape. Because it's very easy to get in it. Because like if you haven't done any, I know the feeling. Even when I took, I I didn't work out for like the first month this year. And like, I was just on vacation. I was eating. It was kind of rough getting back. Even after a month, I was like, damn, son. You know, so it's just like, if you're not used to it, it definitely, you do it a couple times. Yes, you know, you'll get used to it. And then we are moving down a little bit. Very lower. S&P, Iran's missile and drone attack does not yet change our global baseline assumption for world's major economies. That's good. And you're what? 14 points off the high? <clears throat> it's crazy. It went right to that 50-66 and then sold off. My shoulders sound like walking bubble wrap. That's good, though. It's it's weird because I didn't know, like, literally just, like, feet position and even how you, like, position your hands and, like, palms. It really changes the, like, the muscles that move in your shoulder. It's, it's a trip. So I, I've been doing That's why it took me so long. I've been doing, like, three sets of that. And then you do the cat and then the, the cat dog. You do a couple of those. And then you do one. You, like, get on four. You drop your head. You put your feet outwards, you let them like lay like flatwards, and then you like pinch your shoulders and then just let it hang. I got that's why I said I got to make you guys a mixtape. You got to like because some of these you have to see it. It doesn't, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't like you have to see it. But these are some some good ones. These are some good ones. Scapular pull ups. I have, but I don't know if I do them the right way. That's kind of what that one is. That's why I'm excited because that stretch is like it's kind of just activating that so you could get to that. I've seen like even scap scapular push-ups. Are you getting ankle surgery in three weeks? Oh, no way. Why? JPM Pinto says very low probability of interest rate hikes. Says relatively high probability of no cuts this year. It's interesting. So again, though, remember I was telling you people are talking like there's whispers of it. Literally, he's like, all right, there's not going to be a, there's a low probability of hikes and then high probability of no cuts. Oh, cow camel. Yeah, that's, that's the one. Cat dog. Same thing, right? Low probabilities, not zero. And then honestly, the probabilities 
the probabilities change very, very quickly. You guys have seen you honestly, do you guys know there's like I have one trade I regret this year. Believe and yes, I've had trades lose. I'm even getting clapped on a couple, but there's one trade I really do regret because I wish I held it. One only one trade. There's only one trade. It's it's in it's related to what we just talked about. Nope. No, not bonds, not gold. No, no, no. Not TLT, not Mara, not Meta, not Arm, not Snap, not Oik. Oh, dude, we were, thank you, Ann Sally. Yeah, bro. Them Fed Futures, y'all forgot about that one? The Zaza. Oh, y'all don't remember that. I was, I got all excited ahead of the Fed, and I threw on like five of them, four of them, and then after the Fed, I was down ten thousand dollars, and I was down ten thousand dollars for like two and a half months, because I bet against the December rate cut futures, and then it went to seven. Uh huh. And I was, I think I was down twelve k at one point, and then it pulled back. And then all of a sudden, we're not pricing in rate cuts. I closed it out. I think I made 4.8. I made 4.8 off of it or something like that. But then I wish I held it. That's the one I... Because that play would have been up like 20 grand or something. Because it went even lower. Imagine that. The ZQZ. But that was the play where I was like, damn. Because those Fed futures, bro, it's dramatic but that's like word to the probabilities because at the time i made the play the probabilities change in the snap of a finger and then what was one percent probability ended up becoming the 99 percent probability and vice versa it's pretty funny yeah you could trade the fed futures the zaza we've done it a lot so i don't know how new you are but we've put it on the watch list too uh but like every now and then I'm all up on the Fed futures. If they go crazy, like I'm kind of tempted to start buying rate cuts, believe it or not. So like you see how now the market, you know, the dot plots one way. It sucks that Powell admitted uh, that things are are actually affecting his view a little bit. But essentially, if like. I think this will be probably one of the better trades if it happens, it may not happen. But, like, if the July futures, if these can go to, like, 90%, 95% or more probability of no cut in July, I would just go long on it just to go long on it. Like, I wouldn't even, I even if I didn't believe in a rate cut, I would still buy the shit out of that, that, that future just because that's every single time it gets to the extremes. You could still lose money, but, like I'm saying, once you're near the floor... I mean, there you go. But that's the one that would be ideal. I don't know what happened to Micron. It just started dumping. White House says they'll keep options open for more Iran sanctions. Please negotiate, you know, in, in fairness. They know who's been taken. Okay. They know who's been taken. Right. And, um, and we want them all back. Um, sadly, if that means that not all of them come back alive, then they still need to be with their families. Uh, we just don't know the condition of each and every one of them. Um, you can't count on Hamas to be perfectly honest about uh, about all their conditions, but we want them all back, regardless. UN Security Council vote tomorrow on recognizing statehood for uh, the Palestinian territory. What's the U.S. thinking on that? Are you prepared to use your veto? We completely believe in the two-state solution and a state for the Palestinian people. We believe the best and the most sustainable way to do that is through direct negotiations between the parties. Sorry, guys, we're going to have to sit. Thanks, everybody. We're, we're, the, I know. Like animals. A couple of questions. Okay. Can we just okay. see the cannibal tab in your book? Wait, <laughs> <laughs> the cannibal tab? Are they violating a safety tab? What protocol? What are you talking about? Cannibal? Um, They're making fun of Joe Biden's speech yesterday. I mean, can you fit us in? Yeah. yeah. Okay, look, I'll just, and I think we shared this with some of you, so I'm just going to kind of repeat. Look, the, you saw the president. He was incredibly proud of his uncle's service in uniform. You saw him at the war memorial. It was incredibly emotional and important to him. You saw him respond to all of you when asked about the moment 
uh, yesterday uh, and his uncle who lost his life when the military aircraft he was on crashed in the Pacific after taking off near New Guinea. Uh, the president highlighted his uncle's story as he made the case for honoring our sacred commitment to to equip those we send to war and to take care of them and their families when they come home. And as he reiterated that the last thing American veterans are are suckers or losers, and he wanted to make that clear. He wanted to make the story. I mean, look, I, I, I don't have anything beyond about what I just laid out, but it was a really proud moment for him. It was incredibly emotional. I think some of your colleagues, as, as you know, Zeke, were there, and they got to witness the president um, uh, pray at the at the war, war memorial, uh, look for his uncle's name, honor him, uh, and I think we can't uh, we can't forget that moment, and we cannot also forget what it means to be a commander in chief, what it means to lift up our service members, what it means to make sure that uh, we respect their service, and he made that contract very clear as to what we saw from the former uh, former president. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Thank you. All right. Well. There you go. Exposure therapy to a minimum. That's good. That's good. We got earnings today, baby. Netflix. Meta Llama 3 is trained on both text and images through current versions. Will only output text for now. Meta AI Virtual Assistant will be updated to include new models and given standalone website. GG. But you get, they were, so we weren't the only ones yesterday. So if you thought my reaction to Biden yesterday was out of pocket, it wasn't. Because that's what that question was about. They're like, dude, what did he say yesterday? What the hell was that cannibal rant and everything? Elf is popping right now, 2.4. What causes the market to bounce? I mean, in general or today, but today, I I don't think there was moves. And honestly, sometimes too, in general, you sell off enough or these morning moves kind of sell off for a couple minutes, hit a low, burn through all the lows and then bounce up. We've seen it before, but today was a mix of earnings. And even though the earnings were good, some of the names didn't trade that good. But generally, I think that's there and we've had relief all all around even yesterday there was bond relief today no bad earnings and now getting ready for the other bigger earnings it's kind of the setup but generally still weak and momentum is has been waning he said something about it. you have to watch it he just it was like the last like three minutes of biden's speech yesterday was just it was just a trip Fed Bostic, inflation is too high. We still have a ways to go on inflation. Pathway to 2% will be slower than people expect and bumpy. Bumpy. It'll be bumpy. That is Bostic. L'Oreal CEO, company is optimistic about outlook for beauty market. Bumpy Bostic. Bumpy. It'd be a bumpy recovery, a bumpy. But why would it bounce like there was great news? I mean, I don't know. It just depends on how, like, how much of a bounce you view this as. So, like, in the last five days, I, I personally think... This is good, but I, I don't think it's that much just because I feel like our ranges have been widened out. Like yesterday, we kind of made a similar move just to not really go anywhere. So like it has to be meaningful, but I just that's why I'm chalking this up to the momentum in range. CDNS, didn't we watch that go up the other day? They just died. CDNS, oh, they were related, uh, didn't NVIDIA mention them.
L'Oreal Q1 sales, $11.2 billion. Uh, 9.4 estimate, 6.1. Check like Estee Lauder. Yeah, they're going to start moving up. L'Oreal numbers are coming out. That's why Elf is popping, duh. That makes sense. So yeah, that's why all of uh, L'Oreal numbers killed it. So that's overseas. But all of our, all of the other companies are trading here. Bostic, I don't have a recession in my outlook. If we could keep jobs, wages, and inflation moving to target, we could stay where we are on rates. Fed Bostic, we don't, uh, we don't be able to reduce rate. What? We don't be able to reduce rates until towards end of the year. I think it says we won't be able to. That could have been a spelling error. BSY taking over. Rumor. Uh, yeah. Is it trading or halted? I think that's halted. Bentley Systems, BSY. Fed Bostic, I think the economy will continue to grow as we get both mandates back in line. <clears throat> no, BSY is still trading. Had that pop kind of a liquid, but uh, moving. So, so Chad's saying takeover. I have not been able to confirm that. Bentley system. Yeah, Bentley Systems exploring options following takeover interest. Reuters citing sources. Headlines indicating Schneider Electric and Cadence Design are said to have expressed interest. So that's honestly that connects. So literally CDNS was just dropping. BSY is getting linked to that. What was the other one? Is it, no, not on. There's one more. This one was just mentioned in that. SMCI I read. I know the BSY is interesting. It just moved up a lot. I don't think you'll be able to play the options. There's not really data on that. <clears throat> when do they have earnings? I think they gave a trading update too. No way. Yeah, they have earnings May 7th. Fed Bostic says he's comfortable being patient, not in a mad dash to hurry to get there. Your dog has cancer? Oh, no. Yeah, you got prayers for you, man. Sorry to hear. JRVR is killing it. Yeah, up seven. It was up four or last time I saw it. Bostic won't be able to reduce rates towards end of the year. Yeah, I had that earlier. BSY going round two. So it's up seven now, almost just under. VIX popped out. I mean, the market's been dropping. ACI, that's another buyout related play. Albertsons, they're moving up there too. Honestly, we just got a bunch of headlines. There's like three different things there BSY, Cadence related, that, and then there's one more. And then we got Bostic. I don't have any headlines on Albertsons. They have preview. So Albertsons has earnings on the 22nd. Fed Bostic says can keep rates steady as long as labor markets hold up. Uh, BSY getting more activity. Again, the options suck on BSY. You got to go shares with that. And honestly, like the range. Damn, there's some fat options on BSY though. Yeah, Bostic, I don't think we're reacting to Bostic. Usually the market just like generally goes up on him. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. 
Bostic is speaking at literally the Prosperity Partnership in Fort Lauderdale. But it's not really like it's they were supposed to have a live event. It says there is, but you can't really access it. But ACI again, BSY is still going. What was the other one? Oh, Elf. That was the other thing. L'Oreal. So that's why you have BSY offer, L'Oreal. And then you have Bostick. Rent. That's going up. Where's 23andMe? Chilling NVIDIA. NVIDIA did good today. ARM did awful again. Intel too. Bostic speech. I found it on the Fed website, but I on the Atlanta. I don't know where he's like. There's no live feed. It said there was, but I can't find it anywhere. It's today. What's the date today? The 18th. Oh, wow. So tonight, I'm pretty sure. So like tonight, East Coast time, you guys should be able to get the new Uncle song. It's good. And then BSY still going. Spy coming down a little bit more. German Scholes on suspected espionage for Russia and Germany. We have protection system against it. SMB Martin Swiss inflation likely zero to two percent range for three years. Matt Gas Mini Dump. Oh, wait. Oh. Yeah, he's going to University of Miami, too. So, Bostick's going to be University of Miami tonight. But, yeah, man, I can't find this live video. Sorry, buddy. Unless they put it on Facebook. I feel like. No. Bonds reversed. They reversed kind of early, but also kind of moving in line. Today, stocks do good. Bonds do bad. And then Friday, maybe Friday, they just share the, they share the spotlight. Yeah, MU, I think, dropped. I don't have a headline on that. And then don't forget about ACI. That was the other one I just looked up. President Biden to announce Micron deal. Wait, where is he? So, no, if anything, Micron, I think Biden is about to shout them out. Micron is not in the long term. No, I hate Micron. Micron, you got Micron actually used to be very popular though too. So like at one point, Micron was like the most popular stock. In like 2015, they used to call it the hedge fund hotel because everybody would buy into it and stay into it and then everyone would sell out too. You'd go in there, live in there for a while. It was very popular, Micron. Uh, but no, I never added them to the long term. MU got like a $6 billion grant. Yeah. It would be one of the largest single direct federal investments in New York history.
White House Brainerd asked about U.S. Steel says national security, economic security, and supply chain consideration. And then MasterCard, Xbox MasterCard is available in all 50 states. And then Bentley Systems explores options including sale, Reuters, senators to unveil AI innovation bill. Bro, what's a, a MasterCard? What's an Xbox card? So now you could have like, you get points like video games for using your credit card. Brainerd says U.S. National Security Review will proceed as normal on U.S. Steel. Planters in talks with multiple ad agencies on using their AI platform, according to senior executives. Planter. I feel like that could get some hype. A little bit of a green and red right there. Bentley Systems, I have no idea. Every time you use it, you get an Xbox. <laughs> Achieve new achievement unlocked. You spent two hundred dollars. Planter. I'm surprised I didn't move. We'll see if it does. We will see if it does. And chat, it's only 9.30 or 9.17. So still very early. Again, volume was a little bit more active. I mean, the story of the day has been relief. We started with relief. Thought it was going to go out the window the first 10 minutes. And then you thought you were going to squeeze. And now, I mean, you're you were happy to be here but still worried yesterday. And that's where we are today. We did do push-ups a little bit ago. I was getting into it, man. I was doing... I did a bunch of sets. Mortgage rates keep running. Well, yeah, the bonds. And again, if anything, mortgage rates might be even delayed a little bit behind the bond market. But bond market has gone through a lot here in the month of April. bottom of the range yeah this is like the very low you were at till you broke the lows yesterday so this was your low of monday and tuesday what well, we priced in for netflix uh i haven't done that yet i mean if you watch the watch list or watch the tutorial though uh, you should have that info i think it's around eight to ten percent that's usually that's the usual did 50 like a Kendrick. Chop it, give me 50. A. You reported the Insta page pretending to be me. That's good, man. Thank you. Yeah, that wasn't me. Was he messaging you? He's like, how's your trading going? Do you have crypto? What's up, man? Venezuela rejects U.S. manipulation on its oil industry, says Minister. MNDR. We watched this thing this week, too. As the market died, this thing went up every single day. Mobile e-health. I think it's a Chinese health play. The Divi play on MPW. It's at 25 cents. Like I said, if you bought it early, you could really set your... Because then you'll get more of a gain. And then the $5 one's there. But it's going to be tough. Uh, reload it. Hawkeye. Okay. Bentley Systems went down. 
I mean, Tesla came down. I, I'm kind of nervous on Tesla. It's holding that 150. Explain what's wrong with TSM. They said some stuff about uh, global demand, but otherwise nothing wrong. I'm, I'm surprised it's trading lower. I think analysts were generally optimistic. I don't know if it's more of uh, the other pressure we've been on here, but yeah, it's not, not been good. You have to buy Tesla with you at sixty nine sixty nine. I'm gonna pass. But then again, that would at least be a price we could have that conversation. The Tesla, I don't know when they're going to do that vote. With Walgreens, it used to be the safe haven poster child. Ever since the pandemic... They had the boom and bust uh, with all the vaccine stuff. Again, even Pfizer kind of went through it too. Google is moving responsible AI teams and research to Google DeepMind to be closer to where the models are built and scaled. CDNS still dropping. MU still going down. Watch if uh, BSY drops. No oil news, but again, war headlines. I think U.S. and Israel are meeting today to discuss potential actions, and then we put tariffs on Iran. Uh, but other than that, I mean, if anything, hot conflict tensions, they've pretty much cooled since Monday. Brainerd says shipping hasn't become much of an issue in terms of cost. But oil's climbed back up. It was down earlier. Yeah, the Google News, Wall Street firms steered billions to blacklisted Chinese firms. Congress probe fines. Committee report urges lawmakers to restrict capital flows to companies on U.S. blacklist. House committee probe focused on BlackRock and MSCI. Wall Street firms steered billions to blacklisted Chinese firms. Elf still going up. Again, Estee Lauder, Elf, uh, there was L'Oreal earnings, and they were good, but Elf is on the high and Estee Lauder. A lot. Nordies came down. Bro, Micron getting dumped on and no news. Now they're down three. Intel, where's Arm? And TSM. TSM came up. It's still down. That one's still a surpriser. Spy still hugging VWAP. We were selling off right before v, uh, Euro close. It's been coming down since then. It's been an hour? No way. Wow. Time flies, Chad. We're five minutes shy of an hour from Euro close. It doesn't really feel like it. So you have literally spent right before, like I was saying, you topped out right before Euro close and then right at Euro close. That was a big candle. You have been going down since then. No, No other data today. 
and NVIDIA going up there, TSM trying to climb again, spy a little green shoot, and then BSY, <clears throat> they're trying to climb back up again. Mm. Oh, where's Ozempic? Oh, where was that? Did I hear that right? I think... Was that a dream or did my girlfriend show me that? I think it was I think it's real life. I'm pretty sure Ozempic they're selling it at Costco now. Is that correct? I can't I'm 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 mixing it up. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 not over the counter, but like you could get it though. So you could get a way cheaper subscription, and like your uh, you you're like what's it, dosage or whatever it is. But yeah, Costco is offering Ozempic. Yeah, I saw the uh, unintended Ozempic birth control thing. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. It's weird. Oh, 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 Ozempic. Weight loss parts. Hey, happy on the days. You guys remember when I was your AI? Now I'm just here to do commercials. Wow. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you when AI comes along. Either way, we're glad you're here. Like the video. It's probably time we should start doing push-ups. Hope you're ready. Awesome. Sheridonia. I'm sorry, man. I get too hyped, man. I'm sorry. I'm like hyped and calm at the same time, bro. I don't know. I'm sorry, too, if any of my craziness ever disturbs you. But, but bro, I love you. And I hope you bring the energy. It's still mad early, man. And this day just started, and whether you realize it or not, we have been here for three hours. Three hours, ladies and gentlemen. So sitting is the new smoking. I need you to get beside your desk and do ten push-ups. Can't do ten, you do five. Can't do five, you do four. Can't do four, you do two. Can't do two, you do one. Can't do one, get our knees, do a push-up, plank the worm, anything. But get the body moving. Then optometrist recommendation. Stare at an object 10, 20, 30 feet away. Blink a few times. Relax those pretty little eyeballs. Go blink, 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 I like it. I needed that. There you go. Then drop the shoulders, man. Please. Please. All right. I'll keep the energy if you drop your shoulders. How about that? That sound like a deal? No, but like really drop your shoulders. None of this lukewarm shoulder dropping. You know what I'm saying? I need you to drop the shoulders. Like really clear your mind. Don't think about anything except how low those shoulders are dropping. <sighs> Literally, I want you to relax your ears. Drop your ears. Literally, your ears and your neck on your side. Focus on letting them relax. You didn't realize. You were you were flexing your ears, dog. You like flexing your ears like, like people do the peck dance. You had your ears tightened up because of your neck and shoulder. Man. Let them drop, baby. Let them drop. There you go. On the chest of the sun, flex the core. Tuck the hips and nah. And just like that, baby. Good posture. I love it. And then finally, relax the jaw a little. Go blah, 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 blah. Breathe in really deep. Breathe out with your tongue out. Do the dragon breath. Go. <sighs> Elliot Management PBF Coach are weighing bids for Sitgo Court Auction. Reuters, what's Sitgo? Court Auctions? Is it publicly traded? I don't think it is. There's Citigroup. Nah, Sitgrow. Sit. 
sit go. All right, I gotta get my body moving, get my water. Let's hit. I'll play this guy. Long term, I'll be here. Uh, I think we're seeing more long term holders in Bitcoin more than ever. Margins are very quiet. large and have been great questions. recently. I'm I think last month was the all time highest up. revenue month for miners in dollar terms. So there's a lot of room right now. Our long term investment thesis on Bitcoin uh, is strong, and uh, I, I think we have the setup for a very positive move in Bitcoin over the next several months. Let's now bring in Castle Island founding partner Nick Carter to talk about the moves ahead of that halving. You're seeing the market lose some steam. There was so much excitement. How do you see the halving playing out and ultimately impacting prices? Oil going up? Yeah, I guess I'll be the contrarian voice on here because, uh, I mean, the halving is a perfectly forecastable event as it has been since Bitcoin's inception as it was last time. And, you know, just... <laughs> Theoretically speaking, an informational event MA, that everybody H -H knows is coming cannot Airlines. possibly be an informational Yo, or in MasterCard, so what am I saying? Priced in, MasterCard really and HA, the what the hell? Side, no, both the of them. Side. The HA is dumping too. An issuance reduction on an annual basis of 83 basis points. That's pretty marginal at this point. Uh, so I would say the factors that really matter for the Bitcoin price are aggregate liquidity conditions, number one. ETF flows, which have been weak, uh, actually both of those things putting pressure on the price, uh, you know, catalysts like that, whereas the halving is something that everybody understands. Uh, so it shouldn't really be a factor in terms of price right, formation Walker. here. Well, demand is a good thing That's to talk about here for a moment because you saw that exuberance head, in, in the Bitcoin the ETF. But what happens you know, underhand, if that starts to walk, taper fresh. off into the year now that the initial rush is gone? MasterCard yeah, that's what we've seen. And... Um, you know, the, the flows have been pretty flat in the last couple of weeks. If you look at the 13F filings, we're not yet seeing major allocators, um, you know, allocating to the ETFs. You haven't yet seen it being incorporated into uh, model portfolios. That's something I would look forward to in the next three to six months. It appears, based on those filings, that it's actually mainly sort of retail investors piling in. And certainly that's what led the rally from the kind of 30,000 range to sort of the 60, 70,000 range, which has been very impressive. I mean, we're seeing, you know, these have been the hottest ETF launches of any asset class probably in history. Um, but, you know, we have seen a softening and the uh, outflows from GBDC continue to be a factor there. And, you know, the uh, ETF in Hong Kong, I think, is, is probably not as much of a factor as well. That fast follow against the domestic ETFs here because mainland uh, Chinese uh, citizens will probably not be able to buy that. So the ETF for now is is less positive for Bitcoin. How do you think about the volatility around large geopolitical events? I think it was a big shocker over the weekend when you saw the Iranian strike against Israel, that you saw Bitcoin really drop to the lowest levels you've seen this month. It fell below 60,000 for a while there. What does that mean to you? Yeah, I think the market overreacted a bit uh, there, but, uh, you know, warfare is generally not good for risk assets. Uh, hopefully that doesn't escalate any further. Um, the only asset that seems to do well in times of conflict is oil. And Bitcoin still uh, trades like the tip of the spear for liquidity conditions. And we have seen a significant tightening in liquidity, especially with the move in the 10 year recently. So not entirely surprising that Bitcoin sold off there. But I do think that was overdone and was probably more indicative of uh, a buildup of leverage in the market. And, you know, we have now seen that flush. So it's kind of a healthier position now. Where does Bitcoin end the year with all that said and done? I would look to subsequent ETF flows as the major driver and then fundamentally the uh, you know liquidity conditions. We'll see what happens at the long end of the curve. We'll see if we get more of these uh, CPI prints that are super elevated. Uh, basically, for the most part, I would say it really actually just depends on the Fed and whether we are in a higher for longer situation, whether we continue to see commodities rallying like we see now, whether inflation stays hot. Those seem to be the factors that are primarily driving it. The other thing to keep an eye on would be uh, around the time of the halving, we're going to see new protocols launched on Bitcoin, such as runes, which will be an arbitrary asset issuance protocol, which could make Bitcoin the center of the meta in the crypto space. 
uh, we could see an explosion of trading of new arbitrary assets, uh, meme coins, if you will, on Bitcoin. That'd be one thing to watch, sort of more sort of fundamental crypto thing. But largely, I would say the factors that matter here are the sort of exogenous factors. We could talk about meme coins forever, but I first want to pivot to another big story today here because you do have Binance receiving a long sought after crypto license, a full license here in Dubai. Speaking to Bloomberg a little earlier also about that permit and also the lack of clarity about where its ultimate headquarters will be. Let's take a quick listen, Nick. We are looking forward to working very closely with both the regulators here yeah, as well as the partners here yeah, to bring about a very vibrant oh, ecosystem like in Dubai, right? And you know, crypto is a 24-7 market. Uh, where traditional markets are closed, people can still take investment strategy, trading, hedging strategies that you see after markets and throughout the weekend. So we're very excited to serve the Dubai market and beyond. When you think about how much crypto trading has moved offshore outside of the United States, how do you think about how that would change the dynamics here, particularly as Binance continues to build its presence abroad? Yeah, I mean, look, Dubai is a highly liquid place, uh, both literally and figuratively right now with the floods. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look, Binance is a juggernaut. You can't count it out. It's, I would say, at least 50 percent of global trading for Bitcoin. And you know, people kind of figured Binance would go away after the settlement, but that's just not going to happen. They have a presence in dozens and dozens of countries worldwide. And as the U.S. has continued to be hostile to crypto, uh, that hasn't changed. The you know, most vibrant and active crypto firms on the planet are looking for foreign jurisdictions. And we're seeing a number of them opening their arms. This is just part of uh, the regulatory arms race, whereas we're seeing more uh, progressive regulators accepting and realizing that crypto is here to stay and embracing these large firms and reaping the benefit of it. That's why the biggest conference of the year is in Dubai and Singapore. And that's why it's not in the U.S. It's a very sad state of affairs for us U.S.-based mm -hmm. uh, firms and individuals, but Nick, that's just unfortunately a consequence. The one place in Congress you may see some movement is potentially in stablecoins. How might that change the game around the stablecoin industry in the United States, or do you still have doubts that there will be a constructive move there? I don't think the Lamas Gillibrand bill, um, the new draft came out yesterday, will be passed, but I do think a stablecoin bill is the number one priority for this Congress probably after the election. It is essential that the U.S. regulate stable coins and brings them under the regulatory ambit. Stable coins are good for the U.S. dollar. We heard Chris Waller, Fed governor, say this recently. Um, we've heard, you know, members on both sides of the aisle uh, understand uh, and publicly uh, speak out saying that stable coins are good for the dollar. This guy keeps talking. They're the new euro dollars, Castle and it's just a matter of time until we fold them into Nick the regulatory Carter? apparatus, which is absolutely essential bah, here bah, as they're promoting bah, bah, the dollar bah, bah. usage, uh, globalization of the dollar um, at a time when that's more important than ever when we're seeing deglobalization of the dollar. Nick, thank you so much for your time. Hey, right right ahead of that, that long anticipated having, with a lot of contrarian that views, that is Castle that Island good, founding partner, you. Nick Carter. Now, coming up next, we're going to talk about Netflix reporting earnings today with analysts we're saying looking a for high. For the stocks, but MasterCard's at 0.54%, and it's staggering. Over the past 10 years, they've grown the, the dividend 27% a year over the past 10 years. So, that's anything that is growing at that rate eventually, obviously, is going to catch up. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's one part. The other part, too, that's kind of missed in this entire equation is the payout ratio. So that's the percentage of earnings that is being paid out in the form of a dividend. Um, MasterCard, 19 percent, 20 percent, roughly somewhere in there, which means they've got a lot of space to grow. OK, Hershey, Hershey. Uh, 2.6 yield. Why this one? Cocoa prices. So over the past, we just showed those on the network uh, within the last hour. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So over the past year, hopefully I'm quoting this right, is somewhere roughly around two. It's I mean it's 250 percent year over year. So I think that a lot of that comes from supply, Africa, some issues with weather. But you know, her, Hershey is uh, a great dividend payer. Was not on our radar before, but as the price has moved down, I think the price is down about 27 uh, percent over the past year. Yield has went up and it hit our radar, and they've got a. We look for a 10-year track record of dividend growth. How are you thinking about dividend growers here? So, what's different from your strategy versus buying the dividend aristocrats as kind of like a smart beta factor-driven strategy? What are you doing qualitatively that doesn't get captured in something quantitative like that? So, aristocrats is a 25-year period. 
and that gets stretched out so long, that's such an extended period. We look at tenure on the okay. dividend growth side. I mean, that's the, the simple answer to it. So you'll pick up on stocks before they become aristocrats. Correct. That's oh, good. interesting mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. um, others that are um, part of your buys recently, Lockheed, right? Starbucks, McDonald's. You want to talk about any of those, sure. why yeah. they stood out? Yeah, so Lockheed, purely a geopolitical play, you know, with the tensions in Iran, Israel. Um, it's a long time holding, one of our original holdings on our books. Loved it ever since. It's got a great dividend growth rate track record. I mean, performance has been great over mm -hmm. the past decade, but purely a geopolitical play. What about McDonald's? So you can almost, I mean, I don't know if it's okay to, but Starbucks, McDonald's almost lumped them into the same group. You know, they're both kind of kings of the, the fast food industry. They're both down, I mean, stock price. Stock price is depressed, you know, year to date, and really not a great reason as to why. So their valuation looks excellent, and they fit that dividend growth rate perfectly. All right, you, you keep us up to date on what moves you're making. Uh, it's good to see you again. I'll do that, yeah, thank right, you. Thank you very much. Joining Thanks. us here Post Line. Coming up, a pop for DR Horton today on strong earnings and guidance, and committee member Stephanie Link. Well, she bought the stock last good month. Good timing. She has a trade update. Thanks. She's going to join us next. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. TMV, TBT, bro, bonds getting blown out again. So it was worse the other day, but now half of yesterday's rally. Not the half that you gapped into. That's gone, though. So tomorrow will be interesting now. Even the rest of the day with bonds. I mean, we still got another three and a half hours, baby. Mm-hmm. TMV is dying. Death and destruction. There's a death and destruction. Mm-mm. Coco. Starbucks has more revenues than uh, McDonald's. Really? I didn't know that, but Starbucks got it like that, though. At the same time, that seems surprising, but not really. And then you're getting a little bit more reds, man. It's been an hour since Euro closed, a little bit more, but kind of rough. Back to opening. So this is literally right where we opened up at, about a quarter percent. This was the relief you had in the morning. Again, TSM traded lower. It was up in the morning. That's the funny part. And then it slowly faded, but this is wherever you were at in the AM. And then we gave it up, had that little bounce there. It still didn't take you much higher on the week, but hi. And now we're waiting for Netflix. So in a little bit, we'll go over the preview. I have that. There's a couple of other companies reporting today, but literally Netflix, big money, man. Big money. A lot of expectations. A lot of movement went into it. So we'll see PPG, ISRG. Those will be fun. But I do think uh, Netflix will be most telling than AXP, PG, and the AM. Ticker for 10-year. You could use slash ZN. That'll show you the 10-year futures or IEF. That's a 7- to 10-year ETF. Or trading economics. You know, the one thing, uh, you know, this is why I always bring it up. I'm a big fan of the just the 10-year. It's a tr I think it's a trading view chart, but it just gives you the actual price or the actual yield for six. Why do I have the hiccups? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, stop it. Well, we're running hard, Kai. It's like up a dollar from the low, a dollar thirty, up point eight on the day. Dude, it happened. The five-year chart art this eye on Netflix is overbought <gasps> on the five-year damn. But I mean, that's why Netflix is good. Is going to be hilarious. It's going to be funnier than my hic hiccups because the funny part is like legitimately it has been over. <laughs> a year of everybody thinking this thing was going to die. So every earnings I feel like is like that for Netflix. Oh. I'm going to hold my breath and go get water. I ran out of water. I got to go real oh, water. 
one dollar increase in price, you know, multiplied by o almost 300 million people produces over a billion annually in pure profit. So, but you got to resist it. You got to kind of just let it grow organically and use that at the appropriate time. Mark, given your kind of a general negativity about the the subscriber growth, this idea of the price increases essentially being a mistake you've written to us, how do you feel yeah. about the price right now of Netflix's stock? Do you believe that the run-up is justified, or how would you advise clients to be positioning at this point? Yeah, well, I've done very. I I bought Netflix two years ago and tripled my investment, and you know, kind of talked about. It. I've always been a big fan of Netflix. I continue to be a big fan, but it's kind of a relay race for them right now. So you know, they have the password sharing, and at an appropriate time, they have to pass the growth to another part of their business. And international and advertising are you know the two areas. The advertising is easier to do; it just takes a lot of effort. The international Nationals just, you know, produce the right shows, and they've, they've, they're incredibly good at that. So I think they can grow both of those, but for an investor, they can drop the baton, but just hold on. They'll pick it back up, and they'll keep running. Well, what about some of these newer initiatives? You think live sports, for example. When does that start to pay off? Um, well, I think WWE was brilliant. I mean, it just happened. There's no way. I, the, the, the average person, there's no way they were going to go and watch WWE. And now it's going to be like the moment you start up your TV. It's just right there. And I think finding like kind of smart sports opportunities like that, instead of just paying massive sums of money for, you know, kind of NFL, things like that, is a pretty smart move. They've kind of done that with Netflix. I mean, I'm sorry, with F1. With documentaries, so I think they're 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 really really good at it, and they do it in a very precise way that just explodes the sport and explodes viewership for Netflix. How do you want to see Netflix use their money moving forward? Is the idea here to be spending spending more on content, or do you want to see them do a deal? Um, I think M and A in the media industry is pretty much guaranteed at this point. I mean, if you don't have a brand, if if I can't. If you can't name the brand and I tell you immediately why we go and watch it, that brand's not going to exist. So example is CBS. Why do I go to CBS versus ESPN where I know it's sports, right? And so there's going to be a lot of consolidation. Whether Netflix participates in that, I think is a pretty big guess. It's not something they've done in the past, but I, I wouldn't be shocked if they started to do it now. Mountain CEO Mark Douglas, we thank you so very much for your time and a balanced view of a stock that has seen a significant run up. Now coming up next, more of our interview with Blackstone president and COO who says they are hiring. More from right, the man. I hope he's gone. I don't know. But spy, if my hiccups are gone, the gains are gone. You're about to go negative again. Nasdaq just went negative. It was the lagger on the day today. Spy is a couple points now from filling the gap and going red once again. Bro, very wild. So I don't know if we're going to argue. We have to see how tomorrow plays out. But yeah, Apple, two big candles there at the low. NVIDIA announced optimized across all its platforms to accelerate Meta's Llama 3. But uh, what was I saying? I think it's just the momentum of what we with rates and everything else because again the earnings weren't that bad i do think generally earnings have been favorable but even after today you know we'll see what netflix does that's, that's why i say maybe we got to wait till tomorrow but my goodness i just i'm kind of it's one thing about today but just keep in mind where we are like it's you know we're taking every day one day at a time but like Y'all realize every day, whether it's been one day lower, maybe we go higher. It's like you've worked your way down a lot. So that pressure, again, you also climbed up like a madman. So we have a lot to go. I mean, this is almost chopping the gains in half, I think, right around here. That'll be like equilibrium on the year, you know. But for the most part, we still got to see how uh, Netflix is going to play out and then coming into tomorrow. But my goodness. Yeah, TSM, it was down a little bit more, which is surprising. Snap is still going up. That one's kind of funny. Again, Meta's still up. That TikTok news is still carrying over. You completely missed the 23 run, and now you're back during a downside turn. Well, that's why, man, just get a chair. 
and sit in it and never leave. You don't have to watch the stream, but like just buy and hold. Call it a day. Call it a day. We're right above the year to date anchored VWAP. You say 30 year 7 1? I don't think it's 7 1, but I could. Oh, 30 year mortgage. I thought it meant like 30 year bond. I'm like, I don't know. I feel like it'll get there, though. The snap news. The news was that a Congress is fast-tracking the TikTok ban bill. So I think it's getting voted on very soon. It's going to be included in one of the budget bills. So just like last time, there was talks of banning TikTok, Snap, and Meta. Literally, last time, I think Snap was like just below 1130. This was the last time they we had the ban news. Brought it up to 12s, and then it faded with everything else. VIX is on the high, still down on the day. Again, today's theme is supposed to be relief. That's the funny part, but now we're back down again. Bonds, too. You bought 3,000 shares of Mara at 1575. Pray for you. I, I'll put that on the list, baby. Dollar coming up here, too. Spy coming down. My goodness. And again, gold is still up. Ibotta opens at 117, IPO at 88. Uh, VIX is starting to go uh, not green, but it's close. A little bit more. You are coming back down to the lows now. Again, you have sold off like legitimately from Euro close. Like, no exaggeration. You're down now 24 points. So you're about a couple points here, two points away from filling the gap. So NASDAQ already went red. And Jen, we'll see where we go. And again, bonds already bonds started going lower from the morning. I guess they really broke out here. We were already dumping. How was all? Tesla. It's interesting the names that are up again. UNH that was up a lot. That's still up two point eight. Let's take a look. Remember, I was I was just telling you guys in the morning we were at like sixty percent, seventy percent green. Now fifty fifty Dow Jones sixteen green, fourteen in the red. Nasdaq one hundred forty three red, fifty eight uh, or forty three green, fifty eight red. So that flipped, and then spy two ninety uh, in the green, two twelve in the red. I think there was another Hindenburg omen. Again, Hindenburg could either be the top or the bottom. We did not figure out any Pfizer news. No, it was moving, though. Like it got something. Timmy tweet, are we there yet? Are we there yet? The highway off-ramp isn't as close as the markets anticipated. And now the interest rate road trip will last longer. <laughs> Selling my house to buy puts. Crash is coming. Well, would you like to sell me your house? Maybe we can make a deal. If you give me a good deal on the house, I'll let you live in it for a year. So I'll give you the money. You give me the house. And I'll let you live in the house for a year. So then that way you'll have a place to live. You could crash. If the market crashes, you'll make money on the puts. And you'll have a place to live till you could buy a cheaper house. If you'd like to, let me know. Let me know. And then somebody was asking how I get houses cheaper. That's exactly how. You see that? That's It's a fair... I can work with him. You see, it's an unconventional deal. If he works with me, I'll work with him. Give him value. He gives me value. Mm -hmm. That's a deal. If you, if you have a house and want to do that, I honestly think that's a very bad deal for you just because you're more likely to lose on the puts. But if you want to do the deal, I'm down. My email is tradingfraternity at gmail.com. Thank you. Did you know nobody missed anything, man? The funny part is that it's the same thing on the way up. Besides, you know, the earnings were generally good. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like we were going up out of nowhere after selling off. 
Couldn't really answer it. We dumped that Euro close in the same fashion. So no real headlines. There was Iran sanctions, but I don't think that's uh, what gave us a move of any sorts. I did get your email. Uh, that property was nice. I like I like that area in Chicago. It reminds me of uh, is it the Shameless area, if you've seen that show. But it's a little bit, it's up there on the in terms of price, though. I think she'll sell it on the market unless she wanted to sell it uh, substantially cheaper. I just saw the property, though. I didn't really, you didn't attach any, like, info with it. And then Pfizer has a price target maintained at 45 that's all I see. The shameless area. Like, it looked like the house is in shameless. I think it's a nice area, though, in real life. Because that's the crazy, like, you don't, Chicago is like a little bit of a, I guess everywhere is like that. But, like, Chicago, Chicago has, like, really cheap ghetto-ass properties. But then, in the same respect, they also have... They literally have like million dollar suburbs that are very, very nice. So it's like that's some of those houses, like in even the multi units, they were kind of cheap, but then they've like ballooned up and they've, they've like gentrified. Kind of like it reminds me of like East LA and by like Dodger Stadium. I think the area already was gentrified. Oak Brook. I'm from East LA. What's up, East LA? East LA is a trip. So like East LA used to be so cheap. Even after like Beverly Hills and Hollywood recovered and were expensive, the houses in East LA were super cheap. And then all of a sudden, everybody was like, let's get out to East LA. Boyle Heights is nice. And then they, because there's like views in LA still. And then they started building there. And then one thing after the next, man, before you knew it, a couple $20 coffee parks, you know, that's it. It was, oh, it was game over. And then a couple years, East LA was going for like, went from like 500 grand to like 1.2 million. Echo Park, yeah. Echo Park used to be cheap. Echo Park used to be the hood. But then it got really nice. All of them, all the East LA. It's crazy. Don't even Inglewood. Don't get me started on that. Your fam's from there. King Taco for life. Did I just? I hope I didn't like say anything gang related. Like, I don't know what King Taco is. I want tacos now though. That sounds really good. That's how Detroit's going to be. That'd be nice. I would love to invest in Detroit anywhere, like even Michigan, bro. I'm telling you, bro, I wanted to buy those houses in Flint. And every it's, it's funny because, like, everybody got mad at the idea. Like, any investors I talked to, they really don't like Flint for some odd reason. I mean, I know why, but... Still, what I ate for breakfast, I ate uh, a water bar, two water bottles, and uh, the Lord's Word. That's what I had to, to wake me up. I should have a protein, though. Honestly, I might go grab me a protein. I need me a protein. You don't live in L.A. if you don't know what King Taco is. Well, I'm a San Diego native. I lived in L.A. for a couple of years, but, you know, I'm not. I don't know King Taco. Or maybe if you show me it, but not off top.
Ardian is endeared to buy one billion of BCI's PE holdings. LA got the best damn food, yeah. I mean, but dude, do you know uh it sucks. I, I think I still have the picture on my Instagram. I have the you know the like Benny Hibachi like food trucks? It like the it's like a food truck where they like it's like Benny Hanna's in a food truck. The owner, like the guy who like made it, he got murdered. Man, I'm like, what? But apparently he was uh he was like a drug dealer. <laughs> besides selling uh besides selling like hibachi, he sold drugs. So place isn't really good it was good the first it was cool the first time i think it's like a tourist thing silver next week calls i mean if they're cheap enough i think it's all commodities like especially gold and silver i mean they could either pop or die at any given day so i think the uh is the juice worth the squeeze it should be assuming you don't pay too much in premium so, yeah, the premiums and the premiums are substantially lower than last week. But actually, no, 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 that's on the weekly. Cocoa surges 10% above 11,000 per ton in New York. Damn. Yeah, honestly, there is really cheap silver calls. U.S. will vote no on Palestinian request for full United Nations membership. The Meta AI? I haven't used it. I didn't even know they had that. We have to hold here. I mean, we could go a little lower. Remember yesterday, bro, we were hanging out. Right at 5,007 and then found a way to bounce up. Primary, you had the tips auction. Again, none of you cared. Neither did the bond market. But, yeah, nothing out of there. 525. Right in the middle. 50, 50. We did this last time. The last time we sold, I swear, last time we sold 50, 50. Didn't we come down to 50, 25? Yeah, yesterday. We did the same exact thing. Went to 50, 53. Came down to 50, 25. And now we're chilling, so. You've, you've literally just repeated this move twice. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to do it again, but you got three hours. Seven, twelve, one. Yeah. My goodness. Coco, unfortunately, you can't trade it. I don't know why. It's so like Coco futures are not available on, on Charles Schwab TD Ameritrade. And then I don't know. I might have a. I don't know what LT's saying, but. LT might have a job for some of you. He needs two people. He wants to hire two people for cold calls. They're not cold calls, appointment setting. Interesting. And then the Baltimore buildings at three million. We're not bidding. Mm, well, let me see. I could have him. Maybe I'll see if he could come. But he's telling me, yeah, he needs cold callers, 
So they'd be s- s- cold calling, but setting appointments mainly too. But you'll be given everything. You just have to set up appointments and then lending tips will go face to face and do the deal. Daily training. You just need internet, computer, and a good mic. Minimum 100 calls a day or one hour of phone calls. Past cold calling experience a plus. Remote? I guess so. Hour a day. I think he's either going to pay you hourly or he's going to give you a cut on the deal. Let me see, but he said email Colt Real, email Colt Real Estate if you want. I don't know. Let me get more info from him. It's kind of random. What's he shilling? Houses? <coughs> so like, well, he wants to buy them. I think he's. I think he probably just bought a bunch of leads. So he needs somebody to go call them and set them up even more, so he could go buy the house and flip it. The guy is addicted. You have no. It's kind of funny. You guys, like, you guys need to get that lending tips dog in you. You know that? Like, LT is an animal. Like, it is, like, it's it's disgusting. You guys really got to just get addicted to it because, like, he loves his flips. He really, really does. He's very, like, I'm telling you, that's why I'm like, man, I think he has, like, a, a couple of them he's working on, but then he'll just, he wants a lot of them. He wants a lot of them. Spy is red. Spy is red. It is actually red. You have filled the gap twice today. Implied move on Netflix. I think it's 8 to 10. Oh, it's moved around a little bit. So has the stock. But we'll get to that soon. Email coltrealestate at gmail.com. And then spy near the lows. It's kind of crazy. Because, again, even the re- – why are we going up? Why are we going down? But <sighs> the theme is supposed to be relief, and now the Russell is – the. I guess small caps are doing great. But then we are still hovering near the lows. Again, at least you you went closer to testing 5,100 today than, than testing 5,000. So I don't know if that makes you feel any better. Good. My Tesla. Jonathan Tamari. Sorry. Okay, I'll be right back. Follow me on Instagram at the Training Fraternity. I love you. Good morning, Chadatonia. All right. Going to be a working weekend in all likelihood for Jonathan Tamari, who covers Congress for Bloomberg Government. Thank you so much for working hard today as well and joining us here on Bloomberg Television and Radio. And Joe, like we spoke it into existence almost just by raising the question of changing the rules on the (laughs) motion to vacate. Congressman Dusty Johnson a Republican, Mm -hmm. just posted a video on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. Enough is enough. The motion to vacate is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. We need to change the rules. He says he's working with a group to change those rules on the motion to boot out a speaker. So maybe the effort isn't all too dead. It's just coming from outside the leadership ranks, Well, and of course, that's chair of the Main Street uh, yes. Republican caucus, right? So he's going to have that establishment view that might not be shared by folks like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Tom right. Massey and some others who were the instigators here. But pretty remarkable. I, I think that we're our, our mission today is to cut through the drama because there's a lot. We could write tabloids all day today. We could TMZ this thing for the rest mm-hmm. of the afternoon. But there does seem to be a prize at the end of the road here come Saturday Uh, whether you're talking about our allies in Ukraine or in Israel, Kaylee, which is why this next conversation is so important. Yeah, against the domestic political backdrop is a very real and potentially dangerous geopolitical one as there are hot conflicts all around the world on the continent of Europe and, of course, in the Middle East. And that is where we begin our conversation now with retired General Ken McKenzie. He is executive director of the University of South Florida's Global and National Security Institute, but also former U.S. Central Command commander. General, thank you so much for joining us here on Bloomberg Television and Radio. You recently recently uh, penned an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal about how you view the attack we saw last weekend, Iran sending hundreds of drones and missiles in Israel's direction. You say that was a show of weakness. What does Israel need to do to not show weakness in return in its response that is still calibrated to not escalate this conflict any further? 
Well, first of all, thanks for having me on today. Uh, I believe that uh, one of the hardest things you can do is translate an operational victory into strategic success, and that's the challenge ahead of Israel. Look, Iran is weakened in every way by this attack. They're more cut off from uh, people in the region, more cut off internationally, and they have reason to now look at their own offensive capabilities with some concern. So they face their own set of problems. Israel's set of problems, though, is really not so much the technical military aspect of it, which worked quite well over the weekend, but rather how to maintain this alliance structure, this collective security approach that was so profitable for them. And they need to do that while still considering whether or not they're going to strike back at Iran. And I think it's the big question, how, how where, and the scope of that potential attack. That's the big question that lies ahead of Israel right now. And they need to think strategically as they come to a conclusion. Where the U.S. support comes into play, General, is what I'd love to hear you speak to. We're talking about $60 billion plus being invested in hardware for Ukraine. We know that Ukraine has ammunition shortages. We know that every shell at this point matters. Israel is in a very different situation. What does it need that this $14 billion can buy? Well, I think the main thing Israel is going to need is continued uh, supply of interceptors, all the systems, the defensive systems that we saw employed uh, over the weekend. Because I'll tell you, we fired a lot of air-to-air -air missiles shooting down those drones. Yeah, we did. And we and our partners fired a lot of surface-to-air missiles and anti-ballistic missiles bringing down the, the, those other platforms that were inbound. So they're going to need constant replenishment of that. You know, the, the, the good side of the, the weekend's attack is we successfully defended Israel. The bad side is, frankly, you're on the wrong side of the cost imposition curve. It's easier to build the drones, missiles, and land attack cruise missiles than it's it, cheaper, I should say, than it is to build the systems that are defended. Israel. So you're on the wrong side of that, but we're going to need to continue it into the future, I think. Well, okay, so you're saying basically that what all Iran needs to do is do the cheaper thing, whereas it's it's much more costly for Israel to do uh, what they need to do defensively. So I guess it raises the wider question, General, of, of how we may need to rethink what it is that deters Iran. Is Iran likely to change its behavior as a result of this attack that, sure, they called successful, but as we know, largely was not, as most of this uh, incoming missile and drone uh, to Israel was intercepted, as, as you've been talking about. So is Iran likely to be more dangerous now or less dangerous now, I guess, is the question. And, and then how do you deter that level of danger? Sure. So let me back up a step and say, why did Iran launch this attack? They launched this attack because over the past many months, they've been consistently outfought by Israel in this shadow war, this dialogue of targets that's gone on, culminating in the 1 April attack on uh, Iranian leaders in Damascus. So I think what Iran felt, they were in a corner, they were, on the, they were on the wrong side of this equation. And so what they tried to do is take a page out of the Russian playbook, what we call escalate to de-escalate, do something profoundly aggressive that makes your opponents rock back on their heels and realize that maybe the game getting too rich for them. Here's the problem, though. Russia uses this because Russia has vast resources, including nuclear capabilities. Iran tried it, but their attempt was found to be hollow. It was unsuccessful. So Iran is in a markedly weaker strategic position today than they were last week because when it, when, at the bottom line, the most important priority for Iran is preservation of the theocratic regime that runs the country. And they have viewed their ballistic missiles, drones, and land attack cruise missiles as the principal thing that deters others from attacking them. So that, that capability has now been tested, and it has failed. So Iran's in a very difficult position. Even as Israel faces difficult choices, the harder choices are Iran's because something they viewed as very powerful has been exposed. General, we'd like to ask you about a couple of things beyond Israel, including your time uh, as commander of U.S. Central Command, in which you helped to oversee the withdrawal from Afghanistan. You test Central Command. This guy was part of Afghanistan? Man. Chad, I hope you're feeling good, man. I want to, uh, I want to get into a moment here, but I don't know. I don't know. I want to, but I don't know. What if we do the 50-point flush the dump real quick? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. And then Lending Tips, he's serious about it. So he says, 
Email Colt Real Estate at gmail.com. He, he needs to hire two people. He wants two chads. They don't have to be chads. He just said anybody. So, so I'm saying, so I'm saying, so I'm saying. We'll see, man. Hopefully we don't go lower, but bonds near the lows too. And my goodness. My goodness. I think we should do it. I think we could get it. I think we could get it there. Not TCF. No, but anybody, really. Anybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and gals, it's that time. I don't know what the market will do. Market might love it. Market might hate it. Either way, we got to say it, baby. It's time. It's philo time. Yeah, I'll be live for Netflix earnings. Uh, the market's going lower. You have 433 billion, 75 counterparties at the reverse repo. That's all happening now. Uh, we do have, what, 11 o'clock? Uh, no, we got time. We got time. We got time ahead. We don't have anything else on the schedule. I just wanted to do some earnings and look at them. But now I think we should take this moment and talk about something else. Talk about something just broadly speaking in life. And maybe we should think a little bit. And this is what we call our philo time. And honestly, man, over the years... Never would I have thought uh, Philo would have been uh, this this big of a moment. Spies going lower. Low ticker is very, very active. You are making them over. So before I get into any of these Philos as of late, man, it has been a true honor. Spy is five points from the low, but Philo is at an all-time high. And I'm just very impressed with you. some of you who have taken the moment to not only listen and uh, open your hearts and allow certain things into your life, but those of you who have made an effort. And I do have a philo for you today, and there's many elements that I could talk about, but uh, again, I do hope uh, there is always a practical element that all of you could apply, regardless whatever you believe, whatever you think. But mainly, uh, you know, it's just something I, I really think universal truth can always be applied and be applied for the better. And, you know, a good man, a good woman, you could take something that's good and, and make good out of it always, baby. You know what I'm saying? So I'm proud of that. But we are dumping, man. I don't know about holy flush. Maybe. I don't know. Is that 520? Yeah. You just dropped 10 points. So market heard Philo and said, nah, man, hold on. So, Chad, honestly, I mean... I may, may have to wait. may have to wait a little bit. You're about to flush the low. But today's philo is going to be, uh, I may, I may, we may have to postpone it here. Hold on. We may have to. We'll see. Depending on how much it flushes at 5,000. But I need your permission again today. I need your permission for today's philo. Uh, yeah, yesterday. And if you weren't here yesterday, that sucks. It really does because... It's good. It's both good and bad. It's bittersweet uh, if you weren't if you weren't here, but it's it's pretty. It's, this one's a little different, man. But so I need your permission because yesterday I asked your permission to gas you up a little bit. Spy one point from the low. It's still going. Uh, but today I'm not gonna gas you up at all. <laughs> I need I need your permission for uh, a little bit of a gut check, you know, because I, I could have waited, you know what I'm saying? But why not? I'm bipolar, I guess, too. So might as well gas you up yesterday and then punch you in the gut today. I don't know. Can you can you handle it? Is that is that something? Are you sure? Are you are you? You don't have to. We can wait if you want. The market's dumping too. We might have reasons. Already back up a couple of points there off the bottom. All right. Well, everything I said yesterday still applies, you know, and I really hope uh, 
you guys were here. If not, that's what I'm saying. Maybe a little weird, but you know, I, I really do believe you guys have potential. I believe you are wonderfully made and, and the things you can accomplish and the purpose that you have, bro, like for real, I, I think the truth of that and, and again, the intrinsic value you possess and, and all the little things in life that that show you that. But, you know, I mean, honestly, it just gets drowned, drowned out by so many other things or other people or opinions. And, you know, let every man be a liar. But even then, even with today, bro, like speaking of drowned out, you know, it's the reality sometimes gets drowned out even when you're going in the right direction. Oh, man, I don't know if you feel me because there's a lot of things, bro, especially in life, your journey, your progress to getting better, man. Just unfortunately, we live, man, in such a good time that you guys got to realize like we live in such like so much opportunity. You have access to information. The f Dude, I'm connecting to you guys right now. I'm sitting in my house. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's absolutely amazing. But. There is, like, things negative that come with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, when it's all said and done, yeah, we may have a lot of these benefits, but at the same time, it's this is the culture we live in. It's made us a certain way, bro. I'm a certain way. What I value in entertainment, man, how we want information. Some of y'all, you OGs, and I love you. Some of y'all, though, some of y'all, y'all just, y'all need things. Y'all need it. I need it in five seconds, four steps, easy bake oven, and and let me do it however I want. Otherwise, I'm not no. If I can't take it like this, nope. We got it. we are. It's it's both good. It's a double edged sword, man. The double edged sword. The we live we in a, a vision board society. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all y'all need to get a vision board, and some of y'all the vision board has ruined you. <laughs> And, and and I hope you get what I'm saying here, because what I'm going to tell you today, let me just tell you the title of the philo, uh, of where I'm going to punch you in the stomach. But the philo, my, my friend, is that you are Spider-Man. Oh? <laughs> I know, you're like, what'd you just say? Yeah, I'm, just, I'm telling you how weird the world is and culture and media, yeah. You're Spider-Man. Okay. And maybe I'm uncle in this in this scenario. I'm Uncle Ben. Okay? Because, like, for real, dude, you got a great responsibility. I told you about your potential. I told you, again, in the, in the truth of it. You know what I'm saying? And I, I believe it. I really, 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 really do believe it. But you also have a very big responsibility and burden and honestly, some of y'all, you got a challenge set out for you that some of us, it would break. It would break a lot of us, honestly. I don't know. I don't think y'all feel me, man. I really don't. <laughs> Chad. Like, do you get it? Like, I, I really hope you do, man. Cause I heard it the other day. I, I saw this thing. I saw this in a, I saw a, a video and this guy was just talking about how uh, he was like, man, believing in God ruined my life. And he went on all these these things and reasons. And, you know, I thought about it for for a little bit. And I was like, you know, I I don't necessarily agree with my man because <laughs> I wouldn't I guess I don't ascribe the, the blame to God. But, oh, man, I feel him. I feel him because it should. Ex that's what you should expect. But it was just like I, I, I it, it's something I think we all have to. We may have all thought about, and if you haven't, I, I think you should. Nulo, Chattadonia, midfield. I'm telling you, man. He's, this guy's making a video. He's like, life, life's rough. Because he believed. And then I'm telling you challenging things. The market's being challenged right now. 5,004. <laughs> but not nah, in all seriousness. He was talking about this. And he was saying how like it ruined his life. And he, he gave a lot of blame to cer certain things. But you know when I really thought about it. 
I I could I can say I have had many beautiful and great things come in my life on a, as a result of my beliefs. At the same respect, I have also had opposition, unnecessary opposition and problems more so. And I'm sure the way I even deal with certain things is 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 I I probably give way more into certain things than I should. Even to the even to the thing. I mean, again, if you care about things that other people don't care about, you're gonna have different conflicts than the average person. So, I hope you guys get what I'm saying with all of it. Because I'm telling you, you have a greater responsibility. I told you, you have a high potential. And it's true. But today's philo is a reminder of the the reality, dude. The game is brutal. You will have to learn that and you're going to have to learn to suck it up, how to make it through. You're going to learn. Some of y'all, you going faith, you're going to learn it. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? Like you will learn it. Cuz you're going to have to actually be in a situation to to really you know, rev it up and, and, and actually utilize it. But, dude, like, do you get it? I'm telling you, man. I'm telling, I was hyping you up yesterday. I'm telling you, there is beautiful things. And it is beautiful. And what you can accomplish. And just who you are, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. And just love, man. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's beauty. The joy you can bring to the world, to others. The purpose, man. Don't even get me started. But at the same time, you are living in a very crazy, dark, and an unfair world. You will fail. You are going to underperform. You are going to be tested. You will be persecuted. You know what I'm saying? Like your, your, your steps and your vision boards are going to fail you. That's what I'm saying. It's not uh, that, uh, that joke I was saying earlier. Like, do you get it? You know, light, it will be as easy as getting a long term, but it's not going to be that easy. I've said, I told you the hardest part of the long term, bro, is like staying alive and like just staying in your head, bro. And like staying there, not ruining it, not blowing it up, not getting in the way of it, actually staying committed, not backtracking. Come on, like I'm telling you, the hard part of, of, of actually a, a building wealth is just like the time you have to burn and like what it creates in you, man. So I don't, that's why I'm saying like, it's not, it's not going to be that, it will be that easy, but it won't be that easy. That potential is waiting to be used, bro. But this world will, <laughs> it will do a lot to, to make sure that, you know, that it takes you a while to get to, to utilizing it. So I hope you get what I'm saying, man. I, I really hope you embrace the positivity and you embrace what you're about to accomplish and you and you thank God for it already and, and to that point where you're like, what you're about to accomplish, claim it, baby. You know what I'm saying? But I, I really hope you are prepared, though, and I hope you're humbled uh, that, you, you know, and, and, and humbled that you're still here. You still got your head to think in, but that it's it's going to be challenging. There will, there is opposition is naturally always going to be present. And and I, I would and what I'm even arguing is that it is even gonna be more for you. Let me let me put it another way. And I it sucks because I don't want it like this. But to a degree, like you borderline are gonna deserve more in terms of opposition. That's just how it is. You want more, you're gonna get more, bro. You will. <laughs> you got big potential, you're gonna do big things. Great. But, like, your opposition is going to be real. There's not no little shit. You know what I'm saying? Equal and opposite. Amen. And, you know, and I'm, I I hope this is the balancing act even to to yesterday's philo and a lot of the positivity. Equal and opposites, baby. So, I, but like I'm saying, be prepared, be humbled, and be humble too that you know. Regardless, some of you have already overcame a decent amount. And in the midst, you are learning how to handle the opposition. So, just... Don't get emotional. I'm bringing it back to this one because 
just don't let your expectations get out of hand. You know, like I'm saying, you have potential. I don't know what you're expecting, though. Just because you have potential, don't expect easy. Just because you know the steps, don't expect... Man, I could give you the four secrets of life. This, and they could be the simplest things, but to live them out, my friend. It's easier said than done. You could have the ability, the potential. You could be right there. You could be at the finish line. Still, there, there, is, there will be opposition, and it's not going to be easy. So I don't know what you're expecting. But I do know that you will get emotional if you let those expectations get out of hand. You know, just because you have potential don't mean life going to be easy. Just because you believe in, in a God, <laughs> if anything, I'm going to argue it's probably going to make things a little bit worse. Maybe not a lot worse. But though those the, the, the good stuff that makes you feel good, I hope you use it constructively. But do not let that alter your expectations to lead you to an emotional failure. That is what I am saying. And I hope you feel me, Chad. So, stop expecting easy. Easy don't love you. <laughs> anything, anything that gave you that you got easy gave you problems. We've had that talk, but uh, above all else, man, like I tell, told you, you're Spider Man. You have a greater responsibility. And I hope with that great, you know, and and, and I and that's why I say all uh, I give you all of this so that it's not just like, oh, I'm responsible. I have, you know, because some of us want to be responsible, not like, oh, I, I just I don't want to shit the bed. But like some of we like responsibility. Some of you want to be the leader. You want to be the one who's helping and providing. I get it. But I'm saying responsibility is 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 is, is deeper. It's like it's it's how you're expecting things. It is how you are using your potential, but at the same time, handling opposition and not being so like it's it's this it's just not just handling things and responsibility. I'm talking way bigger than that. So Chad, I really hope you get what I'm saying, and I I, I don't know if if you heard this without yesterday's philo, because for real, man, I'm hyped off yesterday's philo too, and I really hope some of y'all really do take the encouragement. And you do need the encouragement. And sometimes, like, sometimes some of us, the only thing we need is encouragement, you know? But at the same respect, too, I don't don't get drunk off of it. And I and I hope that you are wearing your armor as much as you are, are drinking the encouragement. You know what I'm saying? And I hope you are are are, are accurately and, and very well prepared. So that you can actually overcome whatever it will throw at you. And at the same time, just because you are making good steps and decisions and committing yourself to this and that, dude, that, that's not going to make the opposition disappear, unfortunately, myself included. So I hope you feel me. And I, I hope it's a nice sweet and sour between the last couple of philos. But above all else, man, I do hope you live up to it. And, uh, and and above all, I hope you get joy from this philo and, and a little bit of, uh, you know what I'm saying, and, and get ready for it, baby. But, Chad, take that one to the bank. That is your philosophy, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you guys are subscribed. We're live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on that video. Here on mobile, press hot chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link, Natalie Watson's SMA channel. First link, Scream Alerts, Boot Camp, and Real Estate Costs. And that's it, man. Do deposit a like, too, baby. Do deposit a like, too, man. Hey, man, you get a new Chad coming out tonight. New uncle. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. You see them arrows in my back? Yup, son. That's going to happen, too. Up and go and get the tropes. Hope you know you ain't scared of them, they scared of you. 
And I know you might be scared to take that point of view You see the arrows in my back, yep, son, that's gon' happen too But the harvest on the way, you gon' barter every day That means you have to make a trade, either life or it's the grave The result will not remain, every day will bring a change Kinda funny and it's strange, how the hope will pave the way Hearing what I say, the only difference between you and them comes down to faith. There's a difference in the man who believes in a better day. Cause once you believe it's past, you're willing to wilt away. We was never willing to be the same. We want it all in the long run, they want it all today. My father is really awesome, don't bother with giving snakes. Regardless, I can't control it, so either way, giving thanks. Yep, you could take that one to the bank. A leader without a rank, a speaker without a face, a people without a race. They eat him without a taste, they scheme him without a safe. The meanings have been replaced. Another time, another place, we could talk about it. Keep some oil in them lamps, don't get caught without it. Want them once, want them twice, then never talk about it. If you never get a second chance, then that ain't meant to happen. What I understand is you ain't trying to understand. Take a hundred, hundred grand, then a hundred undergrads. Pay them all to make a plan, but they couldn't comprehend what it means to. To never die, but somehow still be born again. It's a letter to the people, I'm penning it like I'm Paul. It don't matter about the evil, it matter about the God. It don't matter about the weapons, it matter about how you want. All that matters is the weather, and whether to bet the farm. Mm. <laughs> it's a cow. It's a cow. I see you get a new uncle tonight. Tonight, baby, tonight. It's a cow. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Paul. Good guy. Good guy. Man, and then you guys were saying it earlier, but did you hear about the uh did you hear about the real life one piece? <laughs> Do you guys know what's going on? It's my birthday. It's not my birthday, but but thank you. Real life. You guys know the one piece? No 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 not the live no real life. It's happening in real life. The One Piece story is happening in real life. Oh, y'all didn't know? So there was that Vietnamese billionaire. And he like defrauded the government out of billions of dollars, right? Yeah. And he pretty much said there's $24 billion missing. And he said it's out at sea. So there's literally people in Vietnam the last couple of days, just flocks of boats going out into the ocean looking for $24 billion. Mm-hmm. No, I think it's $24 billion. This is why my seller isn't responding. Maybe. Could be, man. People are going for the treasure. I'm down if you guys are down. It's the real life one piece. Oh, maybe. Maybe it's like USD. It's 24 mil. I don't know. I don't like the ocean either. I feel you. I'm not. I like looking at it. It's great to look at, but I don't like. Using it as a means of travel. That's insanity. What do I look like? A pilgrim? Am I going <laughs> to use a boat to travel? I do want to go on a ferry, though, just so I could drive a car on there. Remember the Lambos? I do. That was our shot, too. A little maritime law. Maritime law is insane. It's a trip. Is this market Armageddon? No, nah, it's the same thing that happened when we went above 4.5. So it's bittersweet, and I say that because, like, I'm, like, kind of happy, but I'm not. But, like, I'm happy that the market – I'm, I'm glad it did what it should have done at 4.5. Does that make sense? So I don't like that it actually, like, went down, and I'm not, like, happy that the market's going down per se. But I do, uh, I do like that the market – you know, subtly it responded to this. So it did the same thing last time we were around here. It's a, it's a pretty key level. So I do think that is, uh, that's the good, that's the good thing I got out of it, but we're just doing the same August, October thing. 
So if rates keep climbing over the next couple of months, whether it's data or it's uh, earnings, who knows, Fed speakers. But till then, I mean, if that moves any of that around, if the rates keep climbing, I think we'll we'll keep going down and keep having it'll be hard for the market to go up. That's what I was telling you guys. I was just that's why I'm glad it, it ended up being correct. But it seems like ever since we got above 4.5, it's very hard for the market to go up. Uh, and, you know, and that's kind of been the story. So it's either rates go down or mar- or if rates keep coming up. I think we'll still have pressure. Eventually, the market will get a little bit of relief. But for now, I mean, the rates are not I just I don't think it's favorable. And spies coming back down here. So you kind of got a little fee. You went a little lower on Philo than bounced. And then we wrapped up Philo, and now you're right. Perfect timing. We got Philo out the way, and now we are tuned in right here at the lows. This is lower than yesterday. So, again, another new low of the month and week. If we drop here, this will be five consecutive down days. This will be the most consecutive down days since the beginning of the year. Fly from the 5,004. Is Mr. Crazy Pad jumping with the rate cut, no rope? Even when the interest rate's high, I won't cut. Even when inflation low, I won't cut. Even if it's one, I won't go nowhere. It's nailed to the flow. Okay, I'm sorry. We did that one the other day. I just, I like the, it's 5,007. It was just at 5,004. Netflix, move 1%. I mean, decent amount of dollars, $10 intraday. Swings ahead of uh, and in Hey, Mr. Fed, yeah. tell me where you been, tell me where you been. Inflation's high and it's been rising. It's back again, back again. Hey, Mr. Flash. There's no land. I mean, the market literally as of two weeks ago, I showed, uh, no, wait, that was last week, a week ago. I'm pretty sure the no landing expectations are still predominantly, it's the highest they've ever been. Yeah, I took this screenshot April 14th, so it was that weekend, but literally, or like the beginning guy leading in from here, but like the no landing camp is as strong as ever. Oh, I guess that was as of March 24th, so maybe I'll have to get a monthly update, but yeah, but seemingly within the last 30 days. You have more people believing in no landing scenario than than anything else, and then more than ever. Market is following oil. Oil, that one's going to be interesting. Cause there's still time till the election, but even then, like I told you guys, I told you guys from the get go, if we uh, if we have high oil during a rate cut, that's that is what we don't want to see. Any time or any time we cut rates and then or afterwards, that's the thing. If we cut rates and oil goes lower, we may dodge a bullet. But if we cut rates and oil still like is at these prices and goes higher, I do think that is going to be a just a shit show. No landing scenario means the economy does not slow down at all. And then inflation just like moderates, like kind of just stays sticky, but like low. And then the economy just keeps booming. And then just no economic pullback while no hit to growth or anything. If, even if anything, growth expands while inflation is either stable or slightly up.
Blue seven. I mean, isn't that the last time gold went crazy? Yeah, it did. Gold went, remember, 05, 05 to like 07. Gold went 500 to 1,000. No, it's still like 08. So three years. And then it sold off a little bit. And then after they crashed, it just went ape shit. Hard landing, abrupt downturn. Severe economic consequences, soft landing, controlled slowdown managed by policy measures, no landing, continuous steady growth, no need for intervention. Source, chat GPT. There you go. It's accurate. Gold, gold's up 18% on the year, 7.4% on the month, <laughs> and then gold is up 487% in 20 years, 86 in five years, that's not bad. You got four Costco bars at 23. Is this like, did you just buy gold this year? Welcome. Was a new Goldie born? I wonder how many gold bugs Costco b birthed. I wish I bought more. You're not going to sell it. Don't, unless you do. People apparently are going to pawn shops to sell their gold now. There's been an uptick in people selling gold jewelry. Now that the prices are topping. Biden live at campaign event. Are you guys ready for the election? Are you guys ready to vote for Biden? You guys are all voting for Biden, right? That's why. That's why you want to watch it. I like this guy. I like the fake Joe. Other Hill. foreign ministers or oh, I need um, to go grab me uh, an earnings might preview. have. I will let their governments He's sassy, uh, comment on that specifically. Um, broadly, oh, we are continuing to. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, what about uh, both of them? I'm just, but... Yeah, listen. I you mean, us win Pennsylvania. Yeah, fuck Pennsylvania up. Jerry, I. That was. That was the most meaningful introduction I've I'm ever gotten. Voting for in the my old life. one. <laughs> Other than my sister introduced me. And I want to thank you for your friendship well beyond the introduction. It's an incredible honor to receive the endorsement of your family, and it means so much to me. Your mom, Ethel, whom I spoke with on the phone uh, a couple weeks ago, well, I guess last week, to wish her happy birthday. She's always been so gracious to my family during the most difficult time of my life. She's done so much for the country and the world in her own right. And of course, your dad, who I never got to meet. I just missed him. He was a senator from, Syrac from uh, New York. He came up to Syracuse University and spoke, and I waited in line, and I didn't get a chance to physically meet him. I never got, but he inspired me, and his passion and courage inspired my generation. Like millions of Americans, I remember that night on April 4th, 1968. I was finishing law school at Syracuse University when we heard Dr. King had been assassinated. The pain and the outrage sparked riots and despair all across the country, including in my home state of Delaware. And then we heard a familiar voice I'd listened to many times. Your dad, Bobby Kennedy, standing in the back of a truck in Indianapolis, asking for peace and quoting one of his favorite Greek poets. He said, and I quote, even in our sleep, our pain, which cannot forget, falls drop by drop upon the heart until our own despair, in our own despair, against our will, comes wisdom through that awful grace of God. I had a hard time to believe that day that there was any wisdom. 
trying to work out from despair where, where we'd go. It was even harder to believe this two months later on June the 5th. I just graduated from law school, earned an incredible and learned about an incredible man later that night had been assassinated. Yet another tragedy, your family, and a gigantic tragedy for the country. Only two political heroes I had growing up were gone within a month of each other, months of each other. We faced a real inflection point as a nation. When I returned home to my city, Wilmington, one of the city's only cities since Reconstruction to be occupied by the military, the National Guard, with drawn bayonets on every street corner for nine straight months following Dr. King's murder. When I graduated that summer, I went home to take a job at one of the oldest law firms in the state. But after only a matter of months, I left that law firm and took a job as a public defender because I wanted to be more engaged in the effort. I went on to run for the county council for the United States Senate and then as vice president of the United States. I've done so in large part because I thought that's something your dad would have done. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating that. It's always been on my mind, and one of my heroes. Today, I sit behind the resolute desk where President John F. Kennedy once sat. And as I look from the desk, if you've ever taken a tour of the White House, I sit in that desk and I look in front of the fireplace. To the left is a bust of Martin Luther King. To the right is a bust of your dad. And I remember, keep, keep looking and remind myself what they would do in tough calls. The principles Bobby Kennedy embodied were principles taught by my grandparents and parents around our kitchen table. And that's not hyperbole. That's a fact. My dad said everyone's entitled to be treated with dignity and respect no matter what their station, no matter what. And they thought I was taught the worst sin of all. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. The worst sin of all was the abuse of power, physical power, economic power, psychological. That was the worst sin of all abusing power. And we have an obligation to each other to leave no one behind, to give hate no safe harbor. It's up to all of us to preserve and protect the very idea of America. You know, we're unique. We're unique in American world history. We're the only nation founded on an idea. Every other nation in the world is founded on geography, ethnicity, race, religion except us. Think about it. The idea was we hold these truths to be self-evident. But all men and women are created equal in the image of God, deserve to be treated equal throughout their lives. We've never fully lived up to it, but we've never walked away from it. We've never walked away from it. And we're not going to walk away from it now. Today, we face another inflection point in history. The 2024 election is about two fundamentally different visions of, for America. Donald Trump's vision. Yeah. Boeing of aims anger, to hate, bring flying cars to Asia by 2030. He embraces the insurrectionist of January the 6th. He's running on it. And as mentioned already, he promised to be a dictator on day one, his own words. And he called for it. Oh, you know he means it. And he calls for another bloodbath when he loses again. Look. Why did they clap to that one and boot family, to the first the one? That makes no has sense. endured such violence denying <laughs> oh, January 6th and whitewashing what happens. It's absolutely like bloodbath. Yeah. I have a very different view of America. One of hope and optimism like I hope all of you do. Optimism that Bobby Kennedy embodied. I see America where we defend democracy, not diminish it. I see America where we protect yeah, our freedom. Yeah, I don't. The bloodbath comment away. is taken out of context. And I see in America where the economy when Trump grows said bloodbath, he was mentioning, I think, China up. EVs. And that way, was the, the context. Class does well and the poor He's talking about the EV industry. And where health care is a right, not a privilege.
By the way, all the stuff we've done so far, we've done it, and guess what? We've cut the budget by a lot of money, $172 billion so far. So don't tell me it can't be done. I see a future of the planet. We save the planet, as this guy's busting his neck doing, from climate change, literally. Climate crisis in, in America. And we've got to do something. The idea we send our kids to school, teaching them to duck and cover. Think about that. The idea the United States of America, well, duck and cover school. More kids being killed by gun violence than almost anything else. Folks, the America we're building is significantly that we're going to get it done. And now it's time to keep going and not slow down because there's so much at stake. Let me close with this. I know Bobby Kennedy liked Greek poets, and they're great, but I prefer Irish poets. <laughs> I know it's not a joke, unfortunately. <laughs> My colleagues used to always kid me for quoting Irish poets on the floor of the Senate. They thought I did it because I'm Irish. That's not the reason. They're the best poets in the world. <laughs> the one I enjoy particularly is Seamus Haney. He wrote a poem called The Cure at Troy that reminds me of the courage of Bobby Kennedy, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, and it goes like this one stanza. It says, History teaches us, do not hope on this side of the grave, but then, once in a lifetime, that long for tidal wave of justice will rise up and hope and history rhyme. In 2024, we have a chance to make hope and history rhyme again. Are you ready to do that with me? Are you ready to move forward, not back? Are you ready to choose unity over division? Dignity over demolition? <laughs> choose truth over lies. Are you ready to choose freedom over democracy? Because that's America. Yes. <laughs> Folks, I've been doing this a long I know I look like I'm 40, but I've been doing well, this a long time. There's yeah. someone in that fake crowd or like right next to the future. <laughs> He's pissing me off. Just to remember who we are. Okay, I'm trying to stretch the here. United States okay, I got the pre previews. I'm only, I, I'm only, we got a couple of them. Think about it. I'm going to tell you what I did with them. I don't have the screenshots, though. That's come out of every crisis stronger than we went in. I think he did say freedom There's over nothing, democracy. Nothing beyond our capacity. I don't know what do that means, together. but... God Fuck bless yeah, you dude. all. May God protect our troops. May God bless you all. Beers? I don't want to know. I can't do that. Give me a water. Thank you. Brady Rios. Starting now. Good. They're going to get him, Joe. Dude, there are some weird, like, ad libs. That's what I was saying. That's what I interrupted. I was like, someone's next to the mic and their ad libs just kept coming in and then their weird little laugh. People bro, they applauded at bloodbath. I forgot the first thing he said. They're like, he's a threat. He's going to take away your democracy. And they're like, boo. And my opponent said that he'll make a bloodbath if he loses. They're like, yes. <laughs> I'm confused, but all right. All right. It was just hard to like. I don't. I didn't know the crowd I was not following the crowd's vibe. Like I would. I think they all were confused. They appl They applauded at when he loses again. Oh, maybe. Maybe they that slipped by I me. Mean, I swear, all I heard was bloodbath, and then they started clapping. I was like, man, I'm so confused. They were just. 
just not okay with the democracy and then freedom over democracy. But that wasn't bad. Yesterday, like, you know, we made our jokes, but, like, people noticed it. <laughs> like, yesterday at the end of that speech, and people were like, what do you, what do you mean cannibals? Like, what are you, what are you saying? Yeah, you're hilarious. Hey, did you like the video or are you just... Where you're just taking in from the middle out and not, not supporting. Come on. Pay your fair share, DP. DP Jan. Come on, pay your fair share. Everybody in here liked the video. You got hard 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 working men and women. And they like the video so they could get on stream. They wake up in the morning. They get on they get on in the morning, six AM, they do the pledge. You know, good people. And they like the video. Where were you? Why were and you can need guys like you walking around not liking the video. Huh? I'm fine if you want to make a day trade. Fine. You want to fucking, you want to fucking buy GameStop. That's okay. Not, don't really judge you. But, but like the video. You know? Yeah, there you go. Pay, there you go. Pay tithe. Not a tithe, though. Not to fucking go, go help someone. I mean, or fucking donate to the campaign. Peep crisper. I love crisp. Have you ever had a crispy crunch bar? Those are fucking awesome. I love them. Fucking crispy. Oh, oh, it's going crisper. I think I'm stuck. Damn it. Anyways, I was just killing time to give the stream alerts guys some time to get in here. It's preview time, ladies and gentlemen. So we're doing it a little different this quarter. I'm going to require you guys. It's kind of like a pop quiz. So I'm going to go over the previews for you. I didn't do the screenshots, and here's the deal. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe you may not like this. Maybe you may like it, but I'm going to try to whittle down some of the plays. So even then, we did good last time. I need to give you guys the update still. I think I could give that to you. Or I could do that tonight, actually. Maybe we could do it live. We could go over what happened at the last earnings for all of the option plays, but essentially uh, I, I'm only going to go over the previews where I think the stock can like move or if it's not, I'll go over like the earnings previews, but the ones I'm going to go for, I'm really only going to go for the plays that are not pricing in a lot. So if it's pricing in too much, I'm probably not going to take it. Uh, and that's uh, sadly a majority of all of them. But that being said, we're going to go over the previews. I'm going to go over some of their past performance. And then I am going to go over what is priced in. And then it will be on you to determine the play. I may make a play. I will tell you if I make a play, but I'm not going to tell you what play I did. Because if it follows the strategy, I am going to assume that you know how to calculate that and that you're following along and you're not just blindly following a play. So that being said... Uh, you still shouldn't gamble. I do hope, uh, we get a limited amount of gambling here, but you know, money that you need is cursed phrase of the year, man. These plays are all going to be low probability if they are two standard deviations. So don't go too crazy, but get information. And once you know what's priced in, you're locked and loaded, my, you're locked and loaded, my, okay, okay. Let's get to the first one, my Netflix, huh? Netflix, my. Okay, you guys say you're canceling Netflix. Okay. You can't cancel it twice, buddy. Huh? <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm having too much fun. Did I not get Netflix? I swear I had Netflixes. Well, I guess I don't have Netflixes. Oh, man. Okay. I have analyst previews on Netflix, too, so I might be able to get you a little bit more. So Netflix, uh, they are expecting 9.27. I should screen. This one just needs two screenshots, though. But we'll have this one screenshot because it'll be important. CRISPR is still running. God just told you to stop giving money to your ex. Curse money don't make money. Why do you give money to your... Give me money. What the fuck? 
I'll cheat on you if you give me money. What do you, what do you mean? Don't work like that, son. That's crazy. It's me, your ex. Hey. All right. You like the video? Good. Thank you. Hey, yeah, that's what we're looking for. Netflix to five fifty. If it does bad, probably. <clears throat> All right. So I have two of these. So Netflix, they are expecting nine point two monthly for the X. Got it, baby. Let's go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See, I I love you though. We didn't break up yet. But revenue expected to be nine point two seven billion versus guidance of nine point two four. So analysts think they are gonna be higher than the higher guidance that they guided into. Operating income expected to be two point four two billion versus guidance of two point four two. Operating margin of twenty six one versus guidance of twenty six two. So analysts think margins a little tighter. EPS four fifty one versus guidance of four forty nine. Total paid memberships expected to be two sixty four. Paid net additions four point five four million. Uh, sequentially, but up to first quarter. 1.8 paid monthly average revenue 11.79 and then that's all the segments i will save my voice on the segments price history since last quarter january 24th netflix is up 12.4 smp is up by 3.4 and xlk is up by is down by 2.1 netflix uh, is pricing in eight and a half percent move on near-term options, last four quarters, gain of 11, gain of 16, loss of 8, and loss of 3. Revenue has beaten 10 of the last 20 quarters with 3 in line. EPS has beaten 13 of the last 20 quarters. Forward quarter revenue has beaten 5 of the last 20 quarters with 1 in line. Forward quarter EPS has beaten 9 of the last 19 quarters. So, this says they're pricing in a decent amount. They've moved higher than that the last two. They've kind of 50-50 in terms of beating in guidance. I mean, actually, guidance history is pretty poor, and then they are outperforming the market. So, Netflix. 52 dollars. Let's see if that's correct. Twenty-five plus twenty-eight. That's fifty. That's fifty-three eighty. That's fifty-two. I have fifty-three eighty. We'll do fifty. Fifty-three bucks. So fifty-three. Then unless I did the math wrong, let me try. Twenty-five sixty-five plus twenty-eight twenty-five. Yeah, no fifty-three. Yeah. It moved a little bit. So we'll go at 53. So $53 looks to be priced in, give or take about a dollar. 53 divided by the price of the stock, 607, 8.7. .7. So the market maker believes that Netflix will move $53 in either direction. So 8.7%, $53. So if you wanted two standard deviations, I think you could assume the next step, take $53 and then boop. Yeah, that'd be like, still expensive you can't follow the train of thought uh, did you watch the video in the description because we have the tutorial it's called pricing and options but you just watch me add them up when I pull out the calculator we added the 26 and we added the 27 we gave you like 5390 it's close here, so I just used in between that number and this number to get 53. And then that's $53 priced in because that's what they're charging for a break even if you played both ways. If they thought the stock would move more or less, they would charge you more or less for that. 
So then that's how you know what the market maker is expecting because it expires by the end of the week. So that's tomorrow pretty much, next two days. So yeah, these are still expensive. I mean, even to the downside. One standard deviation, I mean, you're still 50 bucks below. 800 for a put. I did notice, I think I noticed this last time. No, it's still kind of there. If you play the weekly, the pretty much two days left on the contract, that's the only way the plays become somewhat like reasonable for two standard deviations. But then you only get one day of time for $100, which is still like wild. So that's Netflix. And then, like I told you guys, uh, the earnings, I think I have one more. <clears throat> but again, people are looking out for total subscribers, ads, and then international. <clears throat> so analysts generally upbeat heading into Netflix Q1. Uh, sixty-three percent of analysts uh have a buy rating, uh, thirty-three have a hold rating, four percent have a sell rating. The average price target is six thirty-three, according to the latest data. Analysts looking at potential for continued subscriber growth, bu buoyed by initiatives such as paid sharing policies, also seek insight into expansion of advertising business, margin trends, and the dynamics of core member growth. Company's content strategy will also be in focus, including restructuring of film division under new leadership and efforts to monetize and expand AVOD tier, uh, the advertiser. Some wait for a potential stock price pullback before adjusting their view, but overall sentiment is positive with factors such as sustained subscriber momentum, international expansion, and potential ventures in sports programming, licensing deals, and balanced content sales seen as a contributing factor to future profitability and margin growth. Um, I think there's one more. Is it too late to get the spy? You could do anything you like, my brother. I mean, it depends what you're going for. We don't really have data. You're just playing the earnings. Oh, no. I didn't see anything in your email, Troy. I thought there was one more, but... That's big tech with earnings. Yeah, so that's Netflix. I don't think I'm going to make a play. So, again, it's pricing in $53 for one standard deviation. Maybe we'll come back to it. I'm sure everyone's going to ask. But I think analysts are positive on it, but it's just all going to boil down to subscribers or not. And all the other factors. I don't think I'm going to play Disney. So the next one is ISRG. So this one, I didn't really want to do it. Uh, again, I don't have a screenshot for you, but this one has moved pretty big in the past. My only problem with this one, it's pricing in a decent amount compared to how it moves. It is at all-time highs, though. So that is the good part. But ISRG... Uh, they're expecting $1.87 in revenue, non-GAAP gross margin of 67.2, non-GAAP operating margin of 31.5, EPS of $1.42, DaVinci Systems 299, full-year guidance procedure growth 13 to 16% year-over-year, gross margin 67 to 68%, OPEX growth of 11 to 15 of net revenue, and CAPEX of 1 to 1 $1.2 billion. Since last quarter, January 23rd, they're up 1.9, SPY is up by 3.8, XLV is down by 0.9. Near-term options imply 6.1% move. Last four quarters, break-even, loss of two, loss of three, gain of 11. Revenue has beaten 16 of the last 20 quarters. One in line, EPS has beaten 17 of the last 20 quarters. So this one, I'm not the biggest fan of it uh, just because it hasn't moved at all in a year, uh, but it's pricing in 6%. If it moves big, this thing could easily move 10. But if they don't, it's going to do nothing. So this one, you got to kind of have an idea of if you think ISRG is going to pop. 
Mm. So this one, I think, is a real roll of the dice, but high potential. It's probably going to be really expensive. Damn, these are a thousand bucks. So twenty-one. I'm getting twenty-two thirty. That's twenty-one eighty. So we'll go with twenty-two bucks. It's twenty-two dollars. That's what I got by adding up the strike prices, divided by the price of the stock. And again, that twenty-two dollars is right here too. It says 21 here. This one says 21.8. I got my own calculation. I'm in the middle pretty much, but that's generally the same number. Should produce a similar result. It's not too far off. But then we're going to take that $22 divided by the price of the stock. And that leaves you with 5.8. So that's not a lot. That's really not a lot. But the thing about it is that it's, uh, what's it called? The thing about it is that if the stock doesn't have like data, it's not going to move. So like if they don't really have anything surprising, ISRG for the last three earnings has totally been chill with going absolutely nowhere. So that's what you got to look out for. I had two standard deviations to play it for less. The stock is expensive, but to play this for less than $100, I mean, you'd have to go well, almost three standard deviations out. Let's see to the downside. Uh, the puts still still expensive. It's pricey. So I think I'm gonna. I think it was cheaper last time. I feel like I played ISRG. I don't know, but that's that don't have a. You know, you can't get that cheap, Habibi. And then Spy, you hit a low not too long ago. Still bouncing off that. So that's ISRG. Next one, PPG. This one's actually interesting. Are they is PPG paint? Aren't they like materials? I don't think they were pricing in too much, but PPG. Uh, they're expecting four point four three billion in revenue, operating income five ninety four point nine million, EPS of a dollar eighty six to a dollar eighty to a dollar eighty seven. Uh, full year guidance EPS eight thirty four to eight fifty nine, excluding items. Uh, corporate expenses three twenty to three forty million. Net interest expense ninety to a hundred million. Restructuring savings thirty five million incremental. Tax rate twenty three to twenty four. Since last quarter January eighteenth, PPG is down six point nine. Spy is down is up by five point nine, and XLB is up by eight point nine. Near term options imply four percent move. Last four quarters loss of two. Loss of three, break even, and break even. Revenue has beaten 14 of the last 20 quarters with one in line. EPS has beaten 17 of the last 20 with one in line. Now, you work in the paint industry? How is it? Give me the PPG insight. Because they just don't move. So, again, PPG is underperforming. Underperforming on the year. They don't really move on any of their earnings. Uh, and that's about it. They just have to have good guidance. It's not even pricing in a lot. So 320 plus 570, that's what, 590? It's 570. We'll go 580. So 580 divided by 134, 52. Oh, that's 4.3, I think. Yeah, 4%. It's not bad. Again, the thing just doesn't move. So the market maker thinks that PPG will move 4.3%. Sherwin-Williams where it's at. 
but is PPG good? Is it like, are they going to do, is the, is the paint industry looking good or what? What do we say it was priced in? 538? Or no, 580? So that's one standard deviation. Where's this optional? ISRG, PPG. Everybody in the PPG. Well, the premiums came up on some of the out of the monies. This one, it just needs to hit. That's all. It's tough. It's you could play it for less than a hundred dollars. Two standard deviations. So this one is if you believe in the paint. If you believe PPG. If this is their earnings to move, they haven't moved in a year more than 2%, but then they are underperforming. So that's the good thing that they have. They're underperforming the S&P on the quarter. BPG. All right, we'll come back to that one. I like I like it, but let's see what else we're working with. Can you mark it? I put my thing down. Flip it, then there's wall. I don't know. Regional banks, I'm going to skip it. They, I have the preview, but that one, I'm not playing. I think it's pricing in like 16 or something. That's just if you want to gamble on the regionals, then MCB, Pine, Bladex, SPFG. Then we're going to go to the morning AXP and Procter and & Gamble. These were hitters last time. So, American Express. Again, this is their all-time high, I think. American Express, they're expecting $15.79 billion in revenue. Non-interest, $12.13 billion. Provision for losses, $1.3 billion. EPS, $2.95. Full-year guidance last uh, uh, since last quarter, or full-year guidance, twelve sixty-five to thirteen fifteen. Revenue growth, 9 to 11%. Price history since January 25th. American Express up 16.1. S&P is up by 3.2. XLF is up by 2.8. Near-term options imply a 5.3% move. Last four quarters, gain of 7, loss of 5, loss of 4, loss of 1. Revenue has beaten 12 of the last 20 quarters with 1 in line. EPS has beaten consensus 14 of the last 20 quarters. So AXP. Two seventeen, we'll use the two twenties, ten ninety five, eleven twenty, eleven thirty, we'll go with eleven bucks. $11 priced in for American Express. So the market maker thinks they will move $11 either direction. 5%. Cool 5%. It's kind of high considering their last earnings was big and that was 7. Mm -mm. Oh, it's expensive, BB. I guess it's not too bad. What did we say? It was $11 priced in? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was 11 bucks, right? Yeah.
So it's going to cost you just under 100 to play it. They moved a lot, but then again, Discover. If Discover didn't do bad, I don't think... I really don't think AXP will do bad. But AXP is outperforming a lot. There's a lot of meat on the bone for AXP. Like, if you really think the market is going to turn down, I would play AXP. Maybe get more time. But generally, <laughs> other than that, that's just, it just has meat on the bone. It's just under $100. I'm going to burn one. And then... The final one of the day, baby. Procter and Gamble. And believe it or not, are you ready for this, Chad? Are you ready for this? I already made a play on it. I kind of told you, but I didn't. I put it on the watch list. And then this morning at 942, I bought it. But then you guys didn't like the video. So I told you I bought a play that was on the watch list, but I didn't tell you what I bought. It ended up being a Procter & Gamble pre-earnings play. I could either hold it or sell out of it. But Procter Gambling. Let's see what we got. So they're expecting 20.43 billion in revenue, organic growth 3.4%, gross margin 50%, operating margin 21.6, EPS a dollar 41, full year guidance, uh, core net EPS 8 to 9 percent year over year, or 6.37 to 6.43 a share, revenue growth 2 to 4 percent year over year. Since last quarter, Procter Gamble's up 5.5, S&P is up 4.1, XLP is up 2.0. Near-term options imply 2.7% move. Last four quarters, gain of four, gain of three, gain of three, gain of three. Revenue has beaten 17 of the last 20 quarters, and EPS has been has beaten 18 of the last 20 with one in line. Wow. So how much time we have? We still got an hour and a half. But yeah. I made a play on them. I don't know. I'm probably going to sell out of it, though, before they report. So they don't move a lot on earnings. They're not pricing in a lot. 444? Yeah, 450. We'll go 450. So $4.50 is what the market maker thinks. Procter and Gamble will move. So 2.8%. That's nothing. It's literally absolutely nothing. Wow. It's really not bad at all. But again, they're just not supposed to move and they're like slightly outperforming. Price at one fifty six. Yeah. I mean, the puts aren't the puts and calls are cheap. Two standard deviations. It's just a matter of if you think, do you, I mean, going back to last earnings or not, or if they break. Actually, I think I might hold it. So I don't know how you want to do this because I don't know. I made it. I did make a play in the morning, but I didn't make it now. I'll tell you, I only went on the call side. So I did two standard deviations exactly on the call side. I grabbed two of them. So good luck. But that's it. I think that'll be my only play, Procter Gamble. We're going to go two for two on Procter Gambling. Find out on the next episode. All right. I think that's it. Any questions? 
I think that's all the earnings. I'm not going to do SLB. But if you're in the oil, that could be all you. If you want any of the banks, there's Fifth Third, H Band, Regions, Legions, Lake Band. There's all Regions, Legions, all these banks. I did law, uh, call earnings to standard deviation, Procter Gamble. Uh, TSM, I don't have any place. I didn't. I was gonna go for one, but even this morning, it was kind of weird. It didn't even look good for the continuation. Amex, I didn't do Amex, but it two standard deviations is below. It's like seventy five bucks, I think. So it's kind of expensive. What strike price? No strike price. I'm going to assume you figure it out with the information presented. So the stock is pricing in $4.50. That's one standard deviation. So I did two standard deviations. NBA, ESPN, Warner exclusive TV rights talks end on Monday. Hmm. Oil, I don't know if you asked me earlier or somebody did, but I think it's very precarious here. It could threaten a lot of things, but oil could easily go up another twenty, thirty dollars as much as it just as easy as it could go down twenty or thirty dollars. But Chad, eleven thirty, move your body around. I'm gonna go pee. We've wrapped up earnings. Only one play. Very limited to start off this season. I might play Netflix is right after the bell. So I could play Netflix after we get that. So that could be good. So we'll be good to go. We'll be good to go. But I will BRB. I will BRB. Um, how they're feeling about people in, in general, like consumers right now. Mm -hmm. This could be one of the first things to, to go. To cut if, back? Yeah, if consumers are cutting back in this environment. So... Um, you know, regional differences really matter too here. Yeah, that's a good point. Listen, the stock's up 25, almost 25% year to date. Uh, Geetha Ranganathan of our BI uh, team, she's our senior industry analyst covering media, and she writes in her report, her, re her research report, uh, Netflix valuation at 27 times forward EBITDA, no house of cards. And she says uh, that uh, EV to EBITDA multiple, um, more than twice Disney's and four times that of Warner Brothers Discovery. She says it's supported by strong free cash flow, profit profit content, subscriber momentum, and buyback. So she says that valuation lives up to snuff. But again, any disappointment, she says, maybe you could see some selling or some investors might say it's an opportunity. And uh, again, the you know, there are a lot of competitors to Netflix out there, uh, streaming services right now. The big difference between Netflix and the others, well, Netflix is profitable and it has a track record uh, of profitability in recent years. These other companies don't have that yet. Yeah, a lot of overseas exposure and that uh, subscriber, international subscriber is very important, certainly to the company overall as well. Quick check on the markets for you. S&P 500 just down about 16 points. Call that flat on the Dow Jones Industrial Average percentage-wise just down about 35. NASDAQ 100, a decline of 102 points. So that's a decline of about 0.6%. So the biggest decline on a percentage basis uh, on this Thursday. And head of Netflix earnings, which will be key in terms of potentially equity momentum. Oh, well, still to come on the program, it's a problem for the Fed in its fight against inflation. And it's a big problem. More of that on the other side. All right, right now we do want to get an update on World of National News. Back to DC we go and Amy Morris. Amy, all yours. All right, thanks, Carol. Jury selection in Donald Trump's hush money trial has encountered more setbacks. Two seated jurors have been excused, one for backtracking on whether she could be impartial, the other over concerns about whether he was truthful about whether he had ever been accused or convicted of a crime. Attorneys now need to pick 13 more jurors to serve on the panel that will decide the first ever criminal case against a former U.S. president. A day after his brief impeachment trial, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas appeared before the Senate Homeland Security Committee to talk about his agency's budget. Now, committee Republicans returned to the same issues that they raised during his impeachment, like crimes committed by undocumented migrants. Senator Rand Paul. The administration reversed 92 executive orders of the Trump administration. All I can express is disappointment and bewilderment that the Democrats let you get away with it. 
Mayorka says his department has long been denied the personnel and resources to deal with the migrant surge. Guitar legend Dickie Betts, who co-founded the Allman Brothers Band and wrote their biggest hit, Ramblin' Man, has died. Betts was also known for his instrumentals for the Allman Brothers, like their hit Jessica. His manager says Betts died at home in Florida after a year-long battle with cancer. They don't want you to... Alan... downing protein chips and protein protein i thought they were going to give me time to 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 down my protein ahead of power hour because you got to have protein ahead of power hour i'm sure most traders know that you know it's like it goes like double top resistance and then protein before power hour or go is going like the right netflix side. Look at what Warner Brothers Discovery is doing. Look at what our parent company, Peacock, is doing. Look what Disney is doing. First of all, Disney's copying the password cracking, shared, mm -hmm. uh, cracking down on password sharing, just like Netflix did after all that success. Second of all, we're seeing uh, those companies, Warner Brothers Discovery, NBC Universal, start licensing Damn, more content back to Netflix. Uh -huh. Netflix is, if you go on Netflix now, you'll see a lot of content from HBO, Bro, 5, for example. 000. It's uh, right there. That used to be unheard of not too long ago. So Netflix has kind of turned back into this hub of where everyone knows that's where all their eyeballs are. And so the, instead of doing original content, we're also seeing them uh, spend on these more uh, reruns and so forth from traditional media companies as well. So the competition is starting to rely on Netflix because, look, Peacock losing money. Disney Plus still losing money. All these are money losers, and they need to make up that revenue somehow. They're the best, the best name so far in terms of how the company's been able to gain market share. But, Barton, you also say that Netflix could be a sleepy beneficiary of AI. Explain what you mean by that. Sure. Um, you know, if you're looking for a new story in Netflix, you know, beyond page sharing, I wonder about this one, which is, you know, we're hearing a lot of talk about tools like Sora, OpenAI, um, you know, Tyler Perry, uh, was kind of build an $800 million soundstage that he pulled back on because with this type of generative tool, he's not sure you need to have studios anymore. Um, you know, that sounds like that could be a big cost saver. Um, and it sounds like if anyone's really kind of benefit from that, it could be Netflix. So, you know, what I'm interested in hearing them talk about on the call is that. Um, is there uh, over time a real kind of cost reset um, that they could lean into perhaps more than anyone uh, from using generative AI uh, to do a lot of the production work for content. I think that's really important to, uh, point to note, and I'm going to be listening for the same thing on the call because if you think of the way Netflix operates and how it chooses program, they are so data driven. They know what people like to watch. That's why we just see so many repeats of the same theme. For example, like there's just a flood of reality shows. I can totally see them thinking, hmm, maybe if we just ask an AI to create a generic re reality show or something. Uh, I can totally see them at least experiment with that. That's going to be really, that's a really interesting point. It for all comes there. back to data. It, it like exactly. Whether a media company, utility, a technology company, that's the Wish pop the in, tool. They know big pop on Wish, 8%. Martin, final question. Some years ago, there was concern about the bloat in the budget of Netflix for original content. Have they got that in the right spot? You know, I think the, um, yes, I think they're, they're moving in, in a really strong direction there. You know, part of that is, um, you know, they, they learn from experience. Um, part of it is the lessening of the competitive intensity, mm -hmm. um, you know, which uh, Steve Kovac was talking about, that they're able to license content so they don't have to make it all themselves. I think that's very margin positive for Netflix. They're looking at three and a half percentage points or so of margin improvement uh, in 2024 over 2023. Um, and I think that's part of the story there. All right. Barton uh, Crockett, uh, thank you. And Steve Kovac will be waiting with those results with Netflix up about 25% so far this year. See you in a couple hours. All right, he's still ahead. High energy, high reward. Taiwan Semi says an insatiable appetite for AI. All right, well, had to hear a little bit about Netflix. Your first foray into tech earnings. I mean, people are not worried, though. So I know there's always, like, Netflix haters, but um, surprisingly... People are not as worried. And Wish is going insane. Wish is up 11%, 12% right now. I don't have a headline on that. We did go over the earnings preview, yeah. That AI did sound good. Save a lot of money with AI. I never really thought about that. 
we have not been under 5,000 since beginning of February, I want to say. Maybe like early Feb. Yeah, so you first broke above 5,000 the first time was the first week, second week of February. When you went above it, then you fell below it, then went above it, then fell below it, then you went above it, then never looked back. And now we're back down. So you've already filled that. Remember, we were only supposed to move here. So based on what we priced in on the option chain on the week, 1.5 should have taken you to like right here. Or I think like 5.33. So you're 30 points below that. And then we got one more day left in the week. Bloody power hour. We'll find out, man. We got 20 minutes, but it's crazy because today's theme was supposed to be relief. That's definitely what you had in the beginning. And once again, man, before by the end of the day, we're selling off into the low. We oversold yet? I don't know. I, had, I haven't heard that yet. So on the high. Sour hour. Wow. Sad. Dude, wish 13%. No headlines on that. Well, there's Charlie. Netflix faces high bar after $112 billion rally. Well, let's see. Netflix is going to wake up premium. So I'll just tell you now if there is other earnings plays that you want. You may want to get some of them uh, or you wait till right after Netflix because literally once Netflix wakes things up, people are going to start thinking about earnings. Again, it's going to move 8 to 10% unless it's absolutely a dud. Is DJT still up? I was up in the morning. I don't know if it sold with everything else. Oh, no, it held up good. And there's Apple. Nivda, Tesla. Amazon could move a little off Netflix. I think Disney and Roku, those probably move the most off of it. And then w WBD, Para. But Disney, I think Netflix is just a weird one, though. It really, that's why it's like it doesn't have direct sympathies, but... It's like people think about the consumer and it just gets like tech stocks and the NASDAQ a little bit perky. Brent crude settles 8711. Then spy literally we just hit 5001. Maybe we're saving the 5000 for the gap or tomorrow. But you literally just bounced off of that here. We still got about an hour and 17 minutes remaining. Pentagon says ready to respond quickly if Ukraine aid passes. Wish is urging them to vote on some value maximizing transaction. Oh, I didn't. Don't know about that one. White House to offer Riyadh a more formal defense relationship, assistance acquiring civilian nuclear power. White House urges Netanyahu to accept commitment to Palestinian statehood in exchange for Saudi recognition. White House makes fresh push for historic deal to forge Saudi-Israeli ties. That's a lot to unpack right there. So they want... Israel to accept a Palestine statehood and the and then they work with the Saudis. Mm. Sounds big. I mean, watch if oil or cold moves. <laughs> it's all you could do. Well, oil futures just settled. Ueda says there's a chance Weak yen may affect trend inflation and so could lead to policy shift. Yalla, Habibi, there you go. That's good. Starbucks on the high. Kohl's too, remember? They popped. We had a couple of deal stuff earlier today. 
Gold's been going up. May 10th. Yeah, Bank of Japan, Ueda. There's a chance the end may affect policy shift. Flying cars will save both. That's a wild headline. I don't even know. But then again, I mean, people, maybe Boeing's just like, fuck it. Let's take the meme stock route. They're like, we tried to build planes and that didn't work. That's it. They're going to be like new hydrogen, new hydrogen aircraft, flying car, EV, EV, VV plane, clean energy, safety. What? Charger. What? Charger car while flying. With AI. Would you ever fly on an automated airplane? So, like, if AI was, like, you know, just taking over and they made AI airplanes, would you fly it? Or, like, would you fly on it? Hell no. Why not? AI. Luis would. Luis is down. Why not? I've seen yeah, I've seen the Boston the Boston Dynamics robot. I trust him. The wish I think they said wish related to a vote, like a shareholder vote. I didn't have anything. Uh Bank of Japan Ueda explained that March's decision at meetings. Many counterpoints voiced relief. The shift did not cause disruptions in the market. Oh, shit. How many times has your iPhone locked up for no reason? That's fine. You just got to restart it. Hi, I'm your AI pilot. Looks like I shut down. If somebody could come to the cockpit and reset me, I'd appreciate it. Otherwise, your plane will not get to its destination. Thanks. And the passenger to do so will get a free flight credit. Cre credit, 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 credit. Please, cut now, 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 now. Hurry up. Yeah, hey. Yeah. Spirit Airlines. Oh, dude. <laughs> I have to show you guys this commercial. Oh, dude. Hulu. You blame Hulu. Damn, Hulu, bro. I saw this Virgin Airline commercial about, like, and I don't know what they intended, but it looked like a nightmare. It was, like, supposed to be a commercial, bro, and they just have, like, 50 things going on. And they got, like, kids getting bullied on the plane, old people oblivious, bro. Like, you, I don't, has anybody, does anybody see that commercial? Because it looks like the worst flight ever. But apparently it's, it's chill. on it bro oh this guy um almost I'll give it to him for a little why not surprisingly a lot of people are watching this I don't know maybe there is still war tension state of Iran's air defense system in terms of how well integrated it is it's your boy uh, DIA a couple about four years ago had a uh, report him, that came out and they had the S-300. They're fairly well integrated. But for, for, uh, fast forward four years later, do you have any thumbnail assessment of uh, how well their, inter their air defense system is integrated, radar, human observation posts, and missiles? Yes. 
<laughs> yeah. um, you know, uh, for understandable reasons, I can't get into specific intelligence. Clearly, Iran has an integrated air defense system, as you highlight. Um, but um, I, I'm just not able to go into the specifics of, of what advanced capabilities they may have. Uh, and I'm not prepared to do that from the podium. Can you at least, do they have the S-400? There's always been rumors that they may or may not get it. You know, that's pretty sophisticated as a system. Can you address whether they had the S-400? I, I really can't, but thanks, Tony. Chris. Thanks, Pat. If I could just follow up on the uh, F-16 question. Is the uh, training timeline affected uh, by the lack of supplemental at all? Not to my knowledge. Do you have funding, would you need a supplemental to continue funding that going forward for say the next cadre is it so the so the funding as i understand it chris you know in a lot of ways what this is about is uh, enabling us to replenish our own stocks which then enables us to draw down from uh, our own inventory to be able to provide security assistance to ukraine right so that's one piece of it the other piece of course is the usai piece in terms of being able to let contracts to work with industry to provide them with capabilities. Uh, so, you know, on the training front, um, while, while certainly there's a, a budget aspect to that, uh, really what we're talking about here is, you know, working with the Ukrainians, working with the, the air coalition, capability coalition, uh, in order to identify the pilots, to identify which partners are going to contribute aircraft, munitions, those kinds of things. Uh, so the supplemental, of course, is incredibly important, um, but as I understand it, we're able to continue to do some things when it comes to training of pilots uh, with, of course, you know, one of the long poles in the tent being working with Ukraine to identify uh, those individuals who they, they want to nominate for that training. Uh, and, and again, because you have multiple nations involved, the training pipeline has some flexibility built into it in terms of uh, being able to absorb those pilots and train, you know, the numbers that, that Ukraine has. Just a quick follow-up on that. You mentioned uh, looking at munitions uh, among the uh, coalition. Um, uh, has there been any progress on that? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have any updates on that front. But again, you know, as, as we get further down the road uh, and, you know, again, for operation security reasons at this point, I, I can't go into the specifics, but we'll certainly keep you informed. Thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you, General. So on Tuesday, the House of Representatives passed a resolution that deeming the slogan, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, is anti-Semitic and it's you should be condemned. Does the Pentagon have a statement on this passing um, or that slogan and, and whether it's problematic or not? I, I don't. Thanks. Sir. During topic, U.S. and China. So why was the discussion between the Secretary Austin and the Chinese Defense Minister Don Jim held by video teleconference instead of just calling. So which side made the offer to like a video style? Sure. Um, you know, on your latter question, we've been working uh, at the staff level for months, uh, ever since the, the president, uh, President Biden, uh, held his meeting with Xi Jinping uh, to, to arrange a call. Uh, and so oftentimes, uh, you know, in terms of whether that's a phone call, whether it's a video teleconference, uh, that's coordinated between the, the two staffs. The key point here, though, is that they had the opportunity to communicate. Uh, and so, again, we'll continue to look for opportunities to continue communicating in the future. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you, Senator General. Um, regarding to uh, Rafa, uh, when do you expect uh, to have any updates from the Israeli sides about their plan if they want to do an operations, a military operations in Rafah? Well, again, when it when it comes to timelines, uh, that's really a question for the Israelis to address. As I as I mentioned earlier, uh, our discussions continue to be ongoing with the Israelis in terms of what their thoughts are as it relates to Rafa. Uh, again, and it affords us an opportunity to highlight our concerns uh, and our key points, which are that we want to see uh, humanitarian assistance uh, and civilian safety taken into account uh, in going after Hamas. Can I ask another question about another topic um, regarding to the Niger? Um, does there any change to the U.S. military footprint in Niger? And have you seen the reports that uh, the Russian uh, sent some troops to the uh, region there? Um, so would you give me an update about that? Thank you. Um, so our footprint in Niger has not changed uh, at, at this time. Um, and as it relates to, uh, you know, media reports of, of Russian forces, uh, going into Niger. 
uh, certainly aware of those reports, but I don't have any comment to provide. You can go here and then I'll come back. Thanks so much. Um, the US 7th Fleet announced the aircraft transit through the Taiwan Strait one day after the Secretary's phone call with the Chinese Defense Minister. And China criticized this transit through the Taiwan Strait as provocative. Um, so do you have any response to China? And what was the US message by conducting the transits just after the Secretary's phone call with his Chinese counterpart? I'm going to look that the transit was uh, long scheduled. Uh, and as we've made clear on, on multiple occasions, uh, the United States is going to sail, fly, and operate wherever international law allows, and we're going to do that safely and responsibly. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, General. Uh, according to some reports, uh, U.S. forces have deployed a soft security air defense system in Syria and Kurdistan region of Iraq, and the defense system intercepts tons of Iranian missiles and drones the last uh, attack. What do you have on this? Uh, just let me make sure I understand. You're asking if we've deployed defense as some capability in, in, in both capabilities. Syria and Iraq. Um, so, so what I would tell you is I, I don't have any specifics to provide, you know, broadly speaking throughout the Middle East region. Uh, we have deployed air defense capabilities and as part of our uh, efforts to ensure force protection. Uh, as well as to defend our interests and our allies and partners throughout the region. Uh, as I'm sure you can appreciate, I'm, I'm not going to get into any specifics for operation security reasons in terms of uh, particular locations, other than to say that that is a capability that we maintain in the Middle East. Uh, one more question, if you don't mind. Did the Iraqis in their meeting with Secretary Austin last Monday discuss withdrawing U.S. forces in Iraq? Uh, they, they were able to have a discussion about the transition from the coalition, the international coalition mission uh, to defeat ISIS to the, uh, to the um, enduring bilateral security relationship between the United States, Iraq, and other coalition partners. So I don't have anything to announce today uh, in that regard, but, but that was part of the discussion. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Um, can you tell us whether Israel has actually decided to respond uh, to Iran? I mean, at the end of the day, that's really a, a question for, for Israel to answer, right? Um, so, you know, you've seen publicly that they've said they're going to do something. I don't know what that could be or, or what it could look like. Uh, certainly, we are maintaining close communication uh, with our Israeli partners. Um, you know, and, and as I mentioned earlier this week, uh, we do not want to see escalation in the Middle East region, um, but we won't hesitate to defend Israel or our forces if they're threatened. What kind of conversations are you having with, with Israeli officials about this, and do you have a sense that they're listening to your advice? Uh, well, you've seen the readouts that we've put out from Secretary Austin as it relates to his discussions with Minister Gallant. Importantly, I would highlight that he's also spoken to many other leaders throughout the Middle East uh, to get their sense of the situation. And, you know, if you, again, take a step back, uh, ever since October 7th, we've been working very diligently to prevent a wider regional conflict, and that continues to be a priority for this department and for the U.S. government. Uh, we don't seek conflict with Iran. Um, we're going to continue to work with partners to de-escalate the situation. But at the same time, just to be clear, if Israel is attacked, we will defend Israel, uh, and we will defend our forces if they're threatened. So leave it there. All right. Thanks very much, everybody. Appreciate it. Damn, I didn't know they got that good outro music. Well, thank you. Oh, thank you. Good. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Power Hour is here, man. One minute away. The one minute away, and the day has uh, once again morphed and changed shape. Which started off as relief has now slight downside. I mean, we could still go green by the end of the day. I think the spy still there. The Dow is barely red, but and then again that delay there with bonds. This time again, spy barely red, bonds red, but not near into their highs again. And then spy visas on the low again. AXP. We did the earnings previews. There was a couple of plays. I'm only going with the Procter Gambling and then 5,000 and Faup. So Spy is coming back down. The low of the day is 5,001. But still, this is 
going to be five days in a row if we close red and you're still on the cusp of going of getting saved and going green. Mm. Any news tomorrow? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's going to be like Japan CPI and a couple of other things overseas, but like US wise, besides like Fed speakers, there's really not even any like Friday data. So even next Friday, we're going to get like ISMs and PMIs and then end the week with Friday PCE, but nothing tomorrow, believe it or not. Will Netflix beat earnings? I don't know. I've, I'm, you know, I'm kind of tempted to make a play on it, but I don't want to play two standard deviations. I want to play one standard deviation, but then again, the question is, do you think it's going to meet expectations or not? And then don't forget any sort of element of guidance towards members in next quarter. That will be very, very big too. So I don't know. I, but I, I do think Netflix is going to be big. I think it'll start waking some companies up too. But there's a lot going for them. I I'm generally want to say they're going to beat. But then it's it's been a good streak of them doing pretty good. So, and then, oh, yeah, weak foreign currency, strong dollar. Maybe we might start hearing about that again. It's going to dump revenue down 20%. That's a big claim, Benjamin. Benjamin Nickel. Okay. That's a big claim. Your, your W. Google Trends. We'll, we'll see, man. We'll see. I don't think revenue dropped twenty percent. If it did, buy every single cheap put you can. That'd be crazy. Even beats are getting faded, low key. It's early on, but yeah. So, hi, power hour, big candle. There you go. He said, don't count me out. Dow's back in the green. Yeah, I can't keep a good man down. Let's go. I'm back. I'm ready to go. I'm energized. I need a, I just needed a breather. Let me back in there. I told you we're going to come back here end of the day. If you didn't break it in the beginning of the day. I got the power. Oh. Well, you got 50-something minutes left, man. Let's see what happens. That's like your first green shoots in maybe an hour. I don't want to go back in my cage. Fuck you. I'm out. I'm out till November. And they're going to vote me in for four more years. So you know why you can't, you can't stop me. Yeah. Like the video. Go on. Federal Home Loan Bank of Atlanta files 8K. What was that? Direct off-balance sheet financial obligation. Do streaming services show up on the CPI? What do you mean? Like, is it, is it included in inflation? Yes. Uh, it's, I don't know what category, but, you know, if you ever, if you go to the BLS, there's like a big... The big list on every CPI. I think it's in... It actually might be in streaming or like cable or TV or entertainment. So it's borderline just... It's probably packaged in with a lot of other services. Do they ask owners rent? Well, streaming is easily accessible so they don't ask. They're like, okay, if you were going to pay for Netflix, what would you pay? So, like, if you were going to sign up for Netflix, okay, how about this now? 
if you were going to sell Netflix, how much would you charge? How much would you charge if you got to sell the Netflix, but you didn't have to sell it, but you could sell it? Okay, good. Good. And that's how they figure out real estate prices for CPI. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Exactly. It sounds like Mickey Mouse and Peter Pan could have came up with something better, Joshua. Sounds a little bit fishy. Doesn't it take two years for them to gather data? I'm, I'm, I could, I could, I could build a farm and gather a harvest for Thanksgiving faster. Mm-hmm. And I could get Rufus and Roger to help me out. Exactly. My kids are sleeping and they heard you go Mickey Mouse. And they said, Mickey, oh, my bad. <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad. I think Disney calls uh, are usually a good sympathy for Netflix, but there's no guarantee, Habibi. No guarantee. That makes sense? No guarantee. Her -earn. I'll take it. Give him that net. <laughs> I was trying to do it. <laughs> if I blow the, even if I do the voice and go like, <laughs> it's still, the horn doesn't change. Now that's, fair. I wonder, does that mean I can't identify as another horn? <laughs> it doesn't work. Exactly. You have a good, thank you, compound. It's compounding puppish. Compound hound. Okay, I reclaim my time. Have a wonderful evening. Goodbye. Zura. You went to the upside on Procter and Gamble because you've been shaving on the daily. Okay. So you're like, I'm going to increase core growth by 2.2% off of my shaving. That's good, though, man. It's good. Shaving helps you grow a big beard. You know, makes it grow in better. So that's good, man. Keep shaving. And own what you own. You should put it in the long term. I don't know about trading it for earnings off of that logic, though. Excel, you climbing back. No, no concerns on that. I mean, utilities, last time they were up, people were just more using them as recessionary. They got a long, honestly, it's kind of funny. Utilities are down because I'm pretty sure most utility prices are up substantially. J&J, &J, uh, once they come down, they're already a little bit lower. It sucks too. I wanted Procter Gamble low at the beginning of the year. That was one of those plays are like end of last year. We were talking long term, and I was just saying Procter Gamble. That was a great pickup there. So we'll see how they do on earnings. My MPW take, you know, I went over it. You didn't hear anything. I mean, it's good news. Everything's good. Five dollars is a good price to hold. That's a very good sign. Anything above six, it could get squeezy, but it seems like MPW is on track to putting some of the problems behind them. Hopefully. Hopefully, but they've they've sold most of their they've accomplished the majority of their liquidity target for the year by selling properties. Starbucks, I think today was just the first day it ran up. Someone was just asking me about Starbucks. I said I liked it. It was at the low end of the price range. I guess last two days it bounced or it's on the high end of the price range. They report fairly soon, though, I think. But yeah, I think a little late. But it just depends. Depends if their earnings is next week or the week after that. Primerica says short seller claims are misleading. 
I forgot we got that today. Was that PRI? Put it back up. Oh, damn. They bounced? No. Damn, son. Instant bounce. They said short seller claims are misleading. Primerica. 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 They don't. They ain't packing the same punch as Fuzzy Panda. Fuzzy Panda, Kung Fu Panda. Why were you timed out? I think it was because you posted a rocket ship. So we have rules. If you if you ever took the time to read the description, you'll find a host of great things. You'll find alerts. You'll find a watch list for free. You'll find a membership badge. You'll even get some cool gear. You can find my Instagram. It has pictures of me all over it. If I look good, you know, we'll say what's up. And then how to price in options. And then even a prayer request wall. So, but if you, oh yeah, I didn't even show, if you go to the rules. So rule number two, no rocket ships. If uncertain of this rule, avoid rocket ships at all costs. So that's rule number two to avoid them. Mm -hmm. The peach allowed. Well, I don't think there's anything against the peach, if that makes any sense. So you ask if it's for it's not as if it's forbidden, but it's not as if it was, you know. You're the best. Habib Bula. Habib Bula. MPW. DJT's breaking out. And Spy had a little bounce there for the last like nine minutes. MP dub right below five. You've been listening for a while now. You want to say you enjoy your show and make my day. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you. Trading for veterans. And shout out to the vets, baby. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> Just give me in. I hope you guys smile. Hope you have fun. I hope you're informed too, though. I was saying I had that talk the other day. You know, I know you guys might get like a lot of rants. And I'm, I'm a weirdo. I get it. But I'm an informed weirdo. You know what I'm saying? Like... I got you, but like, you know, hopefully as you do spend your time here, um, I hope you guys are getting all up to date on everything, man. I'll get you the war updates. We're going to get you the news updates. We got the earnings now still too, you know, and what's happening with semiconductors out of Taiwan. I thought there's, if they get invaded, I'll let you know, but amen, man. Amen. And I love it. So I appreciate you. But I hope you guys laugh too and have some fun at the end of the day. It's a long, long mission. And we only have 40 minutes left today. Did move a little bit slower, but my goodness, the day is already over, Janetonia. It's already over. Why real estate is the only thing that appreciates, why everything else depreciates. Because, my brother, you don't live in anything else. And, and I, I hope I could get some credit. I hope y'all give me props or credit for... I've always said this from day one with all my crazy bullish real estate theories I've given you over the years is just the necessity of living in something, you know, the utility, not even like you can't create more land, just like you live in it. Nothing else you use in like, you're not even your car is expensive, but you don't live in your car unless you have to. But everything else like food is div like food and energy have different is a different category because it's consumed, you know, but. Just like most things you purchase, product or service, like, can you live in it? And that's why. So, like, don't don't underestimate that demand of people, you know, needing to live. And the use value that we all possess and over time and more humans, it just, it, it, it will never dissipate. That demand, pretty much the demand for housing, it may, it changes, but it never goes away. Whether you're you're five years old or 500 years old. Okay, Moses, if you're Moses and live to 500, you know, that could happen. Mm -hmm. What if you consume cars? Just 
I mean, it doesn't it doesn't void anything I said. It would just change the category of, of what a car is. Cars would probably be cheaper if that was the case, if cars were consumable. If you consume cars and it wasn't a broader economic trend, you would probably have to go to a hospital. But assuming cars were consumable, it would be a cheaper car. So, But then again, and this is it, hopefully that relates why I say cheap and I bring it to price because I'm being asked why prices are elevated when other prices go down. Not just the supply demand and then the supply is low. Demand is ever so persistent to live. Flying cars in 2030. 2050 maybe. I really thought we'd have a lot of crazy shit by 2030. But like newsflash mother like it's almost 2030. You know what I'm saying? Commerce bank shares repurchase program. C B S H Like by twenty thirty I thought we'd have flying cars. All I'm 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 literally gonna have an advanced Tamagotchi called Chat GPT. That's it. Tamagotchis can now be employed. That's all that's all what we're gonna get. To the year is twenty thirty. Yeah, AI pretty cool. Yeah, it's a Tamagotchi, bro. I type in words and he sounds like me. He's a parrot. It literally repeats what I tell him to say. You know? I want my car to go... Vzzz. I wanted a teleporter. I wanted the remote control from Click. I ain't get one thing from any Adam Sandler movie. I ain't get a hoverboard. Are you kidding me? We just got the Apple Vision Pro and that's like debatable I, we stopped talking about it three weeks later i have not heard one headline about an apple vision pro I, I, what happened to that i still want i want to get one but i have not heard about one apple vision pro it was all marketing but if it was marketing we should hear about it more now it's just like nah They need version one to make the apps. Well, we'll see. I still want to try it, but it's been a while now. Options. We trade some options. I mean, for earnings, we trade options, uh, futures, shares, everything, really. We even trade bonds and Fed futures. You only got 40 minutes left, Chad. Not bad. Last day. With IZM? I don't know. It's, what's IZM? I see Zoom. Oh, dude, I have no idea. That looks brutal. <laughs> I'm glad I don't know anything about this. What the hell? So, are they down in the morning? IZM follow through on withdraw of offering prospectus. Wait, what? They said in the securities they're withdrawing their form F1. They're not, the pricing isn't conducive of an offering. So they were going to, the stock gapped up and then they were going to do an offering and then they withdrew it after it dropped.
I don't know why it went up. March 11th. Oh, they did a private placement. And then they were just 13 G's. That's weird. But welcome. Welcome to the market. But yeah, I did not see that one. It was actually on our pre-market movers, though. I think I read that one in the morning. So that's what it showed up on. Tesla. Netflix. High low ticker. Still balanced out. NASDAQ down 0.4. SPY down just under a quarter. Dow is barely green. And the Russell gave it up. No way. Oh, I guess it's still doing better than everything, though. I guess the Dow is. But Russell was doing good. Russell was up like 0.98 at one point. You get tired of the fake pumps. You could take a nap, feel free, you know, wait till the data or wait till PAL or the SCP. I mean, honestly, it is very exhausting, though. I understand, you know, when the bonds and equities lag, it's, oh, it'll tire you out, man. It'll tire you out. A lot of exhausting moves. So hopefully you pace yourself, endurance. You'll be good to go. It feels exhausting. But they, they're they kind of down a lot. Just all, it, I think that's why it's exhausting because the indexes are kind of down a lot. Like they're still up, but then they're like down. So it's and then you're it's exhausting because one, two days, it looks like you're not reacting. And then you end the week where you thought you would be based on the data four days ago. Again, the bonds are literally the days the bonds hit new highs, market rips. And then the next day, the market dumps and then the bond yields retreat. And then even today, bonds are pulling back again, not near their highs. We start off good, and then now we're like barely red. We even we even talked about it. So, it's just wild. Yeah, and potential turning point, extra confused. Because this can wait till there's the bounce. That's what's going to get really confusing. Whenever there's a big bounce, and then that big bounce is either going to turn into a new high, or that big bounce is going to fail. And then you come back again, and then... You're really going to be thinking turning point or not. And then you're going to have everybody double positioned and all that. So get ready. What do you think? September SCP IRA. I'm not familiar. My 30-day hypothetical outlook. Well, what's in 30 days? May? I I wish it's cloudy. Cloudy with a chance of rally just because of seasonality to a degree. Even though people say sell in May, but I think it depends on earnings and the data. But earnings is either going to be, you know, like if, if NVIDIA earnings, chip earnings are all solid. And even tech and everything else is good. Maybe Apple has a comeback. I mean... That'll get things doing good. Otherwise, if earnings are bad, that could get as bad. And then in the next month, I think before, by May 18th, we should get another CPI or jobs, you know. It might get clapped again. I will never know. The crash correction will happen when the yield curve uninverts. It's we're almost at the longest yield curve inversion in history. So I still stand by that. I still believe in that. Not necessarily crash, but it'll be it'll correct. It'll get bad. Or I think you'll finally watch a economic shift. It hasn't been. It's been longer than sixteen or eighteen months now. So again, July of twenty twenty three, was it? Twenty twenty two? Yeah, 2022 was when it inverted on the twos and tens and stayed there. So by this July, I think it'll be two years, and then that'll be the longest it's ever been inverted.
why not stack cash now then? Uh, there's just depends on what's out there because if they're if the yield curve doesn't invert, so think about it, the yield curve if I stacked cash right when the yield curve inverted, I would have regretted it, essentially. So if what happens if the yield curve stays inverted for another six months? And then it just all depends on the value, but I'm not opposed to too much. I'm not opposed to cash, but just not too much. And then I'm just starting to the point where I like the ones that are uh, the names that have value that will looking ahead will hopefully lock them in and pay more than the cash will. BlackRock Rick Ryder says chance Fed doesn't cut rates this year. CNBC interview. Rick Ryder. Uh, have an issue in terms Didn't of net interest margin, uh, commercial real estate exposure, small business and uh, and lower income. You're seeing this in all the earnings numbers and you see this in credit card charge offs, loan delinquencies, auto loan delinquencies. It's creating a pernicious effect on part of the economy that in aggregate, you know, the economy can still move along okay, but it's creating too much pressure on part of it. And that's the mistake that I think is out there, including you got to be careful about residential real estate, which is obviously a huge part of the wealth in this country. So part of why I think at the margin, bring that rate down. You can keep it higher than it historically has been, but I think today it's a pretty for a lot of the economy um, or for interest sensitive parts of the economy, it's uh, the rate is, is too tight. You called the recent inflation prints a, a quote unquote setback. It sounds to me like your your view is a bit shaken by those most <laughs> recent reports that you were surprised. And I'm wondering if in the same light you're surprised to the degree that rates have backed up now. So I would say two parts of that one. You know, we're running, we're running our interest rate exposure. We have been running our interest rate exposure lighter um, because, quite frankly, you can generate income and fixed income in so many different ways. You don't have to take long-end interest rate exposure. I was looking at the aggregate index. Today, the aggregate index is down. After today, it'll be down 3.5%. The long end of the curve will be down about 8%. The front end, because of the carry in the front end, is still actually, the front end is actually moderately positive on the year total return basis because you're carrying so well. So anyway, our view has always has been, certainly this year, keep your yield, keep your income in the in the front end, just carry really well. You can actually still throw off return in that. That being said, your question about, listen, when you got this last CPI report and you looked at the areas, the pervasiveness of the service level inflation, insurance, healthcare, education, transportation services, that is just so sticky high and uh, you know hard to bring hard to bring down auto insurance using the interest rate tool and those are sticky and they're they're just hard to bring down and so you know this i think anybody who's looking at it would say yes that's a setback because we want to get and the fed would like to get rate down but it's uh, you know these numbers can you be a bit more patient it seems like it yeah i mean some are suggesting that the 10 year could go to 5% by memorial day that's been a, a couple of calls from firms this week uh, when you read that what's your reaction <laughs> Given the depth of some of these markets, it feels like uh, that could happen. Uh, you don't need to wait that long. The uh, Listen, wait, it's going to have a lot to do. That, you know, we're in a market today, and I think when we think about positioning and you think about we're in a market today, you've got geopolitical risk, and think about that can happen two different ways. It can shock oil, which is adverse to interest rates. And the other side of it is you've got a big flight to quality, depending on how pervasive or how the risk is perceived around the Mideast. Listen, I think the markets tend to overshoot. And could the bias oh. be towards you hit a, a you know higher rate from where it's not that far from where we are today? Mm -hmm. It's certainly a possibility. Yeah, like I say, I think the way you generate, the way you sit in fixed income There's today, stay shorter on the yield before. curve, and, uh, I don't know. and, and I might you have keep to your talk interest rate now. exposure and, and, and low, but keep your keep your income well, high. By the way, I want to say one one last thing about it. I, I'm always amazed the equity market. Like there's always a level on the ten-year note that determines a good market or not a good market. You, the, when you look at the S&P 500, it's not nearly as interest rate sensitive as it used to be. The interest rate is obviously Indeed. the great discounting rate for the markets, but it's a very different. Look at the S&P 500 versus 20, 30 years ago, where those companies borrowed, hard asset borrowed to finance. The interest rate was a really big deal. Today, we look at the top seven, the mag seven or any of these companies, 
They're not doing a lot of financing. So I'd argue it's much less acute for the equity market than it's been historically. Although people follow it very closely, it's just not nearly as interest rate sensitive the equity market as it used to be. I hear you then then suggesting that your bullish view on the equity market, which you have shared with me on the last couple of times that we have visited here on television, is not shaken at all by this this backup in rates. Is that do I hear that right? You definitely hear that right. I, I uh, listen. I think you know we like others. You've got a man. You know when you've got this big unpredictable dynamic out there, i.e., geopolitical. I think you got to manage <clears throat> manage your risk alongside of it, including going into this volatility was incredibly low. Where the VIX was, we do a lot. We trade a lot of equity options. Volatility is really low. You could manage your risk using volatility really effectively, and so it ha that allows you to de-risk. So we are running less risk, considerably less risk, uh, largely because of volatility and because of some, some positioning around that. Listen, the equity market's going higher. You know, we said, do we wait a little bit in terms of getting through this cloud over the market? The S&P 500, I use this stat a lot, the return on equity, the average return on equity, the S&P 500 is 18 and a half percent. And actually, if you're tilted more to tech, it's closer to 20. Even if you believe the multiple is a turn or two too high, when you accrete, you compound book value of that sort of level. Um, and even if the economy moderates a bit and you bring it down a little bit, that is incredibly powerful. At the same time, there's over a trillion of equity buyback and the IPO calendar is small. So your demand, your buy versus sell is clearly skewed. And then just normal salary and wealth creation drifts into the equity market. And you've got eight to nine trillion of cash sitting out there. So yes, I think I'm, I'm pretty confident equities are going higher. This is not to say we see you know, we don't see a headline or, or what have you that presses us down a bit first. And I think you got to manage your risk around that. Mm -hmm. But um, but yes, I'm, I'm, I'm confident the equity market is going higher. Do you want to continue to lean into mega cap tech, big stocks? Uh, do you believe in the broadening? I know you like energy. You want to lean into yeah. sort of that that comeback, yeah. if you will. So how does that play out? Your, your actual allocation, right? I mean, you, you yeah. are head of the al global allocation team. So tell me where to yeah. lean in now. So first of all, I still think technology is going to take us to a different level. And I think the amount of investment in R&D, the amount of investment in digital is extraordinary. Where do you lean in? I still think, you know, without going through individual names, I still He's think that the max the seven, there are parts of it that are incredibly are, are incredibly you know, return generative people, and will continue man, to throw off crazy. those type of returns as the world becomes more digital. I think the companies that have data and can exploit the data and there are other companies around that are not in the MAG7 are the ones that are going to win. My biggest overweight today is what, I, what we call the quality part of the market. There is, you, you mentioned energy. The companies that are throwing off stable, consistent free cash flow, generally aligned with digital, are the places where, uh, where we like to be. Energy is, is, you know, while we could debate what the price of oil is going to be, when you throw off 10% free cash flow and including some other refiners, there is, uh, it's, you know, those levels are pretty attractive. So and our, we're tilted to tech, healthcare, parts of healthcare, and then, but there are also some great free cash flow generators. Some of the, uh, and you know, there's some opportunities in this market. Like, you know, press down some of the valuations and some really good companies in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I think some of the autos, some of the European autos are interesting. Uh, it's interesting to say today, watching some of the casinos come under pressure. I think there's a couple of names there that, that we're looking at that are uh, hmm. that are pretty attractive today. You know, one thing that's wild about the equity market today, the dispersion is incredible. And so it's presenting some pretty neat opportunity at, uh, across it. Always enjoy our conversations, Rick. Really valuable Thanks, insight Scott. from you. Thanks for spending time with us. I appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Scott. All right, Thank that's you. Black Rock's Rick Reeder there joining us today. Coming up, Coming up, the haves and the have-nots of earnings season. All right, Andres Anker Crawford is back. Two hot takes after listening to BlackRock. Which one do you want first? We could talk war or cash. Which one do you want? War or cash, my friend. War or cash. Which one are you into more? War or cash? You tell me. War or cash, bro. War or cash. Mm-mm. -mm. See, you guys should have seen what you all failed is re to realize is that both of those are the same thing. But uh, but I'll be here all day, which is thirty more minutes. Anyways, I'll start with I'll start with the cash one for you. Then we'll start with the financials for a little bit. So you guys know about that like 
eight or nine trillion dollars sitting in money markets, you know, that cash on the sidelines that everybody talks about. Does that sound familiar? If I said there's eight point nine trillion dollars in money markets sitting on the sidelines, does that sound familiar? Does have you heard a phrase, a headline like that? Are you are you following? Yeah? No, you didn't hear it? Then you just don't like listening because he just said it. The guy just said it, Black BlackRock. Yeah, a little pile of gold. Well, you should look into it. Uh, it's a big, people are saying it's a big reason for, could support the market, right? And that's kind of what I'm saying here is that the assumption is that there's all this money on the sidelines. It's collecting yield. And there's people, the assumption is that this money is going to get into the market or that the market is going to go up and people are going to get into it. But I started to think about it after listening. I'm like, man, what if all that cash on the sidelines, I'm sure we could do a study on it. Like what if it, how many, how much of that cash will never FOMO or chase? Cause I feel like there's a big assumption that people are just going to buy in with that cash on the sidelines. Things are going to do this and that, and everyone's going to throw that money in. But I'm like, man, Every time I see people get, they see mortgages go up or foreclosures. They're just like, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And cash has been on the sidelines for 25 years. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, though, for real. That, that if it goes into those bonds, I mean, it's pretty much what's happening. But, yeah. So that's take number one. Okay? That's take number one. Then are you ready for take number two? I got to bring this one up. Everyone talking about the war. He was talking the war going two directions. He was talking about the war in the Middle East, the war in Ukraine, and leading into problems and problems and problems. It's kind of sad. Are you ready? Because you, you know what I haven't heard? And I'll pray for you all, man. This is how you know it's sad. This is why you should come join my team of Team Pacifism. And you'll you'll hear me out for a second. You know why? Because I have not heard the word peace in a minute. And I'm not saying by the invasion. I feel like there is all these bulls out there for no damn reason. And legit, I honestly would say one of the most bullish things would be like Ukraine war ending. Again, if they come to a resolution, Israel finding a resolution with Iran and Palestine, like, do you, like, you see, dude, when was the last time? Remember, in the beginning of the war, you were like, oh, that, that would be, but nobody, you haven't said that in years now. Ain't hey, nobody bring that up, but like, low key, that would be one of the most bullish things, I feel like. And I, I don't, I think that's a bullish factor. Maybe it's so unrealistic, it, it doesn't even get priced in, but hey. Something to think about. Or at least I haven't heard it in a while. Now I get a vitamin B12. For giving you vitamin B10. You get it? Yeah. Mm There's never peace in war. That's deep, man. I feel you. You know, because you can't be at peace if you in war. Because if you warring, how can you be peacing, you know? Because I can't fight you while I'm loving you. I can't love you while I fight you, you know? <laughs> what I feel. TSM, I think it's good. So maybe they bounce and they have a run up, but I'm surprised. And maybe it's just the rate pressure market environment. Yeah, those da those dailies are cheap too. If you're into that, I don't know. I don't know if you're into that. And remember, TSM does not move a lot. 
I just sped up the speed on my mouse and it's getting kind of out of hand. I did watch Leave the World Behind. I want to watch Civil War. You guys kind of already ruined it for me. You said it's... I didn't even know it's about, like, reporters, but apparently it's about reporters, too. And But I want to go watch it. But, yeah, TSM, you could go for it. It's cheap, but you're still going, like, far out the money. I watched some of Fallout. I watched, like, I think the first episode. Or, like, most of the first episode. It's good. It's good. Civil War underwhelming. Well, I figure I know what the plot is about. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they're going to fool me. <laughs> but you never know. You thought it was going to be about war. Was it not about Civil War? Then that's fucking stupid. I signed up for an apocalypse movie. I thought we were going to get some beef. I thought I was going to see more scenes of Teslas crashing. You know? Everyone's spoiling it. Well, they told me it was about reporters. I have watched Fight Club, yeah. It's a great one. And then MPW didn't have a headline on that little pop. Real estate pre-market. Healthcare outperformed MPW ahead on an upgrade. So MPW got another upgrade. Oh yeah, it was that. The one from yesterday. Maintained at neutral. And then target raised to five at Deutsche Bank. Don't waste your time with Money Heist. The worst show you've ever seen. Wow. That's not what I've heard from everybody. Everybody loves that show. Interesting. Pump it up. Do you guys know what the funniest part is? I don't know if it just ironically worked out like that. But you guys remember, we haven't even negotiated our pump it up level. So ever since we did get, th I gave you the pump it up, but like we never negotiated it. So we don't even have a pump it up agreement in like, and you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like you're now even you're 250 points away from your last pump it up. Wow. He said, oh, I remember. <laughs> Titanic agreement, maybe. Procter Gamble breaking out. Remember, they have earnings tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. We should negotiate the Titanic agreement, maybe. I mean, I think Titanic's at like 4,000. Would you believe me if I said the most exciting part of your day is the closing with the earmuffs? Yeah. I mean, it's probably the most exciting part of my day. I mean, not much tops it, man. Like, if you're really involved, I don't... That shit goes off, man. Shit goes crazy. You hear the great news? Canada getting halal mortgages. We're effed up here. Why is that bad? Why is that bad news? Shit, man. I'll be like, I practice Islam too. Give me that zero interest, dog. They got mad fees though. Don't let them fool you. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with Islamic banking, but you know, it got some benefits, but they they know how loopholes work too, Mr. American. Mm hmm We we see the Western world. So like they you they don't charge interest, but they charge hella fees. So like it's not haram to charge to work. 
You know what I'm saying? But it's haram to charge for interest. <laughs> Payment for order flow type deal? Kind of. There you go. You get it. You're like, oh, it makes a lot of sense. I should have said that from the beginning. Why is interest haram? Because you're uh, making money without working. Like it's making money off of money. Like you're making money off nothing. So that's that's considered wrong. In Islamic culture. I'm not. Muslim. But. Half of the white people are going to assume that. Uh, just because I'm Middle Eastern. But. Yeah. So. Today is chest and triceps in the gym. I look forward to it. I even. I had a protein today. I'm not too sore. But. I'm excited. Hit legs. Oh, no, nah, that's nah. So, Divi Haram. Mm, I don't know. It might be, but I think in general, the dividend is like a shared profit. So, it's like a business venture. You know, you're getting paid off of like something being produced. Like, it kind of makes sense. But it's not like you're. If you're like a, a dividend from like a mortgage re it would prop would be haram. But like it's just generating money off nothing. That's why I like so charging money to lend money, all of that. Oh, Nordstrom's. Hi. Exactly what I need. What is this? Nordstrom Wang Takeover Private. Nordstrom formed special committee to review and proposal. Wang offered to take private Canada seeks foreign grocery store Aldi. Identified 12 target for wait, hold on, check Kohl's too. So big pop there on Nordstrom's and then something on Canada officials identified 12 grocers to target in direct market listed as possible new entries. And then Nordstrom Brothers Wang offered to take department store private. Members of the family that founded Nordstrom are considering a bid to take the company private. This is a lot. And um, we'll have Josh AI. Josh AI. But again, we're already in those shares. I think we bought it two days ago. So we're getting a nice bag. Macy's will pop off that news too. I think it'll just, I'm kind of 20 bucks is the target on here. I think like 20, 20, 80, 20, 50. I didn't go for SLB, no. No, no, no. Smith to move Arizona team and then Nordstrom's near 19. Um, I don't think there's a price announced on it. I was just talking about the people who own it. 
I have an article on there, and we'll play it for you in a second. But no price announced. I'm not. No, I'm. All, I think I'll hold till like twenty. I'll sell around twenty, and then just buy back in when it dips again until the price is announced. That's what I did. Again, I bought it eighteen seventy, then it sold it out at twenty something, then it dropped, and that's it. Members of the family that founded Nordstrom are considering a bid to take the company private as department stores continue to struggle and Nordstrom's rival, Macy's, is under pressure to sell itself. Eric Nordstrom and Pete Nordstrom play the company's chief executive officer and president, respectively, recently told the board they are interested in exploring a deal for the company, according to people familiar with the matter. In response, Nordstrom formed a special so committee new of independent directors to evaluate their potential proposal, the along with those of any other suitors, the people said. The special committee is working with bankers from Morgan Stanley and Centerview Partners. Here are no guarantees the current efforts will result in a transaction. Nordstrom shares have dropped roughly 50% over the past five years, giving the company a valuation of around $3 billion. The company has explored deals on and off for years, including in 2017, when the family tried to take the retailer private with a group that included the private equity firm Leonard Green and Partners. Those talks ended less than a year later after the board rejected their offer as too low. Nordstrom family insiders control roughly 30% of the company's shares. Another significant so owner is Coles. El Puerto de Liverpool SAB, which operates high-end department stores in Mexico and bought a 9.9% stake in the business. In 2022, Eric Nordstrom was named sole CEO of the company in March 2020. He previously shared the co-president role with his brother Pete, a third brother, Blake, who also had been co-president died in 2019 of lymphoma. A group of investors in December offered $5.8 billion to buy Macy's, partly attracted by its real estate holdings. The investors, Arc House Management and Brigade Capital Management, later raised their offer to $6.6 .6 billion and have been working on due diligence. Big box retailer Kohl's was also in talks to sell itself to the owner of the vitamin shop, but the deal collapsed in 2022. Nordstrom sales have declined in recent quarters, partly due to the closure of its Canadian business. Nordstrom operates more than 350 stores in total. Last month, the company offered up a weaker-than-expected outlook for the current year. Nordstrom said consumers are still being cautious with discretionary spending, with one bright spot being an industry-wide pullback in deep discounting, which could help lift profits. Eric Nordstrom said the company is focused on increasing online sales and opening more of its off-price Nordstrom rack locations in the coming years in I see I like Kohl's too again there's something about Aldi but yeah so update on that they made a special committee MP dubs it's above five now so that's again that's optimism towards the deal like I was saying there that's very good. And they have X dividends. So keep in mind, today's the last day to buy. Tomorrow, there might be a little sell event. But if it holds up even after X dividend, and then if you start getting the six, it gets crazy. But keep in mind, MPW, the Divi, where are those options at? Mm. Nordstrom Cafe. Bro, I always see people there, but I never have been to it. Every time I've ever seen a Nordstrom's, those cafes, and I'm always like, why is the cafe packed? I never understood it. So if you're telling me it's fire, maybe. Yeah, even the $5 options, you can't do it unless you bought the shares earlier. I didn't make a play on TSM. And then we have no plays on Netflix. We bought Nordstrom's a couple days ago, so I'm still holding that. And then MP Dubs moving up. Five minutes? No. Yes.
That's crazy, Habibi. Habibi, only five left? Wow. That is crazy. I should give you guys the warning. I mean, I don't know. Is it enough time? I, just, I guess we got five minutes. So just here's the deal, Chad. Uh, the market's coming down here. I thought maybe we could get a little push towards green. No, man, we're going to do five days in a row of red. Five in a row of red, man. Amazing. But here's the deal. Uh, I love you. And you have been a great audience, uh, even beyond just the audience. There's great people, man, overall. And I want you to have a great day. So I just want to let you know that when you hear me say earmuffs, that is your warning and our safe word for you to mute your speakers if you are sensitive to loud noises. Uh, it wasn't until recently that I was aware, became aware of what loud noises do to people on the internet if they're not informed. You know, ever since I started streaming, people would report to me what would happen when the loud noises would come on before we gave this warning. And it was everything from diarrhea to bleeding eardrums. They said it ruined their lives, their sexual lives, personal lives, social lives. They said it gave them social anxiety. They said they were never able to look at apples the same. I never understood that. Uh, you know, a lot of weird things, man, just like, and it's just, you don't deserve any of that. You guys are way, way too good of people, and I don't want anything like that to happen. So just be safe. Uh, and when I say earmuffs, just, we could avoid those. That's all. We could avoid that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, but earmuffs, you got a little bit of time, like 30 seconds maybe. That's the key word, safe word. Nordstrom family. That's crazy. Imagine your last name is Nordstrom. My name is Eric Nordstrom. Like the star. That, that'd be dope. That's how I would talk. All right, Chad. Ready? This is not a drill. Earmuffs. This is not a drill. Earmuffs. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're making our final approach as we make our final approach. You guys are holding on to any bags. Uh, please throw them in the overhead bins above or firmly beneath your seats. We'll be coming through the aisles with the trash bag if you'd like to dispose of those bags. But as we make this final approach, we're going to be landing here under the second link terminal. Second link terminal description. That's going to be your nightly watch list and main channel layover around 4 p.m. Pacific time. Then we're going to be taking off promptly around 6 a.m. out of sunny San Diego, California. As we make this final approach into San Diego International Airport, it's about 66 degrees and sunny. Looking like a good day unless you thought the market would bounce. All of that relief was nonsense. The market hates you. But good news is you still got tomorrow and Netflix after the bell. So stay tuned and remaining on the flight. And we are no longer the COVID guidelines. So no masks are required. But we do ask that you exit one row at a time and drop a GG on your way. And as always, we appreciate you guys' business. If you're interested in a call Rapid Awards program card, please flag down our flight attendant and we'll get you that as soon as possible. As always, thank you for flying with the coat and hopefully have a wonderful evening. Yalla! Chatadonia. That's it, man. It's time to bring it home. Netflix after the bell. That's all that matters now. The sentiment, the tech, the hype, the consumer, the Disneys, the Hulus, the Paramounts. What's going to happen, Netflix? It's here, baby. And you only have... One minute! Go, 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 go
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to wrap it up. Bring it home. Finalize those plays. Speak now or forever. Hold your peace. Shares, futures, options. What are you going to do? Netflix, are you going to play or not? Make up your mind. American Express, Procter & Gamble. You only have 20 seconds, especially if it's an option. Then you have no flexibility, but you got to make up your mind. Wrap up the plays and bring it home, Jadadonia. That's all the time you have left. You have less than 10 seconds remaining. Oh, my goodness. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, Netflix already out. Oh, Netflix already out. No hesitation. Netflix, no hesitation. 9.49 billion. I think they beat how many? 269. I think that was in line or a beat. Netflix already out. Hold on. Hold up. All right, so revenue was 9.4. Estimate was 9.2. They beat on that. Paid membership, 2.69. So I think they went up by 5 million. Where's paid? Paid additions. Uh-oh, they're going down right now? No, it's already out, bro. Paid net did 9.3. No, they killed it. It has to be guidance. They seek second. Let me check guidance estimates. They beat, They again, they beat estimates of subscribers, I want to say, by 5 million again. Paid net ads was four million versus guiding lower. They added nine million again. I don't know. It might even pop, bro. Let me go through Q2. This is for Q2. Is this Q2? I don't even think this is Q2. Revenue nine five. Oh, they see Q2 revenue. Hold on, no, 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 no. Revenue was nine three. Oh, Q2 was nine four. Okay, revenue EPS was five. I think they still beat. I'm silly. No, they still beat. 937, 927, they beat just by a little bit. And then EPS, 450, they did 528. They had 269 on streaming versus 264. Did they beat by 5 million on paid editions? Because I had 2 million or 4 million. They, it looks like they did 9 million. I think they might balance. I honestly think that was a good one. Free cash flow, 2.1. Operating income, 2.63. They beat on that, too. Yeah, man. I think it was good. They had no hesitation on it. I would have liked some of that 580. There goes the pop. Yeah, it's already back up. It's only up two. Uh, what other what other one do we have after hours? Expect paid net additions to be lower in Q2 versus Q1 due to typical seasonality. I mean, every time they say that though, they beat again. They see. I think they beat off of five million. Wall and PPG. No hesitation. They killed the ISRG. Bro, they did very good. I think it's a good beat. I think this quarter was slightly softer, but it was still beat on revenue. But they killed it on, on net additions. I don't know what they said there on the uh, the upside revolving credit facility. I don't know what they're going to say there about the ad spend and the ad, the ad segment. But Netflix, once again, did good. Nine million. It is like the jobs report because these are all the members from the password sharing. They see second quarter EPS 468, estimate was 454. Remember, they're still up 15% since their last earnings came out. Netflix to end reporting quarterly membership numbers next year. <laughs> that was for you, Nadroke. That was for you, baby. They say, yeah, we going to report all the numbers. After we make all these transitions for the past with Sharon, and then we're going to stop reporting them. <laughs> oh, that's dirty. That's cold. That's cold. Why? Because don't. Because it's, a, it's a growing. The company's evolving. Mother, shut. Stop asking. I informed you. Now that I've informed you, you will forget in six months, but I informed you. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, where's the other earnings? Is that it? Well, Chad, I think that's the day, man. 
I mean, when's doesn't the conference call come out in like 30 minutes? Or usually like releases right on their YouTube. I could be down to wait a little because we're going to do a live watch list today. Oh, I need to set that up. So let me set that up. But I love you, Chad. Thank you for being here, man. That's the day. We'll see. Netflix, I might make a play on it, but I think it it was generally good. Again, guidance was there. We'll see what other things they say. But then again, we've sold a lot of gainers and the market is doing its thing. But we'll see. We'll see. It's a cult, baby. All right, guys. Uh, listen to some blues riff and B. Watch me for the changes and try and keep up, okay? okay. Hello, how you doing? I'm that motherfucking guy. Had a call I had a put. Now I'm Marty McFly. NQ slash ES. Get my pronouns right. If I'm throwing hands up, then it's finger to the sky. Throw me in the fire, then I'm coming out alive. Boy, I've been here for a while. I don't need to take five, five years running. How the hell I hate it, not inspired. Yeah, they headed for the insta, but I do it for the life. Put it on my life. I don't think twice. Instinct on beast. Had to learn it to survive. If you think I'm cheap, you ain't give the right price. I would never love a lifestyle more than I love my life. Always been a Boss, I don't never need a break. Always been on stars, you could put me with the grace. Big man, milk can. We could talk about the rates. So tan to my rag, got it all in one place. All in one take, I don't want the bait. Shout out to my nephew, man, he got my whole estate. Shout out to my mama, she know I'ma keep the faith. And don't forget about my girl, so pretty like her face. Why they mad at me, talking about their fallacies. My life is fantastic, yours is just a fantasy. Head trick with the assets, I ended up with equity. Ain't fucking with you, fascist. The ownership is set me free. And God, too. Don't forget how God move, only need a little bit That's the way that God prove, fuck you, you ain't feeling it Shake the dust from my shoes, living in this silhouette It's hard for me to act rude, I am that dude Put him in a bad mood, only time you see me out Is if I'm buying bedrooms, I don't really stress, dude Tell me what they get you, like I'm eating now I'm just trying to get the chat full Stop acting like you know me, homie, you ain't got the vibe Kept it for reactions, cause a demon need a rise What's a lion to a sheep, is how easy to find the pride Be careful the things you think you speak in, what's so sad? Money, 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 I don't give a fuck about it 2020, homie, already had the bag without it Hate to love it, you ain't even know the half about me But I take a half and double that, I keep it a hundred, homie On a minor P, it sound like money, make them all involved, don't see it That part's crazy Stop acting like you know me, homie, you ain't got the vibe Capping for reaction, cause a demon need a rise What's a lion to a sheep is how each one defined it Netflix dropping Surprising Surprising. It's down, remember, it's pricing in eight. It was just down seven point something, but I think it'll move a little on the conference call. Again, this will be your second sell off of a good earnings for the most part. I don't think anything was too bad there, even to stand out. Well, we'll see. PPG. Everybody in the PPG. Well, then that's it. We have AXP and the other one. Disney's going down. No way. That's surprising because, again, they beat on subscribers. PPG announces 2.5 billion share buyback. Netflix, they beat and then they guided up there. So I wouldn't say it was bad, but they did say that next quarter they're expecting less memberships. Maybe that was the bad spot that people did not like out of it. Let me see. There's probably a couple more headlines. All the big tech is trading a little lower. Maybe people, again, the stock is still, remember, this is up 16% over the SPY. So you can't forget that. Where just like, even if these companies are beaten, slightly raising, they still kind of have a high bar set. So EPS 528 versus 4052. Uh, EPS includes 131 non cash unrealized gain from Forex. Revenue 937 versus 927. Streaming 269 paid versus 264 estimate. Global streaming paid additions 93 versus 45. Guidance was 46 versus 454. Revenue for next quarter was 949 versus 95. So revenue next quarter is lower. And then operating income 25 next quarter versus Q4, and they expect paid net additions to be lower in Q224 versus Q124 due to seasonality. Full year revenue growth of 13 to 15, depending on healthy double digit growth in neutral FX, and then raising full year operating margin forecast to 25, up from 24. Mm hmm. Well, again, I think it was good, but yeah, Nordstrom's. Oh, did it hit? Was that after hours? Are or is that there prior? Still holding up though. But yeah.
On that note, Chattadonia, I'm going to leave it right there. I love you all. I hope you know you are blessed. I hope you know you are amazing. I'm going to see you tonight on the watch list. We're going to have a live watch list at 6 p.m. Okay, if you end the stream here today, it's going to take you right there to the channel so you don't have to wait too long. But I appreciate you being here. Thank you for your time, especially if you participated. We're holding it down. Maybe you brought a little bit of the energy and info too, baby. You know what I'm saying? So let's have a great Friday tomorrow. I'll even get to see you tonight, but that is it. Go read the books. Richest Man of Babylon, Proverbs, New Living Translation, and the strangest sacred in the world. And don't forget why we're here, why we keep going, why that faith, hope, and love ain't ever going out of style, baby. And why we know we got the potential, but we know it's a brutal game, baby. And we and we realistic, controlling the expectations, ready to go, baby, ready to face any opposition, baby. Why, baby, why? Ah! Finger to the sky, baby. To God be the glory, and through the grace of God alone. Amen. No. Amen. No. <laughs> Yalla, Habibi. Yalla. Yalla, I see you. I see you later. 45 minutes, you get a Netflix conferencing call. I see you tonight. You stay on this one and take you to that one. Okay, yalla. But I love you, Chad. Have a wonderful evening. And peace. Ah. Yeah, you got to hear. Hey, Josh, I heard they like me. I heard they're liking me for this election. My poll numbers are through the fucking roof. I feel like Netflix. I feel shining up 9 million Americans. Come on, vote Biden. Right now. You can vote now via the mail. By the mail UPS box. Yeah, 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 do it. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? I mean it. I'm not kidding around. I really mean it. Seriously. It's not hyperbole. Yeah, anyway, you're a good day. I'm exactly. Now, Joshua. What's the difference between Disney and Netflix? Aren't they all woke? Didn't Disney, they had weird content? Didn't Netflix, too? And all oh, they still make billions every... I don't get it. And what's going on here with these numbers? Is it is it is it is it adjusted? Can I can I make an adjustment to my credit score if I don't like what I see? Can I make a one time charge off? Mm-hmm, exactly. I reclaim my time. Have a wonderful evening. Goodbye. Good evening. I'll see you on the watch on the list. Are is, are you gonna ask him what he's holding? But you didn't watch the watch list really exactly? Mm-hmm. Is it? Do you think, can you, are you going to go to the restaurant and bring your own steak and say, can you cook it? And then, and then you're going to walk out and say, oh, exactly. It's at 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. I'll see you there, buddy. Exactly.